welcome to the repair shop, where cherished family heirlooms are brought back to life. Anything can happen. This is the workshop of dreams. Home to furniture restorer, Jay Blades. Nowadays, things are not built to last, so we've become part of this throwaway culture. It's all about preserving and restoring. We bring the old back to new. Working alongside Jay will be some of the country's leading craftspeople. I like making things with my hands. I love to see how things work, and I want to know how things work. Whether it's a Rembrandt or somebody's family piece, every painting deserves the same. Each bringing their own unique set of skills. You're about to witness some magic. They will resurrect, revive... Oh, yes! ..and rejuvenate treasured possessions and irreplaceable pieces of family history. Oh, my goodness me! It looks um, like it's new! Bringing both the objects... <gasps> oh, wow! ..and the memories that they hold back to life. Oh, oh. In the repair shop today, accordion expert Roger Thomas wrestles with an instrument that survived the Blitz, but now sounds like a strangled cat. I have to be very careful not to cause any damage, because if I snap that off, then I'm going to be in trouble. While furniture restorer Will Kirk performs some emergency surgery on a 50-year-old fish. This was probably carved by one of Fletcher Christian's descendants. But first, something to test the skills of furniture restorer Jay Blades and clockmaker Steve Fletcher, a treasured family piece belonging to Jane Fanner. What have we got in there? Something that, to me, very, very special, because it was made by my dad. It feels like Christmas time. I'm wrapping a present. Wow. There we are. So your father made this clock? All of the clock, yes. Um, one of the things that you need to know is my father was totally blind. I mean, he couldn't even tell the difference between day and night. Seriously? Dad and I were very close. He was born with something called retinopigmentosis, and gradually the eyesight got narrower and narrower and narrower. By the time he met my mother, he was able to see only a minuscule amount, and he lost his sight completely after that. I absolutely love this clock. It always chimed all the time he was alive. And then, just after he died, it stopped chiming, it stopped working, and it needs mending. Well, I've never seen anything like it in my life. I can see in here that it's got nine gong rods, which means that it plays Whittington chimes. I can't remember the exact tune, but I can tell you it sort of trills. It's an incredibly pretty little sort of tune. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just looking at the door that goes on there. Just, I, I was just trying to figure it out how he made that by feeling there. That in itself is just, like, amazing. It's incredible. Sound mattered so much to him yeah. that I really want to hear the chime working more than anything. I don't even mind if it doesn't keep good time, <laughs> but I'd it's love to hear those chimes oh, again. Well, you can do him proud. You can do your dad proud. <laughs> oh, I'm so thrilled. <laughs> All right, you take care now. Bye-bye now. Now, that's blown me away now. That's just made me, like, wow. I'm actually thrilled and excited, but also missing Dad more than ever. Now it's down to Jay, Steve and the repair shop team to get this treasured timepiece ticking and chiming again. What I think I'll be able to do is revitalise the actual case, so not taking away any of the integrity, but making sure it just shines. Yeah, it's looking a bit tired at the moment, isn't it? It does look a little bit tired. Yeah. I think the main challenge is going to be um, just making sure we get the movement working OK. So I'll strip down the whole clock right down to every single screw. <laughs> Seriously, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Think... So you're not going to lose any screws, you're going to take them all apart yeah. and then you're going to be able to put it back yeah, together again. Yeah, every single part. Right, taking the mechanism out. So it's, it's uh, like a piece of furniture now. Cool, so I can have my wicked way with it. You can it. have your wicked way with it. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Kirsten, I wonder whether you can do a little job for me. Steve is also calling on the skills of repair shop ceramics expert Kirsten Ramsey to help give the face a well-needed makeover. Got this dial 
um, here that I think we could improve by painting in the numerals um, okay. black. That leaves Steve with the main challenge of getting the chime sounding. The hammers that hit the gong rods are powered by the clock mechanism, which hasn't worked since Jane's father's death. So to fix the chimes, Steve's going to have to first mend the whole clock mechanism. The main problem are, uh, are in the, the bearings, these holes here. Even more tough than that is that some of the teeth um, uh, are slightly worn. So the main challenge is going to be to get the chimes sounding as Jane would have remembered them. And uh, that's going to be quite interesting. From tired treasures that just want some TLC to moldering old masters in need of a full MOT, the repair shop team takes on labours of love that have lain unfixed and forlorn for years. Well, there you go. There's one for you. So, what's in the box? It's a flying fish. Wow. This family pet was plucked from a remote corner of the Pacific by Faye Lambert's parents nearly 60 years ago. He needs a little help from furniture restorer Will to bring him out of retirement. You can see the What's happened? Oh, its no. tail snapped off, unfortunately. Oh, um, you don't happen to have... I'm sure that you would have bought it with you. I'm if you afraid didn't that's that. long gone. Right. It was bought on our way back from Australia, and I remember my mother coming down, waking my sister and me up and saying, come up on deck, because something quite exciting is happening. And the islanders were rowing out in their canoes from Pitcairn <laughs> Island, and they were selling their wares. Wow. I don't know if you've heard of Mutiny on the Bounty, yes. but um, this was probably carved by one of Fletcher Christian's descendants. The crew who mutinied on HMS Bounty in 1789 in the South Pacific settled on Pitcairn Island. The descendants live there to this day, and carved flying fish like Faye's can fetch up to 200 pounds in good condition. Steve? Yeah. You haven't got a pair of calipers. Will's toughest test will be to make a seamless repair without the original piece of tail that's broken off, as it was carved from a tree that grows on the other side of the world, thousands of miles from the repair shop. So I've managed to find some wood that has a very similar colour and grain to the fish, and hopefully I might have enough width on that to make up the missing part of the tail. So what I'm looking for here, I mean, I have an overall decent colour match, but it'd be quite nice to get a similar grain pattern. Excuse the licking. If you look here, we've also got a bit of figure and a bit of grain going on in the wood there, so I think if I can get the angle right, I could probably have like a decent colour match and also a match with the pattern as well. It's weird to think that the last person working on this fish would have been one of the islanders. It's actually quite an honour, really. Meanwhile, third-generation clockmaker Steve has reached a critical point in getting Jane's clock working again. It's bath time. So I'm just cleaning up these barrels now. We use um, old-fashioned clock cleaning fluid and then I um, scrub them up in normal washing up liquid. This is the way that uh, we've been cleaning clocks uh, forever. My grandfather used to clean them in exactly the same way. I'm just using a water-based paint with a pigment and just flooding that into these areas. It's quite painstaking and quite fiddly, hence the magnifying glass. I just find when I'm doing really sort of fiddly painting, really close up, you sort of tend not to breathe, you hold your breath so that you get a completely sort of straight line. So yeah, not much chatting while I get on with this. Jay? Yeah? You look better with your mask on. <laughs> That's what the missus tells me. With the hundreds of individual parts washed and clean, Steve must now put the clock back together again before he can fix the chimes and find out exactly what they sound like. How do, Steve? I'm just putting some new springs into uh, two of the barrels. What, th that's going in one of them? Yeah, and then the barrels go into the clock. So, Steve, do we know anything more about the Whittington chimes, then? Any history about that? 
Yeah, they're, they're based on the um, chimes of St Mary's Church at Bow. So the Bow Bells. Bow Bells, yeah, yeah East okay. London. All right. um, and they're called Whittington because they're based on a story about Richard Whittington, the Mayor of London, Yeah. Uh, when he was a lad and he was Dick Whittington. Oh. And they've just been called Whittington Chimes. So, Steve, when will we hear the chimes the same way that Jane remembers them? I'm almost there on the movement. I know it doesn't look it, but I'm on the home straight at the moment. Really? This is the easier part, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say this is the easy part? Yeah. It doesn't look easy at all. How many pieces have you got here that goes into this clock? Just in this unit alone, I suppose there's a um, hundred pieces. Wow. And the rest of the clock, I suppose another 150 pieces. But hold on, I do see a washer there. What's no, going no, on No, 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 that was an extra washer. You don't, sure? Don't, don't point that out. <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And funny enough, I you had lost a washer. I had <laughs> lost a washer, so I took a washer out of my uh, washer drawer yeah, and yeah. put it in, and then I found the, the other washer. washer. <laughs> <laughs> see, it does happen. <laughs> so now you've got to just put it all together. Yep, no, I'm just putting it all together now. So then I'd best go and crack on with the case, actually, shouldn't I? Have you not done it yet? Well, I'll see you in a minute. Um, I'm gone. <laughs> Good. <laughs> right. How you doing? <laughs> Young lady you need to see is Kirsten just over there. The repair shop experts have countless years of experience at rescuing cherished possessions from languishing broken in the country's attics and cellars. What have you got there? That looks nice. Hello. So what's this? This was my mother's accordion. Oh, wow. But she has given it to my daughter now. Next to arrive in need of some repair shop TLC, the Brierley family have something to test the musical talents of accordion expert Roger Thomas. Because Sarah's the musician of the family. Right? Oh, so you can play this then, Sarah? Well, I would like to. It was my mum's, right. who is yeah. now 94. And do you know when she got this one? When she was 17, okay. she came home with her first week's wages, and her mum went and put it down as a deposit for them to buy this. So it was actually brand new when they bought it. So I'm just trying to do the maths. So, how so she's 94, so it's just under 80 just... years old, isn't okay. it? Roger is one of just a handful of specialist accordion restorers in the UK. But can he get this antique instrument playing sweet music once more? You can hear uh, okay. that really high note. Yeah. Because it shouldn't make that really high pitched noise. No, should it? no, it's very annoying yeah. actually. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can't actually play it either. Yeah, it's like a cat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah. sound right. No. <laughs> okay. These keys that are popping up, they look like they're kind yeah. of right. You can deal with Straight that kind of. Yeah. It's a, it's a beautiful nice. instrument, isn't it? But the story that my mum, you know, about the accordion is my mum used to play it during the war, during the Blitz. Oh, wow. In the shelters. Oh, really? So they used to go, uh, obviously, underground yeah. and play to keep, keep really? people's spirits up. So where does she think this is, then? Does she know this is here today? She, she doesn't, doesn't know. know anything about it. She no. doesn't know anything Seriously. about it. Yeah. And, in fact, she last time she saw Sarah, she said, how are you getting on with my... <laughs> Sarah then says, oh. Oh, it's Dad. <laughs> it's Dad says, she knows it's broken yes. and she's been nagging for a couple of years now for me to get it done. So what would this mean to Mum to actually get this repaired then? Oh, she'd be really pleased. Yeah. I think yeah. really yeah. she'd like me to be able to play it. Yeah. So it's going to mean a lot. It's going to mean a lot. So hopefully by the time you come, not hopefully, <laughs> by the time you come back, I know you looked at me funny yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The oh, yeah, yeah. Back, the hopefully, yeah. yeah no, definitely. By the time you come back, it will not sound like a strangled cat. It will if I play it. No, no yeah, if you play it, or me as well. Yeah, yeah. But it's definitely going to sound good. Yeah. Thank you very much. Nice yeah. to meet you. You take care now. Yeah, Thank you. All right? Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye. Well, that's a nice story. Yeah, it is. Hmm. I've got to um, adjust the levers inside here, and there's always a little bit of a risk there, so I've got to be very careful I don't break anything. That's the kind of first challenge. OK. So what should a working accordion sound like, anyway? Well, I um, can't actually play this one right now, but I've got... Why don't we go, go on over to the bench? I've okay. got a little, little uh, melodeon over there that I can just give you a rough idea of what it ought to sound like. That sounds all right. Very nice, uh... So that kind of gives you a rough idea. Yeah. A rough idea. So have you fixed it already then? Yeah, I've fixed it. I'm trying to say that as a ringtone on my phone. Actually, if you could do that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Before he can get Iris's 80-year-old machine sounding as good as that, Roger needs to investigate. So it's always a bit kind of venturing into the unknown when you open up one of these to take a look inside. And take the grill off. An accordion works by blowing air from the bellows across the reeds inside. The notes are determined by which keys and buttons are pressed. Roger's detective work reveals a problem straight away. Well, I can deduce from this that one of the pallets has fallen off. And that, look, there's the pallet. This is a pallet. It's a leather and felt sandwich. And when you operate the bellows, it forms an air seal. And this is why we're getting the, the sound when you... <whistles> the dead cat sound. The other thing I need to do is just give this leather a bit of a brush. I can glue that back on there. I then can give it a, a, a full test so I can test all the notes to see whether there are any other sounds that we don't want. While Roger's specialist skills are focused on finessing the accordion, the rest of the repair shop team have been turning their talents to getting Jane's clock ticking and chiming again in time for her return. You've got a minute, Steve? Yeah. Oh. I've got your clock face. Would you call that clock face, or...? Uh, it's a chapter ring. Chapter ring, OK. Yeah, that is looking really good. Okay. Brilliant. Ah, oh, fantastic. Thank I'll you. I'll leave it with you. Now, with all the pieces back in Steve's hands, his final job is to put it back together again before Jane arrives. Um... <laughs> I've got to make an adjustment. It's not going to go straight in. <laughs> I've put a, a, a bolt instead of a rooted screw in, um, and I've just got to take a, a very small amount um, of material off of the case. After taking the clock apart down to the very last screw, it's the very last screw that's undone, Steve. Precious seconds slipping away, it's over to Jay for a last-minute fix. I can't get my file in there. I don't know whether you can just cut something like that here. Oh, I'll tell you what we could do, though. We could take the door off, cos it's the door that's in the way, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah. So just going straight down, you want, yeah? yeah? Yeah. I think that might do, actually. Yeah? Right, ready? Yeah. Why am I holding my breath for? Tense moment. Perfect. That's good. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> well done. Hello, Jane. How are you? Yeah, good. <laughs> this is the bit we really love, so I'll just go and get it for you. Oh, wow. There we are. That looks wonderful. Oh, look, you've done the dial, the case. It's... Uh... How are we doing, Jane? You all right? Dad would have liked that. Yeah. He'd be, um... He'd be proud of that, and he'd be... He would have loved to have met you. Oh, fantastic. And you. So, Does yeah. it go? Yeah, no, <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's all um, going absolutely beautifully. So I'm just going to chime it for you. <laughs> How's that? Wonderful. Fantastic. It was ticking and chiming the, 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 the day he died, which came as a complete surprise and was, if, if you can have a, a good death, then he certainly did. He fell asleep in the chair next to this clock. Oh, that's... So, um, to hear this again is absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Um, you've given it life that it had lost. Let's have a look at the back. Yeah. <laughs> yes, let's turn it around. Let's have a look at it. It's in it. Oh, my goodness me. I've cleaned everything up. It looks um, like it's new. Yeah. It's, that is astounding. By getting the clock working again, I've got a bit of our father back, which both myself and my sisters will love. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. You're that very, is... very welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure to do. Oh, I, just, I want to kiss you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to 
grab my sisters and say, come up here, girls. Let's have a party and have a, well, let's have a clock party. It's, it's part of our family and I am absolutely thrilled to be taking it home. As another repair shop project has restored the pride of place, accordion restorer Roger has reached a crucial point on his project. He's taken the 80-year-old instrument to pieces and is testing all 448 individual reeds. So all of these are like notes then? That's correct. So that's kind of OK. <laughs> Not. Okay, that's quite cool, man. So that's how it works. And I've just been checking the general condition of these valves, these little strips of leather. So, Roger, now that you've got this apart, could you tell me anything more about the history of it? Well, we know it's made in Italy. Actually, this one was made in Castelfidardo. All right. And Castelfidardo these days is regarded as the capital of quality accordion manufacturing. So this has come from good stock, then? Yeah. And the most expensive accordion would be rough. Well, you pay five, six, seven thousand or more but for professional thousand? yeah yeah for professional accordions yeah wow. or even more i mean i've seen them more than that and we're going to get it working and sounding beautiful yep. again it's a lovely instrument actually i have to say it just looks beautiful and when it comes back together it will sound beautiful as well yeah i'm just going to put it back the accordion's not the only thing in the workshop in need of a tuning do i tell you what note that is i think it was a b it was <laughs> oh, sorry. There you go, try again. Yeah, there you go. What's that? It's B, isn't it? Yeah. It's about a B. Is that an E sharp? Yeah, it's there. Is that one, isn't it? Oh, that's in a flat. That's a flat. flat. Finished. So I have to be very careful not to cause any damage to where this lever is fixed to the key. Because if I snap that off, then I'm going to be in trouble. Roger's realigning all the keys on the keyboard and making sure none are leaking air. But the parts are nearly 80 years old, and one false move now could spell disaster. Originally, I thought I'd just need to adjust one or two of these keys, but actually, they all need adjusting. And the reason why you want the keys nice and flat like this is because it gives you a nice action. It's like the, the response of the keyboard. And it also, aesthetically, of course, it looks a lot nicer. OK, so now I just use my little gauge to check. And it's still a bit proud. Sometimes you get it right first time, and other times you don't. You obviously don't want to be bending it backwards and forwards too often, too much, because then you're going to introduce some kind of you know, metal fatigue in there. Mm -hmm. If I broke one of these levers, it would be a bit of a problem. I'm not going to. <laughs> also at the fine-tuning stage, Will's angling to get a seamless fix for Faye's 60-year-old fish before she arrives to pick it up. A little bit of polish on that tail, and we are just in time, I think. We are really up against it today. So, are you ready? Yes, I am. Da da da. da. Oh, baby, my fish has got a tail. tail. Oh, it looks great. I yeah. actually managed to get the colour spot on. He's looking pretty smart, and he will go home and be put in pride of place. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Thanks. you. Thanks very much for all that hard work. Thank bye you. bye. Bye bye. Roger's hoping he'll also hit the high notes with the owners of that very special instrument he's been working on. This is the final bellows pin, so put that in there. And the next stage is for me to give it its final test. How are we doing, Roger? Are we ready? Oh, we are, yes, it's, it's yeah. done. It does look gorgeous. Yeah. The only thing left now is to hear what it sounds like. Yeah. It sounds better. So you fixed it then, <laughs> but what we've got, I've noticed it when I came in, it's just the case. It looks extremely tired and a repair that we would not be proud of. You've done such a great job on the actual machine itself, Roger. It seems a shame to put it in something like this, yeah, isn't I it? I agree. Yeah? So, I know a man who might be able to... Will, he's trying to shy away at the moment. So, Will, 
How are we doing, my friend? Oh. Got this. Sounds like trouble. It is trouble. Sounds we like need trouble. this repaired. What's all this? I know. It's... But I was thinking all we could do is take this off, and then you must have some kind of stain. Oh, gosh. That's it. Let's not make it any worse, though, yeah? Not any worse. <laughs> Just so it looks right. uniformed, I would say. Uniform. Well, the good thing is, it's solid. Made of plywood, I think. Yeah, so it's just a superficial damage to the surface. Yeah. I am going to work some magic. In the next five minutes, yeah? <laughs> there's, there's no rush, there's okay. no rush, but it, probably five to three minutes. If you make me a cup of tea, three minutes. I'm on it, mate, I'm on it. Yeah. Cup of tea. Cup Two of tea. and a half minutes now, yeah? <laughs> yeah, right. right. See you in a minute. Oh, that looks that. diamond. Yeah? Yeah, that looks good. I'm very pleased. And it looks, it is a stunning looking instrument, I, mean, I have to say. And I, I am still amazed at the condition that it's in for given its age. And it's 80 years old. And I hope Sarah enjoys it and it'll keep her going for a good few years, maybe another 80 years, who knows. Cheers, mate. Now restored to its former glory, Sarah and Howard are ready to reveal the accordion to its original and unsuspecting owner. 94-year-old Iris. Oh. <laughs> well, we've got a surprise lined up, in case you hadn't guessed. You all right? Do you need a hand? Yes. Oh, oh. Right. Hello. Hello. <laughs> so, this, this is your surprise. So, uh, you know when you opened it up, it made a terrible noise? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you had it fixed? Yeah. Because there was a key sticking up here, yeah, it was this um, one, I think, wasn't it? And then when you opened it, it was the note was... Yeah, permanent noise, yeah. yeah. It must be ten years since I lose that. Mm. But it's it's mm -hmm. all in working order now. Do you want to see Sarah play it? Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. She was just so happy that it had been fixed. Can't believe what they've done. I, I knew nothing about it. It was a complete shock. <laughs> the best thing was her reaction to seeing Sarah play it, without a doubt. She got quite emotional because it brought back memories for her, but it was also, you know, passing that legacy on to, to her granddaughter. I hope that my granddaughter will look, look after it and play it and enjoy it as much as I did. Life goes on. <laughs> so what we're waiting for today. We've got a customer coming. Something for me? You're keen, aren't you? <laughs> well, yeah, oh, it's like something for you, you then. Yeah. 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 First, furniture dream team Jay and Will are standing by to meet Helen Smith from Herefordshire. Ah, hello. Hello. How are we doing? I'm fine, thanks. So here it is, yeah? It's here. OK. All right, we'll get this out. Lovely. Ooh. I'll lead the way. Lead the way. <laughs> So, what is it? It's a piano stool for two people. A piano stool for two people? Is it right to lift them mm. up? Look. Ooh. So, what's the, what's the history behind this one, then? <laughs> this um, belonged to my grandmother. I was actually born in the room that this lived. Um, so, I've known this all my life. On my grandmother's death, she left it to my sister. Yeah. Mm. And my sister had a big puppy. Okay. And the puppy going through his chewing phase, well, wow. okay. <laughs> was that in one setting? Or... Um, no, I should imagine because the piano's also had a little nibble, but um, really? no, no, wow. <laughs> not. Wow. He had a nibble and a piano. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> he couldn't play the tune, so he thought he'd have a nibble. <laughs> have a nibble. <laughs> and then I see that it's got like this tapestry on top. Yeah, Grand did that. Grand did that. Yeah. I see it brought a smile to your face. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's in an amazing condition. Mm. I mean, considering the, the top. when you look at everything else. Yeah. Yes, it was lucky, uh, lucky to get away with it, I think. Yeah. Perhaps, perhaps it didn't taste as good as the, uh, the wood. Right. Helen's grandmother, Enid Ruth Wicks, 
honed her musical skills on this piano. My grandmother was a very keen pianist. She was very good, although she would say that she was competent. She was a member of the Royal Academy of Music, played in concerts for the BBC. I think when you inherit or you have an heirloom in your family, there's a responsibility to look after it as best that you can. And at the moment, I'm not fulfilling that responsibility. So, Will, what do you reckon? Do you know anything about the age of this? Have you seen stuff like this before? It looks sort of like typical arts and crafts furniture, 1890s, 1910. Really nice piece. With a base, I'd like to use this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That'd be bro. I say that now. <laughs> That's not working. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> I'm honoured to be working on something like this. So, as soon as we've got it repaired yes. and looking fabulous again, yeah. um, we'll get back to you. Lovely. Okay? Thank you very much. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Lovely. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. Bye bye. Bye. That's amazing. I, I know dogs go for a chewing phase, but that is. <laughs> well, at least he left us something. He left us a clue. Yeah. yeah. Because we learnt to play the piano with my grandmother, it's a, a family piece, so yeah, I'm really excited about seeing what they're going to do. What are you going to do with the uh, fabric and with the top? Basically, it has to fit perfectly because, as you can see here, the corner is coming out because this is too tight. It won't fit in there perfectly. Why is that too tight? I or think tight? what might have happened is they've just covered over an original fabric on top of there, but I won't be able to tell until I've taken it off. Well, I'm working out um, who has the most amount of work with this job. Definitely me, obviously. It always seems to be me. It's always me. And then you walk over and say, is that ready yet? Five of course, minutes. Of course. Make a cup of tea. Well, you've got to make a tea toast. and get on with it, because I'm off, mate. You've got to lift it over oh, by yourself. Gosh. I've got a heavy bit. I like a challenge, James. Right. So I have glued up the top of the chair, clamped it all in, into place, snug as a bug in a rug. The beading on the back is near enough all intact, whereas around the front and the sides were flaking off. So I've made the executive decision to keep that. I thought it would be quite nice keeping some of the original. From wood to brass, Ceramics or stuffing. And it comes. Whatever the material, the repair shop team used their years of experience to lovingly restore it. The next customer dialing 999 for an antiques emergency is Helen Kent. Hello. Hello, how are we doing? I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. What have uh, we got here then? Um, it's an old daffodil telephone. A daffodil telephone? Yes. OK. <laughs> the person you need to see then is Steve. Steve, Lovely. got one for you. Thank you very Have much. Have a look at this. Thank you. No problem. Steve may be the repair shop's clockmaker. There you right. are. Let's have a look at this telephone. But he's also the go-to guy for most of the mechanical curios that arrive through its doors. Tell me a bit about its history. Well, I don't know where it started its life, um, but it came to me when I was uh, very early married, and so I've had it since uh, the very early 60s. Also known as a candlestick or stick phone, this model dates from the mid-1920s. You think about all the calls it's made in its life. Absolutely. That's incredible. Yes, yes. I mean, it functioned when um, I was first married and I was a community midwife. Oh, really? Not very convenient because, of course, you've got to hold the daffodil and the earpiece not like oh, today. Yes, of course. I hadn't <laughs> it's thought two about sections. Unless, unless you yeah. do it like this. So yes. you pick the phone up and put that thing to your ear. So, so what's wrong with it? Um, the dial doesn't go round anymore. Or well, you can make it go round, but I. Oh, no, it only just. Yeah. It doesn't really go around yeah. at all. It's as if it's all seized up. But I love the challenge of doing something like this. Leave it with me, and I'll see how I get on. Okay. Okay. Thank Fantastic. you for bringing it in. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Right. Bye bye now. Bye bye. If Steve can make it work, so much the better. But so long as it just looks nicer and the fact that my grandchildren would be able to play with it and get the sort of pleasure from it that my children had from it, that would be wonderful. It's at this point that I worry that springs are going to shoot out all over the place as soon as I start taking it apart. I've never seen inside of a telephone before and the dialing unit um, is 
absolutely alien to me. The dial has gone back to a point where, which it shouldn't because it looks as if it's been forced the wrong way and that might have caused some damage, so I'm hoping that it might be a simple fix. But hold the line, Steve. Woodwork quiz kid Will wants a second opinion on salvaging the damaged piece of wood from the piano stool. So, I was thinking something more like that. So that's the old piece there, that's the new piece. What do you think? Why are you doing this? I thought that it would be nice to keep some of the original. OK. And once I've set that into there, or spliced it on, I'll replicate the same pattern along the rest of the, of the beam. It's going to be a weakness. Yeah. That's why I was going to the dam and to give it a bit more strength. How about cutting it down centre? Mm hmm and setting half of it into the new bars. So you'll still keep the strength see. integrity of the new piece. So I'd have to leave enough on the inside as a core for the strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is, yeah. And then draw these out. Yep. That's a good idea. That's why I asked you over, Steve. Yeah. It's the brains of the family, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's got, you know, Years of me, hasn't he? So. <laughs> oh, oh, there we go. Steady years on of that. knowledge. Years oh, of knowledge. That's Steve. better. So you've got to follow it through. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jay is more concerned with avoiding a saggy bottom. I'm putting in webbing into the bottom of the frame, which is basically the foundation. It's what's going to allow someone to sit on top rather than falling straight through. When you get it at the right note, then you know that's when you need to staple it, because that is no sound, no stability. It goes straight through. So it's that. That's nice. Sounds like a bass, double bass. Boom, boom, boom. That one. I think that we should turn it into like a family band, Jay. A family band? Yeah. I'd like to be on the drill. <laughs> oh, that does sound nice. You up for some of that, Kirsten? Maybe lead vocals? And I know uh... Steve's got something. He's got something to do with this. Yeah, Steve's oh. on the cut. He's on the there cut. There we go. There we go. <laughs> We're going I'm on tour go next later. week. Lovely. Great. Smashing. Super. Musical ability aside, when it comes to transforming the unloved and unusable back to the glorious objects they once were, this talented team share a wealth of skills and know-how. And next in line for the repair shop treatment, Judith Barrett and her son Ben from Oxfordshire. How are we doing? You all right? That's a big box, isn't it? Yes, heavy box. <laughs> right. I, I like this already. What is it, anyway? Uh, well, inside there's a magic lantern. There's a magic lantern? Oh, wow. Oh, God, blimey, this is heavy, isn't it? Magic lanterns were wildly popular in wealthy households of the Victorian era, projecting pictures onto walls to enthrall and entertain. That's the bit that needs fixing. <laughs> that is the bit. <laughs> Richard Rigby is an expert in these fascinating items, and if anyone can restore it, he can. Oh, wow. Look at that. Oh, this is a nice, exciting project. You've got a, a lovely machine there. Good. Um, you couldn't have bought a better one. Oh, excellent. So, do tell me about this. How has it been in your family? How long has it been there? And just the history behind it. Long before I was married, I have got very interested in bits of antiques, much to my parents' dismay, and I bought this. And I just took it home, and then I married, had a family, and started to show them to the... He was... <laughs> small. <laughs> very small. <laughs> and when they get married and they have children, yeah. the, they've been rather on at me to get the show out for the little ones, yes. the younger ones. What I thought was that, you know, when we were kids and we, wa and we watched it, we, yeah. we loved it. So it would be really fun to try and get it working again and give them a show with it. So if you leave the lantern with us, Rich is going to work his magic on the magic lantern and we'll get back to you once it's fully restored. Thank you, Richard. Looking forward to that. I'll do my best. Thank, Thank you. Care. Cheers. Bye-bye. Right. Take care. The family will be pleased because I've been being nagged by the older children to let their children see it, but I've been so worried about the, 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 it being 
a bit rusty and very delicate, but I think now we will be able to, and they'll all be able to have it, and it'll be good fun. So, Richard, we best get this on your bench and yes. hopefully get it fully restored mm -hmm. so the children can actually enjoy something that's 100 years old mm -hmm. and something that their parents enjoyed as well. That's right, and yeah. their grandparents. So, you ready for this? I am. I'll carry the heavy bit. Okay. That's me, yeah? Thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I love to improve things. Simple as that. And I, I hate waste. I hate old, wonderful old machines being destroyed or skipped. It, it's just wrong. But to renovate this complex machine fast, Richard's going to need the help of everyone in the repair shop. First in focus, mechanical mastermind, Steve. This is uh, right up your street and not up mine. Go on. This is what we call the flasher. Thank you very much. <laughs> At some stage, it has been replaced by a piece of tin can. You can still see the curve to it. Oh, right, OK. What I'd like to do is take that off and make a, a new circular piece. In brass. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah? Yeah. All right, leave Thanks that with that. me. Thank you. While Richard starts work on the magic lantern, Will is applying finishing touches to the arts and crafts piano stool. Almost happy with this now. Just want to try this in there. Already, that looks amazing. Happy days. Yeah, cool. Lovely. All right. Jay just needs to recover the seat before Helen returns to be reunited with her grandmother's renovated stool. Hello, Em. Hello, how are you? How are you? Very well, thank you. How nice to see you. I can't wait to see this. It looks like oh. and feels <laughs> like. Oh, boy. Oh. No, no touching, no touching, no touching. No right yet. All right. So you ready? Yeah. You sure? <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. like having my grand with me when I play the piano. Because she used to sit one side, this side, and I used to sit the other. Because she always played the lower keys and I played the higher keys. You wouldn't know there was anything wrong with it, would you? No. One thing that I have done, though, I've actually used part of the original piece, yes. which is right in yes. the middle. You said here, you would. And I've set it into a, a new piece of wood. I've actually kept a, a couple of the nibble marks, because I thought that'd be quite nice oh, to have some as a... Yeah, yeah, some of the story. So is it pretty similar to how it was in the beginning before? That's how I remember it. And it just looks proper now, doesn't it? It looks yeah. like it should be. Yeah. It's amazing. Now, this feels better. There was always a dip. Yeah. I've got to learn to play the piano properly now, haven't I? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'll you yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's beautiful. I didn't think that you'd be able to get this detail back into it, so... I managed somehow. <laughs> <laughs> you can um, see his head getting a bit bigger, no. though, isn't it? <laughs> All in the day's work for me. I don't think you realise what you've all done, really, because my future now is definitely finding and learning to play the music that my grandmother played. So thank you so much. No, thank you. Busy at his workstation, genie of the lantern, Richard Rigby, is casting an eye over all of the working parts. Steve is playing the wizard's apprentice. I need the, uh, the, the brass for the flasher. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know what a flasher is. <laughs> so we'll have to see what it does uh, when it's all up together. There must be some brass around here somewhere. I need a disc of brass. A disc of brass? Yes. Why would I have a disc of brass for? I'm a woodman. Yeah. Do you 
Jay, you haven't got any, have you? That's hold on, hold on, hold on. No, I've used it all. <laughs> you must have something. Oh, oh. Don't come okay. scrounging over here. You've got stuff over there, Steve. I know you have. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've <laughs> seen it. What have got? No, I've got nothing. Get out of here. No, 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 no. I've got nothing in here, mate. Nothing. <laughs> it's Don't all, shut all your drawers. It's all locked up, man. It's all <laughs> locked up. Everything's locked. I could let you have that. That'll get you away from there. Stop scrounging. <laughs> all right? Is that all right? Have you got any thinner? Oh, come on. Oh. Come on. Hey, come on. It's almost the right size, isn't it? Perfect. That's almost the right size. So if yeah. I can flatten that. Hold on a minute. Thank you. Wouldn't go and miss. I've Thank got you, sort of... Jay. That's better. Okay. That is brilliant. Welcome, Absolutely sir. brilliant. You should charge him, Jay. Seriously, mate. <laughs> We're going to just try and get it back to its how it appeared originally, the non-brass parts uh, need blacking. This fits absolutely snugly. There's a hole in the center there that was for a thread for something. So um, I found an old piece of uh, a, a grandfather clock because I keep old bits and pieces. So I'm just going to turn that up make a nice little plug for the end there and it'll all look the part. How are we doing, Richard? Right, okay, how are you? I'm good. You stripped it apart, ain't you? I have. Yes. You've been busy. The big problem was that she hadn't enough light coming through to make it work nicely. We're going to use an yeah. LED. But how is that going to be powerful? Well, you wait and see. It's incredibly powerful. This is what we're going to fit. This is made to my own design. So this is going to go inside there? That's going to go inside there. And so then the LED light bulb goes in there, yeah? Yeah. Lantern has always had the very latest light. Right. Doesn't matter. When the lantern was built, yeah. a lantern will be the latest available light. That will then go in there through the condenser. Yeah. Through the lantern slide, yeah, into the objective lens, yeah, and then be adjusted to perfection. Well, I'll let you crack on then. Thank oh. you. Hi, Steve. Got another little job you might be able to help me with. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. Just made this. The only trouble is it's all brush and very new. Yeah. Be nice if it was that sort of honey colour. Oh right, the whole thing. Yeah, could you so, think you could do that? All right, well I'll get on with that now. Then. I'll leave you with that yeah. so you've got the colour match. Okay, Steve. Thank you. Brass task handed over. Steve can return to his workbench to finish repairing the 1920s daffodil phone. I've identified the, the problem with it. Um, basically, there's a, a, a nylon uh, bearing that's worn out. Um, and um, I can't actually put a new nylon bearing into the place um, that it should be. So what I've done is, to compensate, I've put a couple of washers in place. Um, and it actually works. That turns around the full way, and it does go back. Although it's slowly, it, it works and it stops at the right position. I'm going to put it back together again, and then I'm going to clean up the rest of it and um, polish it all, and it'll all look uh, lovely. Hello, Helen. Hello, Steve. Nice to see you How again. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Are you? Good. So, you've come for your daffodil telephone? I have indeed, and I'm very excited. Oh, good. <laughs> hey. Oh, wow. And does the dial go round? Right. It does. Yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely. Good, and good. it's not been smartened up too much that it looks like a reproduction. Yeah, that absolutely. It's really yeah. lovely. It was uh, quite good fun, actually. Oh, wasn't um, it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, <laughs> because the mechanism, I've never seen anything like it before. But there are wheels um, and uh, a regulator that's very, very similar to a clock regulator. Well, I'm thrilled to it. Good. Thank you very much. You're very, very welcome. Bye-bye, then. Bye. -bye, right, then. No, Bye. And there you go. 
Amid the bustle of the workshop, the repair of the magic lantern has turned into a real team effort. How are we doing? Oh, quiet. It's, You've got the light it's on. on. Well, yeah, I have. Uh, if you have a look in here, it's. Uh, this is a. <gasps> have you broken? Oh, no, you haven't yeah. broken. Is it meant to come out like that then? Yeah, it's oh, ubiquitous, okay. you see. Yeah. Uh, so you're clever, aren't you? Well. <laughs> yes, you are. It's come really on. simple. <laughs> This is a bit tatty, isn't it? It'd be yeah, nice to it? replace it. I suppose, a... being an upholstery, you might have something we could use. Yeah, let's have a look if I've got... Shall I, I take it out? Yeah, yes, see. please. Let's see if I've got anything. Okay. All right, we've got two versions. We've got a clean one and a dirty one. Which oh, one right. do you want? Well, let me see. That's a difficult decision. It is, isn't I'll it? I'll tell you what, let's go for the new one. You go for the new one, <laughs> a non-dirty one. The non-dirty one. All right. It's not black, but no. it's... um. In fact, it's rather right. nice. Yeah? Yeah. Brown velvet. Look, it, it, lovely, Ooh, lovely match for the mahogany in the in the slide changer. Cool. Wonderful, wonderful. So it's all right to take that? Yes, please. And then carry on. And you sure I can't tempt you? Really? Alright. <laughs> Silly boy. <laughs> they say that many hands make light work. And whilst Kirsten lacquers the brass flasher to give it antique patina, Jay is on point with his needlework. Oh, that's okay. much better, isn't it? Fantastic. There we go, Richard. Ah, oh, Steve. Thank you. Oh, look. How's that? Isn't that beautiful? Oh, wow. That's going to be perfect. For my little contribution. Oh, you've done it. Oh, excellent. There. Now we can really get on. Yes. Now, you did put hole I did. inside to get this down, haven't you? Now you say that, hold on a minute. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stick it on there then. Do you want to put it on? Yeah. Nice bit of needlework there. It is a bit, isn't it? Oh, you're a craftsman. I am a craftsman. It's a historical magic. If you can imagine, before we had the magic lantern, the only pictures the average person would see was either in church or in a big house. And then to suddenly find pictures appearing on walls, whitewashed walls or a sheet of muslin, it was just magic, and they called it magic. I like the flash out, look at it. This is the house that Jack built. OK, cool. Well, I hope Judith and Ben enjoy it as much as I have, and their children. This is the special one. Oh. Oh. It's like fishing fireworks. You can see why, can't you? Oh. Yeah, I'm getting motion sickness. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think we've oh. 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 Nice to think it's going back three generations. Uh, we've been through three generations with my lanterns, with our children and grandchildren, so it's just nice. What? <laughs> what was that? <laughs> what was crazy? Crazy? Oh, yeah. oh, it was something. Oh, oh look at that. It's a dove. No, it's, it's a dove. <laughs> Here it is. Oh, wow. Should we have a look what they've done? Let's have a look, see. Oh, wow. Oh, that's much better than it was. So he's totally Hello. polished it up, oh, hasn't no. he? It's got a little velvet curtain. How oh, very sweet. Oh, where's the lantern cover? Oh, he's finished that up nicely, hasn't it? Oh, wow. wow. That oh, that more, is that dead looks a bit, serious. A bit more professional than oh, had last time. Very modern, my goodness me. There go. Is there something to sit it on? Yeah, it's, well, it's magnetised, so it's, it, it attaches itself oh, to the bottom. Oh, good gracious. This flips up and down properly now. Oh, he's really done a fantastic job. It looks ready for a show. Should we, should we set it up? It'll be very interesting to see what they think, yeah. won't it? Magic Lantern versus iPad. Let's see which wins. This is the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. Once upon a time, there was a boy called Jack. He lived with his widowed mother in a little cottage in the country. I haven't seen anything like that before. I liked it out of 10 out of 10. The giant was huge. Fee, fi, fo, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. I really loved it. Oh, it was lovely seeing the magic lantern again. It was an echo from the past. I saw the magic lantern as a little girl of five. My children saw the, the lantern. I could see the same expression on their faces, and it was just like life ought to be in a family. Jack and his mother lived happily ever after. Yay. 
Hi, mate. You all right? Hi, guys. How's it going? I'm dead. You all right? I'm Jay. Hi, Jay. How's it going? What have you got for us? Is in there, yeah? Yeah, I've got a Victorian-era Davenport that's been uh, badly treated by some horrible burglars. But first to pull up today is Nick Fiaka with a highly prized family piece in serious need of rescuing by furniture restorers Jay Blades and Will Kirk. So what's the history behind this, then? Um, it belonged to a family friend of ours, Olive. She lived next door uh, when we were kids. She never married, so we were kind of like her second family. And so, yeah, she used to sort of uh, take us, you know, to the park to play and cinema, that sort of thing. Almost like a surrogate mum, you know, to us. This Davenport um, sat in her front room all the years that I've known her. Sadly, um, her house got uh, burgled a couple of times. During one of the uh, burglaries, the side there got um, completely demolished. There's some false drawers, which they obviously didn't realise are actually false drawers and don't open, so they tried to force them. One, two, three, four. Four holes they've drilled in there. Oh, gosh. That's crazy. Like, to but... get in there, they must have sussed that these are no drawers. I mean, they've gone almost all the way right down. Cool. They've really made sure. I've never seen any damage like this before. No. That's quite remarkable. It looks like they're taking a samurai sword or an axe to it. Yeah. Either or, it's really bad. And on this right-hand side, where there are proper drawers, they uh, just rip the top of the, the drawer trying to get inside. That lock looks... Yeah. Um, oh, that's from the drawer, isn't it? A bit busted. How can you have it? Did, did she leave it to you? When she passed away, things were left to us. And... When we were clearing out the house, I saw the Davenport and I just didn't want to throw it away. Uh, I was obviously uh, close to Olive and also a memory of her, really. Mm. Um, I just didn't want it to end up in a skip somewhere. If it can be repaired and restored to anything like its, you know, former glory, uh, it'd be fantastic because um, I'd like to actually pass it on to my niece, who's actually going to university next year. You know, she's the brains in the family. Um, <laughs> this, this would be kind of a nice place to... Um, Put our work. This is the workshop of dreams, and <laughs> anything can happen. Well, if you can, I'll, I'll take my hat off, literally. Literally, <laughs> take the hat off. Be brilliant if you could. Thanks Good very much. Thanks Cheers. Bye bye. So you've got your work cut out for you, haven't you, Sam? Oh, yeah, well. Olive was like a second mum uh, to me. Kind of nice to think that there's this keepsake, um, this permanent reminder of her that's going to sort of survive for many more years to come. I haven't got a clue how you're going to do those. I'll be able to do an amazing job from that. On this bit? Yeah. You sure? You have little faith, come on. <laughs> you two right there. From bringing damaged desks back from the brink to retouching antique works of art, the repair shop team is ready and able to tackle any restoration task. Steve is the young gentleman you need to see, just in that corner. All right? Hello. Hello there. I've had a little travel clock for you. The next challenge is for clockmaker Steve, a precious timepiece that has been in Ian Wynne Powell's family for three generations. It belonged to my grandparents, so I don't know its date or anything. It was on their mantelpiece, and it's one of the few possessions that they had left after internment in Changi in Singapore. Oh, really? I've treasured it and wanted it ever since, and when they died, they gave it to my parents, and when my parents died, they gave it to me, and I'd love it back on our mantelpiece to give to our children. When was it last working? Uh, it has been working in the last 20 years, but I, I took it to someone who sort of tried to repair it, but it didn't work properly. OK. Well, it, it's Swiss, as, as you probably know, because it's uh, Swiss made, and I see it's got um, a silver mark. Oh, has it? It's a Birmingham mark. A Birmingham mark? A oh, Swiss made watch. So 1925. Made. Now that he knows when and where the clock was made, next Steve must find out why it's not working. So the balance isn't turning very nicely. You're blinding me with science yeah. now. <laughs> the spindle that goes through the centre is called a balance star. Right. And quite often, if, if a clock is knocked or a watch is knocked, the balance star breaks. Okay. Um, this one hasn't broken but I do need to strip the movement down to have a look and see why it's not working correctly. Brilliant. OK. Thank you very much. Hi. Nice to meet you. And you. Knowing that it was 1925 and it was silver and it's hallmarked, that was quite amazing, cos I wasn't sure what the metal was, cos it didn't look like dirty silver, it just looked like some shiny metal. The power's getting through to the balance, but uh, the balance isn't turning. I'm actually hoping, because it's been stopped for such a long time, that it, it might just be 
stop through um, dirt and grime and, and, and a good clean through might just get it going really well. While Steve starts deconstructing his clock, Will is getting to grips with the Davenport desk, much of which was reduced to splinters by burglars. I don't think I've worked on anything with such sort of blunt trauma to it. It's in a bit of a sorry state. Davenport desks are named after Captain Davenport, who commissioned the design in the 18th century. Often they feature a set of drawers down both sides, one real, one false. It was the false drawers that fooled the burglars. I really want to get this surface flat again. Right now, it's just the preparation, getting everything glued back in place, clamped really tightly. I'm just trying to work as much of the glue into the crack as I can. So I've got this uh, piece of wood here, flat piece of wood. The idea is to put the flat piece of wood over the crack and clamp it down from either side. I put some blue tape on one side to prevent the wood from sticking to the glue. But wood that's over a century old isn't as supple as it was in its youth. Can't you put a clamp in there? You need one here, didn't you? And how are we going to get a clamp in there? Unless I had a big, deep-throated clamp. Deep-throated clamp? Yeah. Uh -huh. I'll tell you what you could put. You could put a strap round there, wouldn't it? To go around that bit, and that'll push that down, like that. I've got one. A band clamp? I'll call it a thingamajig. Thingy, thingamajig. Thingamajig. All right, stick it under here, then. There you are. Perfect. Nice. Any more than that, yeah, you're going to hear a crack. I was going to do this anyway, Jay. I just thought I'd, I'd, I'd aid you just a little bit. Because yeah. I knew you, you had it all under control, didn't you? All under control. Yeah. I can see that bead of sweat just dripping off your brow. <laughs> <right>? yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always watching over me, Jay. Thanks, I, uh, mate. Like an angel. It's got to be done, man. It's got to be yeah. done. While the glue sets, Will turns his attention to the drawer and lock broken by the burglars and makes a 999 call of his own. Steve? What do you think it is? Oh, it's got to be a lock, hasn't it? Let's have a look. Oh, my word. That's well mullered, isn't it? Okay. When you say well mullered, is it too mullered? I'm not sure without taking it apart. Have you got a key for it? Nope. There's no key. You got that bit? I'm about to piece it all together now. OK. But that would be the final piece of my puzzle I, uh, working on. All right, OK. OK, careful you don't lose any bits. Cool. Yep. OK. You're the man. Thanks, Steve. Cheers. Nick's done a really good job at keeping all of these puzzle pieces. I think they should all pretty much... I say that now, hold on. I think, I think they all pretty much fit together. <laughs> this one has been bent. Um, and uh, almost destroyed by the thieves. While Will puzzles over his wooden jigsaw, Steve has his own metal mystery to solve. Sort of fit a key to it now. I've got a pot of spare keys. Hopefully, I can get one of them to fit. He always tells me it's really tricky because he puts his hand into like a jar of loads of keys and so it has to test each key, and it's usually the last key in the box. That works. If I ever see pots of keys in antique shops, car boot sales, I'll always buy them to add to the collection. Look at that, found one. Have you? Yeah. If I just go like that, it works perfectly. Wow. And the other thing, it wasn't the last one. Aha. Uh -huh. How you doing? The young lady you need to see is Kirsten just over there. Expert at taking on the problems others fear to fix, no restoration project phases the repair shop team. Hello, how we doing? Hiya. And Brian Mattox has some childhood treasures he hopes electronics expert Neil Fairley can jumpstart back to life. What have we got in there, kids? What is it? This is uh, from my childhood. These are uh, two talking Daleks. 
Wow. Oh, man, look at that. Like, this is taking me back, taking me back. They came out in two colours, red Dalek, and this is the grey Dalek. I remember watching Doctor Who and seeing the Daleks and being so scared of these when they first came out. Yeah, you're behind the sofa still. So, what I can see is that there's a kind of theme running through here where you've mm. got the scarf. Is oh, these yeah. the only, well, only things Gosh, you've got in your no. collection? Golly, no, I've got a whole room full. In a galaxy far, far away, near Wigan, Brian has collected a stellar store of Doctor Who memorabilia. This is the Doctor Who room. This is my Doctor Who DVD cabinet. Doctor Who costumes, every Doctor Who magazine. There's even a Doctor Who chest set down here. Blow up Dalek. There's just Doctor Who everything that you can imagine. In the 1970s, I was a very, very bully child. Every day when I'd come home from school, I'd be straight in there with uh, my Doctor Who toys. They were my escape into another world. They were my friends. The, 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 the toys were more than just toys. Just holding them and the feel of them reminds me of the games that we used to play and the adventures that we used to have, climbing the icy wastes of the stairs. So what's wrong with them, then? The grey one is a bit slurry, so it sounds usually a little bit drunk. That one, yeah. <laughs> right, and the red one here? That one doesn't talk at all. Oh, man. And then these go in there. They're very easy to lose, obviously, when you were a kid, but yeah. they fit in just... Uh, now he looks like a proper Dalek, yeah. yeah. Now it looks like a fearsome predator of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to get these working. It would mean an awful lot to hear everything work as near perfect as possible. Now we're going to get it perfect, not near perfect, because he's drunk <laughs> yeah. and we've got to get him sober that. <laughs> Thanks right. a lot. See ya. You, you take care. <laughs> oh, it would be amazing if it could be made so that they could all talk in exactly the way they used to do again. So we're going to have some challenges here, then? We're going to have some challenges here, but it's going to be good fun. To fix them, Neil first has to find out what makes them speak. This is the voice box of the Dalek. I've never worked with a voice box before of any kind. And, aha, the disky thing is actually a record. The Dalek's voice box works exactly like a record player in miniature, with a tiny needle and a turntable powered by a small electric motor. And Neil's already honing in on the possible source of the problem. I think he's slurring because something in here is not lubricated properly. It could be these shafts, it could be the motor itself. So the first thing I'm going to do is some lubrication. And hopefully that will stop the slurriness. Meanwhile, Will is hoping that his latest piece of handiwork doesn't come unstuck. This is the big reveal, yeah? Time to remove the clamps and Jay's thingamajig from the damaged Davenport desk. <laughs> hey. <laughs> oh, well done. <laughs> flat? That's cool. Yeah, that is flat. Oh, that's pretty flat. That's a lot better, isn't it? Well done. Now the structure is secure, Will can start repairing the gaping wound. That's looking all right, isn't it? So what have you got next? I'm going to put a bit of polish on the front now. When I get polish on there, I can colour match it to uh, the actual colour that yeah, I need. Yeah, the real colour. Yeah. For the final stage, Will's drawing in another skill from his restoration treasure chest, one that will need all his craftsmanship and eye for detail. Yeah, it's pretty intricate. Blending in the filler bit by bit, building up the layers with the different parts of the grain. Just trying to work between the different colours of pigment, the orange and the browns, and every sort of colour that you can find in the veneer. I went to art school for a year, one of the best years of my life. And um, I really like painting and fine art and stuff, but never had the chance really to use that. So when I went to antique furniture restoration, um, things like this allowed me to uh, sort of pick up a paintbrush again and, you know, mix around a few colours and be creative with a brush again. Once this is dried, I give everything a wax over and a bit of a buff and 
think we'll be ready to hand it back to Nick. Jay? Oh, what do you think? <sighs> nah, I have to... <laughs> take that off to you, Take that off again? No, well done. Lovely. Your finest work, mate. This is... Really? It's remarkable. There was a hole here, there, one there, and there was a massive crack down the middle there. It reminded people of a really bad memory, and yeah. you've just erased that completely. Sorry, I know I've touched it, and I don't want to <laughs> ruin your work. I saw those eyes. Let me have a look at the inside. Well done. Well done. That was all broken across yeah. there. This lock wasn't on there originally. The lock was on a piece. Oh, a piece of inside timber. Inside there, yeah. But Steve was really cool. kind enough to straighten up the lock. If I ever get locked out of my ass, I know it's cool. <laughs> Steve, do you want to have a look at this, mate? Cursed yeah. Up. Come and have a look. Will has, um, he's been busy. Finally finished. Finally yeah. finished. Amazing. Which is the side that was... Is this side? Uh, 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 <laughs> she's got a charm of a queen, isn't she, eh? <laughs> isn't that yeah, just fun. fabulous? Absolutely fabulous. It is, isn't it? Yeah. Can't do it with a praise. I don't know how to take <laughs> That's it. True. No, it's true. You've got to give credit where credit's due. That is... That's amazing. It is, isn't it? It's just got a new lease of life, really, isn't it? Mm. It's like, honestly, it was so dilapidated before. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well done. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, no. really well Enjoy it. Yeah. Enjoy it, because yeah. you have done good. The Davenport was a really challenging job. I mean, it was pretty severe what the burglars had done and the pressure of getting it right. I mean, the story behind it, Olive and what she's done for Nick's family. So I really hope that what I've done now will help remove any negative associations and he can just look at it now and just think of, you know, the good times with Olive. Bidding farewell to the repair shop, the desk makes the 100-mile journey back to its owner, Nick, and his sister-in-law, Michelle now fully functional and ready to be passed on to Nick's niece, Ellie. So, Ellie, I bet you're wondering what's going on. We've actually got a surprise for you. Hiding underneath this red cloth is something which I hope you're going to really enjoy. It's something that belonged to Olive, um, something that was in her family for a long time. I'm actually really excited to see it because I haven't seen it yet. Three. One, two, three. Whoa! Gosh, that's really old school, isn't it? Is. Lovely. I've done a fantastic job on it. I don't know if you can see this. Right from the top all the way to the bottom was this massive crack, half an inch wide. They've done a fantastic job here because you wouldn't be able to tell. It's given it a whole new lease of life. That's brilliant, yeah. isn't it? Fantastic. Good craftsmanship, isn't it, the way they've been able to do that? So, then, are you pleased? Yeah, I'm really pleased. It's lovely, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, no problem. Just really hope you enjoy it and get lots of use out of it. I really do appreciate it because it's such a nice gift and like it reminds me of Olive and having that like to take with me and also pass on like future generations is just like really thoughtful. I was absolutely staggered. Unless someone had told you, you wouldn't have known um, it had suffered so much damage. They're just magicians. I don't know how they did it. It's a really nice ending to the story that Ellie's now got something that can remind her of someone who meant so much to her. I know it would have given Olive a lot of joy knowing that um, it was going to be passed on to Ellie as well. Back in the workshop, Neil is still trying to sober up the drunk Daleks. So how are we getting along now? Ah, we're doing well, Jay. I'm about to fill this one with oil because right. having used solvent to clean out the old oil and grease, we now need to put new oil and grease. What we're going to do is put some oil on this end and on that end of the motor, which is where the bearings are. Where'd you get one of these from, then? I like this. Uh, you can buy them on the internet. It's not sharp, so you don't need to worry about touching it with your fingertip. Oh, cool. It's a blunt needle. And then it and comes up. Oh, useful. what? Now that is smart. So you can get it right into you the can little. Get it right in. So that should do it. We hope so. Okay. So, so it's all oiled up, yeah. It's all oiled up. I'm going to give the motor a good spin to make sure that the oil's got to the parts. I've oiled the shaft just by putting a little bit of oil on my hands and rubbing it like yeah, that. Yeah, so we start to reassemble now. The record goes into the right place. Yeah, I want to hear it. I want to hear it play. Well, fingers crossed you will, but right. we're coming to the really tricky part now. I'm putting the needle on. Yeah. We've got to get that tiny spring to fold back so that it goes inside the top part of the case. I think I missed it. So here we go again. 
All done. I think he's back together. OK, so we'll put the batteries in. He's getting proper excited. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. yeah that sounds yeah. good. <laughs> wow, he's sobered up now, isn't he? He is. So you've got lubrication, made him work, and that's it. Everything's good. Everything's good for the silver dollar. How about this guy? Well, we're going to get to him next. OK, Let cool. Me put this one back together first. Oh, well, I'll leave you to it then. With Dalek number one refreshed, revived and keen to get back to the day job, it should be a simple matter of repeating the process for Dalek number two. That's not a promising sign. These two screws, which hold the two halves of the voice box together, they're absolutely chewed to rags. The heads of the screws have gone. Basically, we've had it. With the red Dalek resisting the force of Neil's not-so-sonic screwdriver, he resorts to drastic measures, injecting his special solution into any opening he can find. We'll give it a good shake. The solvent will now have evaporated, so I've gone to my second syringe and I'm putting some oil on the pivots and keep our fingers crossed and see if it works. Meanwhile, time is standing still for Steve and the silver travel clock. There's real thick oil on the underside of the dial there. Just wipe that off and show you. This had loads of oil put on, and there's, there's no way that you should put as much um, oil onto a, a clock like this. Steve now needs to dismantle the gummed-up clock, thoroughly clean the intricate parts, and reassemble it again. All before Ian returns to collect his treasured family timepiece. It's quite a nice part of the job, cleaning up the silver, because it does come up really, really well. It's going to start putting the main part of the clock together now. And there we are, all done. It's quite incredible to think that this uh, survived Ian's grandparents being in uh, a Japanese camp. They must have had it hidden away somewhere. Incredibly safe. Hello, Ian. Hi, Steve. How are you? Nice to see you again. You too. <laughs> How have you got on, sir? Yeah, really well. I'll yeah. just go and get your clock for you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, wow. There I see. Wow, I can see from here that you've done a lot of work on that. That is really glistening, isn't it? I've never seen the silver look like that. Oh, right. Never. Yeah. Um, that is amazing. Asha, can I? I haven't heard it tick for so long. Oh, it does. Yeah. That's beautiful, <laughs> isn't it? And is that the right time? I've got no idea. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing. I did not expect it to come back looking like that. Thank you very much. I hope it brings back the, the memories of, of your grandparents. It um, certainly and, will and, do and, that. And the life that this has had with your grandparents as well. Well, that's what I'm now desperately keen to find out yeah. because I haven't found it out. I spent a long time looking and I haven't quite got to the end of it yet to oh, right, know okay. how it came to them or whether it came to my grandmother or my grandfather because right. there's a bit in their life that's missing and I need to try and see if I can research it a bit more. It's re-sparked the, uh, the desire to go through the family tree in a bit more detail. I can't believe he's got the silver up the way he has. It's never looked like that all the time I've had it. I'm gobsmacked. It's, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And I know when I tell the family what's happened, they will be absolutely delighted. There we go. Never thought I'd get it back like that. And uh, I wish I'd met you earlier. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Cheers. You take care. Bye-bye now. But as one happy customer leaves the workshop, two more recent arrivals are kicking up a fuss. This red Dalek has been silent for 10 years, and electronics expert Neil is on a one-man mission to make him speak. We need the oil to get in all the places the oil needs to go into, and the best way of getting the oil to do that is to make everything move that needs to move. And the best way to make everything move that needs to move is, of course, to put in the batteries and push the button. That doesn't sound right. 
Shall I take it outside? Yeah, it's a bit possessed, yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah, let's take it out. That's Nightmare. I'm going to be thinking about that to the face. <laughs> Demonic Dalek coming for me. <laughs> He's asking what our orders are. <laughs> well, Which is a good job. I'll, I'll, I'll give him an order. Get <laughs> the hell out of here. <laughs> It's yeah. getting clearer. It is, it is getting, getting clearer. clearer. I'll yeah. give it that. With their dulcet tones restored, these fearsome warriors can be reassigned to their quest for world domination near Wigan and return to their master, Brian. How you doing? You all right? Oh, God, the tension. <laughs> the tension. Good news about the Daleks. <laughs> now, he's on hyperdrive. <laughs> yeah, but even the red one. You need to obey, but apart from that, <laughs> you need to make the thing work as much as possible. Okay. So don't be afraid to use it. Use it and use it and use it. Oh. And the more you use it, the higher his pitch is going to get. So he's going to end up okay. speaking like a normal Dalek. It's so good to hear them both speak, at least. But considering they were made in 1975, yeah. Okay. They're doing very well, both they of are, them. Yeah. really. I'm yeah. very impressed with that voice. <laughs> awesome, thank you. Now I've got them back again. Perhaps these Daleks can uh, conquer the icy slopes of the stairs again, just like they used to do in the 1970s. But first into the repair shop today, Rosie Gorman. Hello, how are you doing? Hi, I'm fine, thanks. How are you? Who has travelled from Lancashire on a super secret mission to test the metal of furniture restorer Jay Blades and musical box expert Stephen Kember. What have we got here? This is a smoker's music box. <laughs> a smoker's that music box? It's a very old smoker's music box that has been in our family for as long as I can remember. Oh, that's cute. Um, behind every little door is something that a gentleman would have used. So where would the cigarettes... The cigarettes get... This looks like it's a little smoke, uh, Yeah, definitely. I would imagine that's where the cigarettes sit. There's um, a tobacco pouch here, and in the box as well... So these are all the, the carefully collected bits. This is the music bit. So this would sit on the bottom. Yeah. Um, okay. My mum's often told me the, the, the tune that it goes. However, it would just be amazing to have it um, working. It would be a surprise for my mum. She doesn't know I have it. Um, oh, she doesn't know? What, no. She doesn't know that you've got this? No, no. You've taken it out of the house? I've taken Smuggled. it out of the house. Smuggled out of the Contraband. house. Contraband. <laughs> How long has this been in the family, then? This it was given to my mum from her father. Right. It was given to from his mother. Um, and then we think it goes further back um, through her father. Mm -hmm. However, it, it, it's been broken all my life. Yeah. Um, but my mum has seen it and had it working. The music, music would be produced while you lit your cigarette okay. and just relax just at relax. the end of the day. <laughs> now, I did actually notice there's a little hole in one of these decorative pieces here. Oh. And I suspect that that is probably for the on-off switch. Oh, wow. And what we've got there is something that looks suspiciously like an on-off switch. Wow. So, we're going to get the music playing. Get the music playing, doors working. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get back to you. Fantastic. Is that all right? Thank you ever so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Wonderful to meet you both. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care now. The music box is so special for my mum um, because it's one of the, the kind of only things she, she has really of her, her father, who so she had a really close relationship with. And um, because it's music, um, being able to hear, hear something hopefully will take her right back um, into her childhood. The, the ethics of restoration are that you shouldn't ma improve something. You shouldn't make it better than it originally was. Yeah. But I think it might be an idea to adapt it right. to, so that it's still going to be around in 50, 60 years' time. Okay. It's down to musical box maestro Steve mm. to bring this intriguing piece of history back to its former glory. The plan for the music box is in two phases. We've basically got the wooden cigarette dispenser part and we've got the musical part. So I'm going to deal with the musical part first. So we've just taken off uh, comb here, and so 
Now I can relax a little bit. I've sort of diffused the bomb, as it were. Music is produced when the tuned metal comb is plucked by pins on the spinning cylinder. So next, Steve must use tiny droplets of oil to try to free up the locked mechanism. Oh, looks as though we're spinning. But it's still very dirty. So we can remove the cylinder now. Here we are. So the next time you see this, it should be nice and clean with all the congealed oil removed, ready to be reinstalled. But what we will have to do when we reinstall it is straighten some of these rather bent pins. OK, wish me luck. From worn-out woodwork in need of a revamp to dilapidated Daleks that have lost their voices. That doesn't sound right. The repair shop's talented team of craftsmen pledged to put the shine back on Britain's treasured possessions. Next in need of rescuing is Roy Farrier, who has a challenge for firefighter and memorabilia expert Stuart Black. What have we brought along then? Let's have a look at this. It's a farmer's helmet, my granddad's. Looks like it's been through the wars or through a few fires. He was born in. Uh, 1892, so it's best part of 100 years old, I'm guessing. And whereabouts was this? What town? Um, he was a farmer in Sandwich in Kent. Yeah. We've got a photograph of him uh, that was uh, it's dated as 1935. We believe this is him. Yeah. Tommy Farrier. Uh huh. That's great to bring it in, Roy. And if you're happy to leave it with us, we'll get cracking and we'll see you when it's all done. Good to see Good you. Good to meet you. Bye bye. Nice Thanks you. very much. Thanks bye bye. Bye bye. Now Stuart just needs to get this 100-year-old helmet ready for action. It's always lovely to work on, on, on something like this. Uh, it, it, it's back in the glory days of the British Fire Service. Um, if an item like this could, could tell a story, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear it. Slight tweak at the end using the pliers. The nice dinging sound means that we're making perfect contact with the with the metal. If it starts a dull sound, stop hammering, we're in the wrong place. That's the sound we want. This historical helmet is sparking curiosity. The fire service, wouldn't it be proud? You'd be proud to be a fireman, basically. Well, that's right. There was a lot of uh, civic pride, uh, as, as well as you know, personal pride in being it. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of gentlemen fire brigades as right. well. They were almost like social clubs, really. Oh, right. um, yeah, and they they were the ones that they had the really posh equipment. You wouldn't have just leather straps; they'd be lined with velvet. Oh come on! And the lining, instead of being leather, would be silk. So you'll have silk in here. Yeah. This one looks like he's done a bit of work. So he's been in the wars, then, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, he was an Indian rather than a chief. He's a worker. He's a grafter, well, isn't he? That's right. Yeah, yeah. And while Roy gets on with his grafting, Steve has taken up the challenge of restoring a musical smoker's paraphernalia case. These mechanical novelties were popular at the end of the 19th century. The cylinder music makers were put into keepsakes such as jewellery chests, photograph frames and smoker's boxes like this one. Having thoroughly cleaned all the individual pieces, Steve can now focus on bringing this antique musical gizmo back to life. Oh, I like this. Good. Well, we've got the sort of dissected Ooh. creature here. Is that the same one? Yeah, yeah. But uh, you've cleaned so that up well, don't We're doing all right because we've cleaned all the nasty um, congealed oil off of there. Yeah. We've got a little um, uh, pin straightening to do. Now, You're not really going to straighten one of them? I'm going to straighten several. There's quite a lot that are bent. In Have you got bionic eyes? Yes. <laughs> these are my Joe 90 glasses. I remember Joe 90. And when I put these on, yeah. I turn into a superhuman pin straightener. It's a, quite a tedious sort of job, but it's, oh, wow. <laughs> it's, it's what I do. The music box mechanism is well on the way to being fixed, so Steve can turn his attention to the turning doors of the cabinet. The way it functions at the moment is that when there's the knob at the top is turned, the doors will open like that. 
but the only problem is that two of the gear wheels are missing, so two of them don't open. And so we have to put this brass insert into one of the door pillars so that we can screw the gear wheel that is the replacement onto one of the uh, door pillars so that this one will open as well. Steve's got to be precise as he guides the powerful pillar drill. One wobble could ruin the precious antique. Get in. What I'll do now is I'll put the gear wheel in place. So that's going to go on there. We're going to screw in. Oops. So that's nice. Right, now, fingers crossed. There you go, look at that. <laughs> Now we've got to assemble the cylinder and the motor onto the bed plate so that uh, we can get the clockwork motor running and the uh, cylinder turning before attaching the comb, which is going to produce the music. A little bit of a test there. So wish me luck, boys, because if I wind this, it should start rotating. And it does. Look at that. Lovely. So we're off. With movement restored, it's time to bring out the bionic glasses and begin the all-important pin straightening. And the box is well on the way to getting its music back. Well, there you go. There's one for you. Between them, this talented team have a wealth of experience and all the skills to take precious possessions from lacklustre to luscious. Great. Smashing. Super. Hi, guys. Hey, Jen. Hi, Hi. Nice. The next customer has arrived and he's eager to see ceramics expert Kirsten. I brought this old chap in and I thought you might be interested in repairing him for me. Philip Bennett is a keen gardener living in northwest Wales. And behind closed doors, his home reveals an extraordinary obsession. The collection is around 205 at the moment. Um, I'm not allowed to have them all out. My wife isn't very keen on them. I actually detest them. I think they're horrible, scary little creatures. <laughs> not my favourite thing. <laughs> scary or not, Philip is desperate to get this particular gnome repaired. Well, this gnome is very special to me because he was my mum's favourite. And my mum always thought he was a very cheeky chap that reminded her of me. So this is homage to, to mum. And then... homage to mum. <laughs> yeah. My favourite yeah. gnome. He's had many repairs and bashes over the years. He's lost a lot of definition in his arms. His head's come off, and he's lost all his, his detailed colouring. So not much, then? <laughs> no? <laughs> he's in bad shape. Kirsten could actually, I think, fix this. Um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Initially, you can see that there's glass fibre on them. That's quite unsightly, really, isn't it? Is, it? Yeah. Um, it's been broken across the hat there. That could certainly be improved. Oh, and his hands. If you look at the fingers, you can see there's quite a lot of detail there, whereas on that hand, someone's actually gone over that with, with restoration. So, Mum's known. It's definitely in safe hands. And um, we'll be in contact and let you know when we've worked on it. Great stuff. Thank okay. you very much. Indeed. Thank you, Phil. Thank, Thank you. So, what are you thinking of doing? I think we need to be quite careful how mm. we paint it. I don't want it to look brash. We need to be quite sympathetic with, yeah. the, with the painting. Oh, it'd be wonderful to see him repaired again, um, looking like he used to, he used to look. It'll do justice to the people that made him and also great, great for my mum's memory, because uh, him being her, her favourite now. Kirsten will have her work cut out to get this Victorian cheeky chappy back to looking his best. I've applied some paint stripper and I'm hoping that it's going to, um, the solvent's actually going to start to dissolve the, uh, 
the previous repair. What's the silver foil do? It, Does it, it just, keep him warm? Yeah, it, no. No. <laughs> it, it contains the solvent really, so that actually it works more effectively, and also it just kind of minimises the fumes really a bit. So okay. Yeah. So this is the test to say whether it's gone right or gone wrong. Absolutely. So I'm just really, no pressure. No, I'm really hoping that. Should this I get will everybody to it? come and have a look at this? <laughs> no, no? Don't, no. All right. <laughs> I'm hoping that it will have worked on the adhesive that's holding the fiberglass Five together. Glass. Yeah. Okay. So. So let's have a look then and see what's under here. Ah, oh, look. OK, that's great. So that basically means that I can now apply more to the piece and actually start trying to strip away some of these layers. So it's going good? Yeah, I think so. All yeah. right, so I have nothing to worry about then. So <laughs> okay, I'll leave you alone. thank you. Cheers. All right? Yeah, see you. Thank you. Musical box restorer Steve has been meticulously repairing a much-loved piece which has been in the owner's family for generations. How are we doing, Steve? Well, not too bad. Well, I've just got to attach this, the mechanism. So I've come at the wrong time, haven't I? You've come at the perfect time. Oh, You're right. about to witness some magic. Is it? So, would you like to, um... You're be gonna the trust first me? Person? Yes, sit. All right, cool. Right, I, are you I ready for this? It. Yeah, you I won't might. Break. Go on with your little push. Oh, stop it. Oh, well done. I think restoration went quite well. I think Rose will be happy. I know it's a family piece and there's a lot of sentiment attached to it, so I'm sure that um, she'll be pleased. I think I've done a good job. Here we are, ready for dispatch. Two hundred and seventy miles away, the musical box is safely back home in Lancashire. Rosie and her daughter are about to reveal the surprise to Mum Siobhan. Hi, Mum. Hi. Are you all right? I'm fine. What's uh... <laughs> Come and sit down. Hi. Well, I just want to show you something that we've got for you. Um, and I'm sorry for sneaking it out the house. No. We know how special it is. How, to... how did you get it out the house? Um, we managed it. We've been on a bit of a secret mission for yeah. for a little while, and I just want to show you that all the doors open again. Oh my word, Rose! Um, you haven't got it working. We'll just have a, a little. Um, oh my! <laughs> But we wanted to do oh. this for you because you're the greatest mum ever. Oh, thank you so much. Oh. When Rosie switched it on and, and the music came, it just evoked so many memories um, because it was such a lovely tune and so melodious um, that, I'd, well, I was speechless. <laughs> For me, this has been so worthwhile to be able to see my mum's reaction, to be able to make her so happy. She's been supportive of me throughout my whole life. She's a fantastic grandma, um, a fantastic mum, and just to be able to give something back to her that means so much, no amount of money would have been able to give her that reaction um, and make her that happy, so I'm absolutely delighted. Back in the repair shop, ceramics restorer Kirsten has been spending hours patiently peeling away many years' worth of old repairs on Philip's gnome in order to tackle the damage that lies beneath. Most of this area was covered with the fibreglass and I've managed to remove it, revealing quite a lot of lovely terracotta detail. It's just quite a long, slow process of mechanically picking away at it. As Kirsten carefully removes the layers of fiberglass repairs, the original damage is revealed. And this is just sort of coming loose now, really. Here. I think that's going to come off. Which it is. It's great. <laughs> 
And what's really good is that actually underneath this restoration, I can see there's quite a lot of original arm left. That's good. I'm going to have to try and get this off and see what we're left with. But she's only just getting started. The left arm needs similar treatment. How are we getting on then? I've had a bit of a breakthrough, actually. This arm is just about to come off, actually. Oh, well, you're going to take the other one off? Yeah, it was really badly stuck and um, it was sort of a really bad sort of crack there. So I couldn't actually just leave it because it would have looked really awful. So... I feel pull his arm off. Yeah. Oh, yeah, look. Oh, my. That's unbelievable. So that's why it's taken me so long to get that off. Because, so that's uh, a wooden dowel, yeah? Yeah, don't touch it. I won't touch it. <laughs> it's only because it might... I like touches. <laughs> So, no, well, you've got to just get that out, and then it's a case of putting them back together again, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. Kirsten won't be able to achieve a clean repair unless that dodgy dowel is removed. And for that, she needs a carpenter. Will, have you got a minute, please? Yeah, sure. Know me. Stumpy. Stumpy. I was just wondering if you had a small saw that might be able to cut that off for me. Yes. Yeah? OK. Right, just give me two seconds. All right, lovely. I have never amputated a nose <laughs> arm or anything else on a name. No, too close. Could you just come up Brother? a little bit more? Yeah, that'd be there. great. Yeah. Oh, God! <laughs> oh. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> That's, great. That's great. Lovely. Yep. Thank you so much. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> right, over to you. Lovely. Having cleaned and repaired the amputated arms, Kirsten can now reattach them properly. The arms are on, so I thought I'd try and deal with this crack that runs through the face and the hat here. So I'd like to just stabilise it with um, an adhesive. I'm going to fill the cracks and then sand back and then get painting, which is the bit I know Philip is keen to see. Kirsten is nearly on the home straight with Philip's gnome, and Stuart is working up a sweat getting his fireman's helmet to shine. Keep polishing the main body, start moving it in so that it's dropping into all the recesses. Doing it this way, it brings out all the detail and it, and it, it makes the best of, of brass work. Now all that's left to do is carefully reassemble this beautiful piece of firefighting history. Unfortunately, by the time its owner, Roy, arrived to collect it, Stuart's been called out, leaving Jay to do the honours. Hello, Roy. Hello, Jay. How are you? I'm very good. Good come to see you. Likewise. You come to get your granddad's fireman's helmet, is that right? That's the one. All right, hold on a minute. I'll just get it for you. I'll put my gloves on. <laughs> Oh, you've got special gloves. Well, Stuart was uh, was adamant. So it is a shame that Stuart isn't here, but he is an active fireman, so he's yeah. on call at the moment and he yeah. can't be here. But I did did want you to know that he, he took great pride and he enjoyed working on this one. I'll show you what he's done for you. Oh, look at that. I think you're going to have to do the honours to get it out, actually, because I can't touch it. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant, isn't it? He's obviously dressed the back because this was badly creased. Yeah. And he's repaired, all, he's fixed all the straps as well. Yeah. That's brilliant. So I'll just him up. Let's have a look on the inside. Yeah, and he's managed to get the tape as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah? Yeah, that's you absolute. Happy? I'm very happy. <laughs> it's super. It's done your proud. First rate. It's done your proud there. Now I'll go back home safely now. That's great. Good to see you. Likewise, sir. Thank you very much All indeed. Right. You Thank grab you. that, I'll get the door for you. Thank you. All right? I'm overjoyed, really. It's, it's, it's super. Uh, I mean, it couldn't, 
couldn't really have been better. This is the piece that was closest to my granddad. He would have said, oh, give me the helmet, I'll repair it. But I think that even he would say, thank goodness it's gone to someone that knows what they were doing. My granddad would be very, very pleased with the result. Over in Ceramicsville, Kirsten is still hard at it on the restoration of that ravaged antique gnome. She's fixed the structure. The arms are on. Now comes the fun part. It's always really nice to, to do the painting, actually. It's when the sort of piece starts to come back to, to life, really. Part of the pleasure of, of the job is actually returning the objects to the, to the owners, and um, I just hope that he'll be happy with it, yeah. And the owner's back, and eager to be reunited with his favourite ceramic sidekick. How are we getting Hello. on? Hello. Look. Is he, what, his shirt is bright, isn't he? Well, today I'm feeling rather nervous to see my old friend again, having left him here. That uh, was a very difficult thing to do, and I'm very excited to see how he's turned out. Do you think so, Philip will be happy? I think he's going to be over the moon. Yeah, okay. He's going to be really chuffed with this one. Hi, How are you, Philip? Philip? Hiya. You all right? Yeah, fine. You? Come over. Has he been behaving himself? No. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Not at all. Doesn't let me down, then. <laughs> no. Right. Are you ready to see your friend? Well, I certainly am. There we are. Wow. He looks almost real. Oh. <laughs> I found all sorts of different fillers, different adhesives. <laughs> he even had a wooden dowel in the arm. Uh. I tried to get it out and I couldn't. So in the end, I had to ask Will, our furniture restorer, um, if he could saw, saw it off for me. That's <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's OK. It was a big job. <laughs> it was a big job. He's got his red hat. Yes, indeed. Asked. That's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. And um, I didn't go sort of overboard with... Um, with the face. He looks great. Yeah. Fantastic, yeah. Oh, yeah, he will so definitely nice. be taking pride of place now. He's going in our living room. Is he? So, uh, my wife says he can stay there now, so... Oh, is it? You've got the uh, approval? I've got the royal approval, yeah. Oh, well done. <laughs> well done. After many hours of painstaking restoration, Philip's little friend is more than ready to return to Gnome Sweet Gnome in Wales. Well, having the gnome back restored to a, as close as he was all them years ago is like having a piece of mum back that he's restored to his former glory. It's great, and it'll, when, I, when I see him now, it'll remind me of mum. To go through all that effort to, to restore him was doing justice to the, the guy who made him in the first place who put all that effort into uh, to creating such a wonderful piece. And he'll now, you know, spend his retirement in that condition. He'll never be going outside again. Hello. How are you doing? Hi, very well. But first through the doors today, needlework designer Emily Peacock has a puzzle for ceramicist Kirsten Ramsey to piece together. So what have we got here then? Right, I have a jug um, by a French artist called Jean Lursa. Oh, wow. Take Do you that want out. me to take that out? Yeah, I might okay. break it some more. All right. So well. how did it, how did it break? Um, it was sitting on a windowsill and there was some drilling going on outside and it just slowly danced to the edge of the windowsill and threw itself off. Gosh, there's quite a few pieces mm. in here. I've kept all the small little pieces. Well aside. done. You've done absolutely the right thing, actually. It's always best to keep as many pieces that you can find um, because they're all helpful. What's this? Uh, yeah, that's the sort of dust. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's <laughs> OK. <laughs> OK, yeah, a I, thousand piece I know I was there. saying keep the pieces, mm. but uh, OK. Yeah, no, that's, that's actually great. So can you tell us anything about the artist who, who made this, then? Yes, he was a man called Jean Lursa, and he lived in the southwest of France. He's primarily known for his tapestries, which is where my interest came in. Yeah. So this piece is mm. really sort of holds a lot of importance. Yeah, it? the value is... Here, it's oh, not really. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's not there. No, no not so it's much there. there. Okay. No. It's beautiful. It's got the most lovely glaze on it. It's sort of um, reminiscent of Picasso's ceramics as well. Would you say? Yes. Well, he was yeah. a contemporary, and actually, yes. they did um, they did spend time together in France. Oh, did they? Yeah. Right. Well, leave it with us, Thank um, you. and we'll get back to you as soon as you've worked your magic on it. Speak um, tomorrow, then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bye. 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 
that's a lot of pieces. You know, it'd be interesting to see if everything is here. I think I probably need to do it actually at my workbench. Um, don't forget the envelope yeah, no. of all the dust. I am worried because it's terracotta. I don't know if that's easy to repair or not. But also the glaze has got a great handmade quality to it. It doesn't obviously look like a mass produced piece. So you can see some of the terracotta colour coming through the glaze. And I just think, wow, that's quite a job. And having taken on that job, it's now down to Kirsten to see if she can solve this terracotta jigsaw. I'm just sort of doing a dry run, really, before I actually put the adhesive on it. I do this to um, make sure that I've got all the pieces. Yeah. And to just kind of check how they go together. It's, Are you missing um, something? I'm, well, there's a few sort of uh, little chipped areas, kind of like out of, say, somewhere like there. And oh, right. Actually, I've, I think I've got that one there. Got well, that little actually, bit Actually, I'm there. not sure I've got that one, but I've got some of them, so I've kind of been checking in this little box of broken bits, really. So you've been checking those yeah. against the... Yeah, because actually, I know it seems really fiddly, but actually, if you can find one of those bits that goes in there, that's going to yeah. save you the time that you spend kind of filling it and sanding it and then painting it. So it is actually worth worth doing. Well, I've got a bit of the sneezes, so I won't stand okay, there. All right. And, right, and I'll okay. move away. All right, thanks, Jay. For family heirlooms too precious to throw away, but too damaged to go on display, the repair shop team is ready, willing and able to restore them back to pride of place. What have you got there? That looks nice. Will is the man you need to see. Kyle instead has a very special jewellery box that needs Will's skills to give it a new lease of life. It belonged to my grandmother. Okay. okay. Um, she passed away in 1964. Right. and was passed on to my father. He passed away in 1999, and I've had it ever since. Do you currently use it for I your... I don't use it no. because it's damaged. Oh. As you can see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the bed on the broken side. The keyhole is exposed there, but normally there's a, a little piece that fixes in there, which covers up the loss, so you wouldn't normally see that. And then that is exposed if you slide the base and yeah. then that drops down, exposing the keyhole. Now, but that has actually come detached. Such a clever box. It's Such lovely. a clever little box. So, of course, the whole thing looks like a book. Like very small books within yeah. two bigger books. Yeah, but it's even got the original key, which I've got there. Wow. When I was young, I loved sort of fiddly little boxes and... Uh, it's really clever, especially with like the secret key and the secret panel. What else can you tell me about the box? Do you know where it was originally from? No, or... I've no idea where it came from originally. Don't even know what wood it's made from. And I'm just looking at the swallows here. They look like they've been painted on. I mean, you can see on the top here, it's pretty, pretty s scratched. It's had a few years of use. Yeah. Because she used to use it constantly as a jewelry box. I will get to work and see what I can do. Lovely, thank okay. you. It would mean a lot to me to see it restored to its original beauty. Um, it was obviously a treasured possession of my grandmother's, and I'd like to better keep it in the family, so I'd like to see it restored so that I can use it. I have a feeling that it would have originally been a dark colour, which um, reminds me, I've seen a lot of these similar sort of boxes. I think this is Italian origin, olive wood. Wherever it comes from, this small box has big problems. A broken lock, cover and hinge, plus a very tired interior. Will is going to need some reinforcements in the shape of clockmaker Steve. If you can solve just something onto that head, to the other side of there. Hey, see what date that newspaper is. As Will digs deeper into the box, a fragment of old newspaper reveals itself. Well, we thought that it was Italian, uh, and that is Roma, Roma. Oh, right. Italian. Hey. Bit of uh, Poirot work. Oh, you there. told that? Yeah, uh, yeah, I got that in my <laughs> earpiece. No, I, I knew that this was Italian. Oh, I'm just using Read him in, Steve. Read him in. I, I just know how old it is. 1920s Italian. How old are you? It's made out of olive wood. <laughs> it was it? No, but anyway, <laughs> Steve, if you can get on with that job, uh, I'm going to... Is that over. enough, Steve? <laughs> While Steve and Will are busy on the box, Kirsten's terracotta jigsaw puzzle 
is proving tricky to piece together. It's not going quite according to plan at the moment. Uh, the sticks aren't going together terribly well. If you just get like a little grain of sand that's on the break edge, it just puts the whole join out. The jugs creator, artist Jean Losa, is better known for his tapestries than his pottery. He was born in France in 1892, studied alongside Matisse, Cézanne and Renoir, and was a contemporary of Pablo Picasso. I can breathe now, yeah? No, not yet. OK. I'm still sort of moving it around while it's still... Playable. Yeah, exactly. Because the um, adhesive hasn't actually gone off yet and, and it's sort of moving slightly. Um, there's some joins that I'm not entirely happy with. Right. Um, just It's just given that it's so... Um... Broken. It's so broken, yeah. I've got my hands in my pockets. I'm standing well away. I'm not going to sneeze. <laughs> you're learning, Jay. So these little bits, obviously, you're going to touch all of this up, where yeah, there's I'm cracks gonna, and whatever. I'm going to fill it, you fill know, it. like okay. fill it and then paint it, hand, yeah. hand paint it. So does it feel cool to be working on a piece of work by a mate of Picasso? Yeah, absolutely. It's quite cool, isn't yeah, it? It's, um, yeah, it's quite an honour, actually, I think. Here I've got two different grades of sandpaper. I know it looks like a big jumble, but I kind of know what I've got in there. I kind of cut them up small like this and rolled up so that they're kind of handy to get into nits and crannies. Sad as it might sound, I kind of get my favourite bits of sandpaper in here as well that I keep going back to. So how are we doing the old china plate? I'm just starting the painting process, really, so it's... So the final furlong is there, then? Yeah, it is, okay, actually. Cool. All of these cracks that you've, you've mended and got the jug yeah. back together, in the end of it, will Emily be able to see those cracks? That's a good question, Jay. Actually. You're supposed to say no. Well... Come on, help me Do out. you know, um, the thing is, yeah. um, it depends, really, actually, the pieces that you're working on. You know, some pieces you would just get your airbrush out and you could make it completely invisible. But I, th I think it's about not smothering this piece in paint. Okay. And actually, I want to keep the restoration to, to a minimum, really. In a right. way, it's sort of more of a, a conservation job, just because it's such a lovely piece. So she might see some of the cracks. I think so, but she seems to me like someone that would kind of rather have an honest restoration than, okay. than a piece that's completely smothered in spray. It probably looks absolutely awful to you. It's no, it looks of... good. <laughs> yeah. Compared to the way it came in, I remember it, it was all in bits. You put it together. Yeah. Yes, you've got this kind of Don't touch. That I'm not touching. <laughs> I'm getting close, though. I can never touch anything on this. <laughs> it's not good. Right. How are you doing? The main man to see is Steve. The repair shop team answer all manner of SOS calls for broken family pieces left on the shelf. And it's not long before Neville Reed arrives with something that Jay can get his hands on. Hello, how are we doing? Hello. So what have we got here, then? The lion chair. The lion chair. Oh, wow. Is that the face of the lion? Yes, when I was little, right. I used to think that these were lions. My family had a house up in the north of Scotland, and this sat outside the bedroom door. Right. And as a small boy in a house where I was not allowed to touch anything at all, right. when nobody was looking, I used to sit in it. <laughs> and many years later, I inherited this. And I don't sit in it because it's a little bit rickety. It is a bit, yeah. You've got no seat. It was not in good condition when I was little. Yeah, I don't think this is the original. Well, this top layer that you've got here right. isn't the original. This looks more to ah, be the original. OK. I haven't noticed that. And then underneath, you've got, oh, there we go. We've got a signature underneath there. Does that make any sense to you? Reed. Yeah, well, Reed's my surname. OK. Any idea of where this has come from or the age of it? No, nope, I've no idea of the age or where it came from. The only thing, I've always believed that it's been in the family from new. From new, you say? I've always believed it was. The reason why I'm asking you that is because I think this is 19th century Italian chair. Um, do you have any connection to an Italian family? Or yes. Do you? Yes. How far back is that? 18th, 19th century. I'm just getting fur coming up on the back of my neck, super excited to find out if this really is connected to your family from birth. Because that's, 
that's part of history. I shouldn't even be leaning on this, actually. This is quite an important chair. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. No problem. You're more than welcome, Mel. All right? Thank you. Jay thinks that there may be an Italian connection, which is very exciting because we have an Italian connection in the family. I'll need to go and do my homework to find out whether that matches time-wise. I think this one's going to be a real joy to work on because it's got a lot of family history added to it. So once I've got all of the fabric off, then I'll be able to identify where I can open up and then re-glue. Before he can re-upholster, Jay has to de-upholster. Here we go. And under the old fabric, he finds some 19th century inspiration. Wow. Then you've got the leaf, the vine, all of that detail. As you can see, just there is the original colour. So it would have been a very vibrant red. A lot of people think in the 19th century, people are fearful of colour. We're more fearful of colour now. Whereas these guys were very brave, and that can just show you there. Look how bright that is. That is beautiful. Definitely going to inspire me with regards to the fabric that I'm going to choose. That allows me to go ahead and be bright and be bold. With Jay kept busy with the chair, Kirsten can crack on undisturbed applying finishing touches to the artist's jug. I've put the last coat of gloss painted glaze over the restorations. I'm now just sort of doing a little bit of polishing up where the joins are. Well, that looks nice. It looks better than it did. Can I touch it? Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah, you're allowed to now. Thank yeah, you. absolutely. Because actually, one of the lovely things about that piece is actually the way it feels. So. It does feel nice. So can she hold it by the handle? Then? Yeah. She can. Yeah, yeah. Can I hold it by the handle? No. <laughs> I thought you was going to say that. <laughs> now, nearly safe enough even for Jay to handle, the finished jug is ready to be reunited with its owner, Emily. I'm feeling a little bit nervous about collecting the jug today because uh, will the cracks show? Will it be the same jug? Oh, yeah. Look at that. Oh, oh, hello. It's good. You caught us. Hi. <laughs> busy, yeah. Busy at beating Jay. How you doing? Yeah. Come on. I've got a visitor. Uh, hi. You all right? So you remember what it looked like when you brought it? Yes. It was in, the it was in it was, an envelope yeah, as well. It was in lots of different <laughs> containers, yeah. It was in pieces, yeah. But you worked your magic oh. on it, I believe. Well, Come, let's we'll show find it. out. Go, go show it. Jay, it's actually I'm allowed, over to, there. I'm yeah, allowed to grab it. Uh, well, should we pop it on there? there? Right there. OK. <gasps> oh, my God. That's incredible. Can I touch it? Of course you can. It's your <laughs> jug. Oh, yes. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I've had anxiety dreams about <laughs> oh. Do you know what? It, That's it's unbelievable. I'm glad glad you like it. Now, you should be emotional. <laughs> well, it's going to be very, very happy, and it's a safe new place now. So on my mantelpiece, yeah, away from the window, away from drilling, okay. and uh, yeah, out of leaping distance of a cat as well. So oh. I, I've thought of all eventualities. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I actually like. I mean, it's not invisible, but I like that as history, and it's it's yeah. uh, it's. It adds to the handmade feel of it all, you know? That's yeah, I mean, I think it would have been very easy to kind of just end up over-painting it, really, mm. and it just didn't feel right having no. met you and the history. It just kind of felt right to sort of mm. do what we call a sympathetic restoration, yeah. really. It's had a few knocks, like yeah. all of us. Yeah, just a few. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. I'm absolutely delighted. It's not taking anything away at all. It's brilliant. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well done, yeah. Well, happy Thank you. Thank you. Right. It's been such a lovely object to work on. She Thank says. you. <laughs> I said beforehand that I was worried about the cracks showing. And actually, I've changed my mind about that because it's got a lovely texture to it. It's kind of showing its little knock, and I, I like that. I like that it's not perfect. It was a handmade item, and you can see another set of hands that's lovingly cared for it and uh, put it back together again. As one treasured possession leaves the workshop safely back in one piece, Jay is in the process of pulling apart the 19th century lion chair. And there you go. Most of the time, people wouldn't make a big deal about the frame. They'll just make a new one. But because this has family history to it, it's a big deal. To help preserve that history, 
Jay's got a plan. Oh, a bit of woodwork. Yeah, a bit of woodwork. And he's calling in a favour from Steve. See that name there, or that signature just there? What I want to do is have a frame around there. How about a bit of brass, and then if I were to cut out the inside... Like a plate? Yeah, well, I've, I've probably got some brass I can use. See, now that's why I came to you. Yeah, and well, that polished up nicely. Like it's shiny, hard. like something you put in your clocks. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> Jay can now turn his attention to reupholstering the seat. <laughs> and inspired by the original 19th century fabric, true to his word, he's gone bold. Wow. I was going to make a suit out of it. <laughs> yeah. And you know what? You would make a suit out of it. I would, actually. <laughs> I love bumblebees. So with this frame, what I want to have is the bumblebee dead centre. That material got moths? Yeah, they look like moths, but they're bumblebees. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're bumblebees. Don't laugh. Oh, look at that. Come on. That is special. Do you reckon we ought to lacquer that? No. Leave it like that. Let it age with the piece. That'll look quite nice. Look proper, though, doesn't it? Uh, more than proper. Yeah. The Queen will be proud of that. Now the new seat is almost finished, the final stage is to rebuild the frame. And Will's been roped in to make sure it will be strong enough for owner Neville to sit on for the first time in 50 years. We'll put the top in first. Seat in second, and then we will uh, fit these in. Fit these in last year. Okay, cool. I'm in. Cool. Lovely. How do you think Neville is going to feel when he gets this back? Oh, cool, blimey. I think he's going to feel like a king. <laughs> he is going to feel like a king. It is a throne, and um, to me, it just looks quite regal now. Yeah. And we've kept a lot of the link towards his old his old family history. So yeah. Sure, that's really good. I think it looks it nice. It looks really good. Returning to the newly repaired jewellery box, Will's final job is to clean and polish the outside before Karen returns to pick it up. But Will's noticed a potential pitfall in his plan. My main concern with the top is um, the three swallows have been hand painted, so there's a fine balance of cleaning it and over cleaning it and losing all of that detail, which is what I don't want to do. At the moment, I'm just cleaning around the birds for now, start working my way into the middle, and then just sort of lightly brushing over the birds. And then if I feel that any of the paint is beginning to come off, then I'll stop and find another way of cleaning it. <laughs> Hi there. Hello. So, before you have a look, I just wanted to say, I started cleaning the box. Yeah. And uh, I cleaned the border around the top, and I wasn't too sure or not to clean the centre where the birds were, because I was worried about removing the birds and everything else. But I gave it a go. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm flabbergasted. So, yeah. yeah, it's absolutely <laughs> lovely. Yeah, it's fantastic. I'm really yeah, pleased with that. Yeah. You can actually see you them now. You can actually though. see them. I, I did yeah. wonder whether they might just disappear just if you disappear. tried to polish it. It's beautiful. But, but it gets better. It gets better. That goes down. I'll let you unlock. Oh, and it doesn't fall off. <laughs> and it doesn't fall off. Well, the top's secure, so that's good. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Interestingly enough, on the inside, there's some old newspaper. And I was trying to work out how old this was, where it came from. Yeah. And I thought it was Italian. Right. Olivewood, uh, 1920s. I actually found a little piece of paper and I was thinking, is this Italian? But right in the middle, it says Roma, so obviously. Oh, Italian. It is Italian. Yeah. OK. So I thought I'd keep that there just That's... for keeps. That is gorgeous. <laughs> it's beautiful. Yeah. I'm really pleased. Thank you so much. I can see a lot of work's gone into that. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> that is lovely.
it's far exceeded anything I could imagine. I'm going to put it on my dressing table, I'm going to put jewellery in it, and hopefully I'm going to be able to give it to one of my children. Back in the workshop, Jay is giving another repair shop team effort its final polish. That looks absolutely amazing. It does look nice, doesn't it? Steve, do you want to have a look at your handiwork, mate? Yeah, is it all finished? I just got to tidy it up, dust it off a bit. So there's your moth. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the moth chair. The moth That's chair. Nice. And Fantastic. It, and then we've got another oh, moth. Yeah. Oh, it... Wow. Underneath there. That's really good. Oh, well done, Steve. That works in really well, doesn't it? Yeah. That's a transformation. That's a Absolutely. real transformation, like yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, it can sit on it now anyway. That's the main He's thing, isn't it? He's going to be really pleased with it. Am I allowed to sit on the chair? No, no, no. no, no. no. Not on this Why? one. He's got to be the first one to sit on it. What? Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice touch. That's really? the way it goes. Yeah. It's his chair, isn't You're it? You're such a chair. liar. No, it's You're not You're saying that you haven't done this work and you haven't made I... sure that it's not going to fall to pieces. <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> <laughs> it, would, it would not be funny, Steve. That'd it wouldn't be, be funny. funny. <laughs> what well, you got to remember is me and you stuck this together, so it's going to be strong. Yeah? That's right. So I have every it faith... It's a trick question. <laughs> right. I have you every can't. faith in the glue, the craftsmanship, so when he sits on there, he's going to feel really cool. Well done. Yeah? Well done. done. Now, all, three, now, all three of us done all a good job. Yeah. yeah. Should we so have a, mine was a very small Should we part, have a so. joint pat on the back? Hold on, if you, I'll pat you and you pat me. <laughs> Yes. Well, who's patting me? <laughs> <laughs> you joker. Well done, well done. All right, cheers, lads. The lion chair is ready to be restored to pride of place in the home of its owner, Neville. How are we doing, Neville? Very well, thank you. You all right? Good morning, Jay. Good morning. Well, I won't keep you in suspense anymore, so here we go. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's amazing. What gave you the idea of the moth? The moth. It was moth-eaten before. Steve. It was very moth-eaten. Steve, Steve must have had a word with you, because Steve thinks it's a moth, but it's a bumblebee, actually. OK. Right. The reason why I used the bumblebee is because the two fabrics that came off had a heavy reference to flowers. Right. And it was a case of using something that pollinates both flowers. Mm -hmm. And it's still red. And it's still red. It has Fantastic. to be red. It has to be red. And then, if you remember rightly, we had underneath it your family name. Oh, yes. So we've made a bit of a feature of it. Right. Steve's made us a lovely frame just right. to show it off. Wonderful. Because you didn't know it was there originally, did I you? didn't know it was there. So now no. you can't miss it, really. Right? There you are, sir. I'll sit on it. Yeah. Oh, that's lovely. Yeah. My goodness, that brings back memories. Last time I sat on this, I was breaking the rules of the house. Breaking the rules? I was a small boy, I wasn't supposed to touch anything, so... Fantastic. Very That's happy. Good. I'm happy that you're happy now. Let's stick it back up there, then, so we can have a little bit of a chin wag. Have you found anything, Cap? My great-great-great-uncle, Francis Reed, right. went to Italy as a young man right. and spent the rest of his life there. When he died, his wife came home, brought presumably everything that they owned with her. Yeah. And we can assume, perhaps, we can't prove it, that this came home with him from Italy. Wow. And that would have been late 19th century. And his surname was Reed? Reed, well? yes. So that's where we've and got the Reed he, on the... His name. middle name was Neville, so he was Francis Neville Reed. No, that's amazing. Absolutely priceless. I will you know, hand it on to my children and I hope it'll on to their children. It's a beautiful chair, and the history behind it is amazing. So um, it's been a pleasure to work on it, so thank you for bringing it to the repair shop. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I'm absolutely delighted with the chair. It's been part of my life, all my life, and uh, it looks fantastic, it feels fantastic, and uh, I think they've done a fantastic job. I couldn't stop laughing. Why? <laughs> because of... Um... <laughs> Come on. Neville, when he came right, in, yeah. Yeah. and he said, it's a moth. <laughs> you planted the seed, I bet you. I bet you did. <laughs> that made your day, I know it did. Yeah, but he loved it, didn't he? No, he did love it. It's a bumblebee, I can see that now. It's a bit quirky, but actually I like it. It suits the chair. It'll make it a real conversation piece. First to arrive at a rather rain-soaked repair shop today is Emma, 
who's travelled from Wimborne in Dorset. Hello, Emma. Hello. How are you doing? I'm you good, right? thank you. How are you? Very good. Is it in the front there? It you? is indeed. OK, you have that. OK, cool. Let's go inside. This way. She's brought something that's crying out for the help and skills of furniture restorers Will and Jay. Wow. What is it, Emma? It's a jewellery chest, which was my grandmother's. When Emma was 10 years old, she inherited this cherished family heirloom from her grandma, a Japanese lacquered jewellery chest. Since I inherited the chest, it's always held a real significance for me. It's always lived on my dressing table, held my grandmother's jewellery, my jewellery. I think she had it, you know, for most of her life. So, it's yeah, it's a real special item. Emma treasured the jewellery box for the next 26 years, but in 2012, her home was burgled. As soon as I entered the bedroom, my heart sank. Not only had the jewellery gone, but they'd taken the drawers completely from within the chest. They'd ripped out the heart of the chest, and it's like they'd sort of ripped out my heart as well. My father-in-law kindly remade the drawers, but they have no handles. You either have to try and prise them from the side, or you have to kind of lean the cabinet forward in order to get them out. It's not easy. I'm sure that there's something we can do, definitely, with the lacquer work, because I think the front of the drawers would need to be re-lacquered yeah. um, to sort of be in keeping with the top drawer and everything else. Yeah. So the, the, would there have been any detail on, on these? Yep, they were the same colour as the, the top drawer okay. um, and had wow. um, vine work on them. And you can see that it used to run sort of through and sort of connect all the drawers yes. up. Right. Right. One thing I will ask, the handles. Um, it would be hard for me to find exactly the same handles. Yeah. Um, would you be happy for me to replace them uh, with something similar? Yeah, yeah, I think as long as it's all in keeping, then, then I'd be happy with that, yeah. What would it mean to you to have it repaired? <sighs> when we got burgled, I felt, even though we were as secure as we could be, I kind of felt like I'd let my grandparents down in losing all their jewellery and everything. And this would kind of be, you know, we never recovered their jewellery. Right. But this would be the, like, the last piece of the puzzle, really, to, to get this restored. So I'd feel really proud that I'd been able to do that for them, even though they're no longer here. Yeah. So if you leave that with us, what we'll do is, once it's repaired, we'll get back to you and let you know. Lovely. OK? Brilliant. All right. Thank no you. Problem. Thank you for bringing it in. Thanks so Thanks. much. Cheers. Cheers. It's nice, isn't it? It is nice. Yeah. I felt really nervous about leaving uh, the jewellery chest there, but really excited, really looking forward to having it repaired and seeing it restored to its former glory. I think it'd be really tricky getting the design right so it doesn't look too overpowering, yeah. something quite simple. Let's so, get on with it, then. Lovely. <laughs> Will's challenge is to transform the bare wooden replacement drawers by recreating the look of ancient Japanese lacquer, using his modern materials. The plan is to match the, the new drawers to the top drawer. So as soon as I found the right and made up the right colour lacquer for the drawers, um, I'll then lacquer the rest of the drawers to sort of tie with the original. And um, once that's thoroughly dry, then I'll, uh, then I'll get on to the design for the front, which I'm slightly nervous about. Next through the repair shop doors are Patricia and Iva Sansom, who've travelled here from Hertfordshire. Hello. How are we doing? On here it says painting, so obviously... Lucia, if you don't mind joining me over here, please. Their prized possession will need the expert attention of art conservator Lucia Scalisi. Hello. Nice to see you. Hello. So, what is it? Well, it's a very special painting. Um, it's of a house that oh. um, I was brought up in when I was a little girl. Right. During the war years, I was evacuated there with my grandmother, who was cook housekeeper at the house. Oh. And then I lived there until I went into nursing, and now I met Ivor, and no. uh, 
we had our courting years there. Wow. And we, we were married from there. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. nice. How did you manage to have it then? How did it come into your possession? It belonged to my grandmother originally. It was painted by Mrs. MacDougall, um, who it's she signed. worked. Yes, signed here. she worked for Mrs. MacDougall until she died. Why? Wow. And on her death, it was given to my mother, who was also brought up in the house. And then when my mother passed away, um, it was given to uh, Ivor and I because we, it was sentimental to us. Yes. Where was your courting done? Well, we can't show it in the picture itself because it would be more farther out. So there was more garden hair as You're well garden, then? Yes, and shrubbery. And shrubbery. <laughs> so around Conveniently. <laughs> 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 so you had well, your... Maybe we should move on. <laughs> Do you know when she painted this? I don't. I know that my grandmother had it from the 1920s. But, yeah, it looks um, beginning of the century, 20th century, right. yeah. That's right. Sometimes we get paintings like this, we don't know the background. No. So for, to have you here telling us this story, it's like living history, it's, it's fantastic. It's funny, a bit funny because it's brought up so much of our... Well, life, really, that's <laughs> yeah. been tucked away there and forgotten about, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, now you're bringing it all back. <laughs> so I could see there's a little bit of paint flaking off there. How was the damage caused? When it belonged to my mother, she had a pub near Bristol, and unfortunately they had a fire, and I understand it was fire damage and smoke damage from that. It's not been hung since. It was just really? no. it's been in store. And we'll be taking it out of his frame, which needs a little bit of repair, which Jay will take care of, yeah, I think. Yeah, we, we could do that. Yeah. yeah. No, no. It's part of the original history of the object, yes, so it's like worth... It no, absolutely, yes. keep it, keep it, keep it. All right, so then surface cleaning and revarnishing, filling these losses, but then retouching them. Really lovely if you could do it. Yeah, it's your history. <laughs> it's, your, oh. it's the history of love. <laughs> 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 oh, thank, no, thank you, thank you for bringing it along. Um, so once we've repaired it and got it back to its former glory, it might bring back some more memories of courting okay. days. <laughs> okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> All right. First things first, what a lovely couple. Unbelievable. What a story. Yeah. Four generations going on to five generations who've owned this painting. Yeah. Fantastic. The Kneeled House in Tring dates back to 1913. And although Patricia and Ivor haven't been back there for over 50 years, it will always hold very special memories. I'd forgotten we were young once upon a time. Yeah, to talk about the picture and the memories just come flooding back, really. It's just unbelievable, really. They were lovely memories. So what did happen in the garden? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Lucia has over 25 years' experience conserving paintings, and on initial inspection, it looks like she has a big challenge on her hands. While the flaking is a lot more extensive than I thought, the worst area is here, where large lumps of paint have gone. All these little tiny areas, the paint is curling up at the edges. You can see there's little teeny tiny white dots, that's where the paint has gone but there's also lots of little cracks that are the paint beginning to lift. And if you don't do something about it, it will get worse and so you're, you're losing original material. So the first thing I'm going to do is get this consolidated because I want to be able to handle the painting and turn it over. So I need to consolidate this and make sure that the paint isn't going to fall off. In order to preserve the original paintwork, and prevent any further flaking, Lucia applies an adhesive and uses a heated spatula to fuse it to the paint. OK, that's the last piece. Um, I'm going to turn the painting over now so we can get an idea of what's going on at the back. Jay? Yes, you I can give me a hand to get them out of the back of the frame. Um, if I lift it out and then... I'll lift it out and up, and if you could take the frame, it's all yours. Thank you. Good. And this is my lovely painting out of its frame. Wow, what have you done? It looks like you've been shaving. What's all those, like, oh, tissues yeah. on there? Oh, yeah, little cuts, yeah. yeah. Why have you got these 
tissue paper. Oh, this is tissue paper, isn't it? It's acid-free tissue. I've used it just to get the paint flakes down. But as you can see, I've got to now take all this off and then I can clean the front of the painting. But it means that all the paint is now fixed, it's secure. It's not going to peel anymore? No. Right. From treasured toys in need of emergency surgery to ceramics that have seen better days, the experts that man the repair shop are determined to put the pieces back together. Over in Carpentry Corner, work is well underway on Emma's jewellery chest. Will has given the only original drawer a deep clean so that he can establish the exact colour he needs to recreate. So I'm trying to make the lacquer with some natural shellac polish uh, mixed with uh, some pigments. So I've got other crimson red pigment, brown number, black. And it's, I think it's a case of trial and error, really. Not too bad, it's still quite red. So what I'll do is move it over here. And a bit of black. It's not too, too far off from uh, the colour I'm trying to get to. I'm pretty happy so far. So far, so good. But it's not just the drawer colour that has to match. The intricate gold detailing is slightly three-dimensional which is proving tricky. I've got some gold paint that I'm trying out at, at the moment, but it's just not, it just doesn't look, doesn't have the same feel. Ceramics connoisseur Kirsten might have just the thing. A couple of the flowers, and um, especially the uh, thicker branch there. Yeah. Um, it's slightly raised. Is there a way to So you just want it like it slightly, slightly thick. thicker, yeah. yeah. Actually, you could you could pop a bit of um, French chalk in there. French chalk? Yeah. This might seem a bit of a silly question. Try me. <laughs> French chalk? Yeah. Is that just chalk, but from France? <laughs> um, sorry to laugh. No, it's talc, actually. Is it? Yeah, French chalk is, is talc, yeah. So, do you want to take those? Um, yeah, that'd be great. With the gold paint perfected, it's now just a case of working out the design. How you doing, Will? I'm just mapping out the detail for the front of the jewellery chest. Cool. What I was thinking is, um, basically, in the drawers, cos it's going to be a jewellery box, yeah. why don't I put something a bit nice? Cos what she's got is just a wooden... Yeah, with yeah. an inlay, where you can put something a little bit velvet, so she can put her rings and things underneath there, or on top of it, I should say. Is that cool with you? That sounds really nice. Can actually. I do that? Yeah, yeah? lovely. I could do that, yeah? yeah? Measure this. I'll bring it back to you in two seconds. Lovely. While Jay gets to work on the luxurious inserts, it's time for Will to take the plunge. I think it's about time I start painting. Oh, gosh, nervous. Small strokes, I think. <laughs> into the repair shop, Delia Scott from Essex. I've had my item for 40 years, and before that, my grandmother had it from 1914 when it was painting for her. I can remember it as a child in her house. Uh, it passed to my mother when my grandmother died, and she passed it to me. This one's a clear-cut case for Kirsten. Hello. Hello. <laughs> what have you brought for me? It oh, was one of a pair that my grandmother had. Right. And I think it got dropped. Oh, right. By the way, there's this crack running from top to bottom. Yes, I see, yeah. And then there's a further crack which yeah. runs through there. Yeah. And that's got to have been 45 years oh, ago. Oh, golly. So it's been broken all that time? Yes, it has. Oh. I'm just going to 
cut through there, actually. Yeah, no, it oh, is. Dear, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have had all sorts of things. I have literally had chewing gum and oh. all sorts, but oh. I haven't had plaster. I think if I can clean it really well and get it stuck back. It looks like it's quite a clean crack, doesn't it? Very, yes. So are you happy to leave it with us, Delia? Yes, yes, yes OK. I Thank I'll you get to work. <laughs> The news that it can be mended is just amazing. I can't tell you how chuffed I am. Having examined it after it came in, it's actually glass. And really, I think all I need to do is actually get the edges nice and clean, give the surface a clean, and then just get it back together again. I'm just going to leave it now to cure overnight. A new day in the repair shop, and Kirsten's making ready for the return of her customer, the owner of the broken glass plaque. After expertly gluing the pieces together, it's time to see if her handiwork has held. So I'm just taking this tape off now. It's been holding the joins in place. It would have been really nice if those, those joins had have completely disappeared, which sometimes they do. I think the owner will just be happy to have, have it all back in one piece and up on her wall. The last stage is just to fill this area here where there's little flakes um, of paint missing along the break edge. Um, so I'm just going to pop some filler in there and retouch it and, and that's it. Hi, Delia. Hello. Hi. How are you? How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Right, well, I won't keep you in suspense. Oh, thank you. So here it is. Oh, wow. It's gone back beautifully, hasn't it? It's just wonderful to see it whole again. So what are your plans for it, then? It's going to go straight on the wall when I get home. It'll be magical to see it back there. It really, really will. Fantastic. It means everything to me because it's a tangible link with my grandma and my mother. And every time I, I'm going to look at it, I'm going to smile. Back inside, Lucia is slowly uncovering the original artistry of Patricia and Ivor's fire-damaged picture. And she's roped in Jay to fix the frame. I usually have to do this myself on the frame, so it's really nice that you're here today, Jay. OK. I must say, this is the first frame I've ever worked on. Don't let me hear you say that. <laughs> it's my 16th frame I've worked on. Mm. One corner done, just three more to go. <laughs> so you're going to take it apart and put it back together again? Yeah, take it apart and then Great. do it properly. Yeah. So what are you, what are you doing? Looks like you've been cleaning out Will's ears. I know, look yeah. at it. Amazing. But what I'm pleased about is that the, um, the flaking consolidation has worked, so this, the paint is all secure now, which is great. I mean, the colours, look at those colours now, how bright they are. They are bright. With the painting consolidated and cleaned up, Lucia can begin to fill in all the gaps. This is the OptiVisor I use for close work, and I'll be using it to do the filling. The purpose of the filling is to actually bring up the surface to the edge of the paint layer, the original paint layer, and then I'll retouch to that. Over the whole surface, there are easily a 1,000 losses. Some of them are tiny, but they're relatively deep, and if you don't fill them, you get too much of a dip on the surface and it catches the light, so it disrupts your viewing of the image. On this painting, I'm actually retouching the losses that I filled. So these are all the little white specks, and there's lots of them. Uh, I'm not actually going over any of the original painted surface at all. The idea is that the artist's original intent is all there for you to see. So hopefully, at the end of this process, you won't actually be able to see any of my work at all. You just see the artist's painting. 
As a conservator, you actually mix your own paint up using these dry pigments and then mixing them with a synthetic resin so you have a paint, which is what happens here. And I do the colour mixing on here. One of the privileges of my job, for which I am eternally grateful, is that nobody gets closer to the work of art after the artist has done it than a conservator. So I actually sort of see the whole thing, warts and all. But usually, the beauty of it, it's a really privileged job. I love it. In the fight against disposable culture, the repair shop experts are using all their skills and expertise to breathe new life into the nation's neglected possessions. Over in Will's woodwork corner, he's recreated the dark, glossy finish and meticulous hand painting of an authentic Japanese design. Um, I'm just giving it a little buff up now. Slightly nervous. I hope that should be really pleased with this. All done, Will. Amazing. Oh, talk about amazing. That's amazing. Yeah? Yeah, let's see. Oh, yeah, you've done well, mate. You've done well. She's going to be happy. She's going to be even happier when she sees what you've done for the insides. Well, the inlays, yeah. OK, let's get them in. Yeah, when she come in there, yeah? She'll be here any minute. Emma's back and ready to be reunited with her family heirloom. It's been five years since it was damaged, um, and it's looked really sad in that time. So to have it back, to have it home, to have it complete will be uh, really, really special. Hello. Hello. How are we doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. You all right? Hi. <laughs> Hi you come for your jewellery chest, I is have, right? indeed, yes. OK. You ready? It's lovely, really lovely. Yeah. It's amazing, really, good. really amazing. Good, good. And you've got handles. And I've got handles. So you can actually use it. I can use it again. You can use it. Oh, that's lovely. Jay's done a really good job by lining all of the drawers. That's lovely. So now you have something soft to put all your... That's lovely. ...jewellery on. Really beautiful. So I know this is your grandma's chest that she gave to you. Yeah. Would she be proud? She would be really pleased, really, yeah. really pleased. It's a long time since I've seen it looking complete. Complete? Yeah. I feel like it kind of closes the story on the burglary, and I think my grandma would be really, really proud and really pleased to see it looking so beautiful again. Yeah. I think she would. I think yeah. she would as well. So, let's get this wrapped up. I'm really pleased with the jewellery box. Um, it looks absolutely amazing. Um, it looks just as it should do. And good luck for the future. Thank you. It's had a lot of love and care put into it and um, I'm really, really pleased and really looking forward to putting my jewellery back into it. Over at the art station, Lucia has been working her magic on that prized painting, which has been hidden away in storage for 40 years. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh, well done. Wow. But, yeah, you guys it's... got to see... Now, have a look at this. Now wow. it's a painting. That is a transformation, isn't it? <laughs> it's stable, it's been conserved, so it will go through to future generations. When I'm actually working on it, I try and find out a bit more about the painting yeah. and who painted mm -hmm. it. And Violet McDougall, she did sell her paintings and they have been up for auction fairly recently. This is worth some money, then, now? Well, it's in worth the hundreds. hundreds. I mean, it's a couple of hundred. Sort of yeah, yeah. I so love that the way you have an object and that shit kind of leads you sort mm. of on a into these into these stories. That's one of the beauties of the job, really. Yeah. Wow, so, that's amazing. Do you think they'll like it? I'm I think sure. they'll love it. Patricia and Ivor have returned to Ickneald House for the first time since 1963 to collect a treasured painting and to relive some memories. It's just wonderful, isn't it, just to be back. 
We haven't been back since my grandmother died so long ago, but it's just as it used to be, really. <laughs> Make me feel old now. <laughs> We are old, aren't we? They haven't been able to display their painting since it was damaged in a fire. But today, they'll be seeing it beautifully restored and back to its former glory. This is exciting. Oh, gosh, that's Our painting. Lovely. Oh, that's lovely. Beautiful. It's come back to what it used to yeah, be. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Just how I remember it. I can't believe it. All those memories. It's lovely. Oh, come on. <laughs> well, it is just... <laughs> just as it used to be, isn't it? Such a long time ago. <laughs> it's just perfect, isn't it? It's brought back so many memories. Memories of childhood, and, of course, spending time with Ivor round the bushes. <laughs> Those bushes have gone, same as other things have gone in life. <laughs> First, the repair shop is taking delivery of something big. There we go, this wants to be our guy. I don't even know what he's bringing us, actually. I think it's heavy, though. I don't think it's going to be heavy. Richard Haddison is a parish councillor in the village of Coates in Sirencester, where a century-old treasured timepiece is in danger of being consigned to history. Steve, we've got another one here for you. It's a pocket watch. <laughs> oh, wow, it's a, that's nice. Wow. This exciting restoration is a massive job which will test the talents of the whole team. Clock specialist Steve has also called in Dominic Chenier for his metalworking skills. So, Richard, could you tell us anything about the history of the clock? So, the clock was purchased by the villagers in 1911 to celebrate the coronation of George V. Oh, All right, OK. It sits on what is now a residential property, but was, at the time, the National School. OK. Up until the late 80s, it was mechanical. And then they converted it to um, a quartz battery movement. What, what do you reckon then, Dom? The water's definitely got into it. Yeah. This is probably the worst area from looking at it. Oh, really? Yeah. Put your hand in there, can't you? Really yeah. Careful, you might cut yourself. Yeah, there's, someone's been in it before. Look, there's bits of filler and expanding foam or something. It'd be nice to have a look inside then. Oh, there you go. So it's just stuck on with tape. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't> tape. <laughs> It's 100 years old, you know, we've, we've been innovative throughout the years. So, so there's a wooden frame inside. The wood doesn't actually look that no. bad. So it must be some, some good quality old oak, I would imagine. Is the other side similar to this, or is other it...? Other than the broken glass. Oh, it's got broken oh, glass on the other side. The other side is exactly the same. Oh, oh my word. Oops. Wood. Oh, it's the, the wood bottom really again. Has yeah. rot rotted away just there. Dom, what are your initial thoughts? It's yeah, it's definitely a job. The great thing is, we've got all of the original hardware, all of the, all of the original doors. Although they're held on with gaffer tape, they're, yeah, they're right. still there, yeah. so we can we can save them and, and put them back in yeah. as they were. Yeah, which is great. Okay. Get some new glass. I think that would be very much appreciated by the villagers. Okay. I think it's Thanks. it sounds brilliant. So thank you. You're welcome. Well, thanks a lot for bringing it along. Thank you. Quite. Once it's fully nice. restored, we'll get it back to you. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. Well done. Yeah. You've got your work cut out. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> I think the villagers at the moment are hopefully putting a lot of trust in the chairman of the parish council. I think when the clock returns, we'll reinstall the clock and then hopefully plenty of tea, homemade cakes and a bit of a, a party to celebrate the return of, of a very... I suppose, an important icon within the, within the village. Every aspect of this clock needs care and attention. And because it has two faces, it's double the amount of work. We'll get all of the, all the clock mechanisms off, get the wood out, be left with the steel frame. There's so many nice original details, like it'd be so nice to, to save what we can, cut out the rotten bits and 
and replace the damaged areas. Oh, so we'll we'll come yeah. and pick it up in about half an hour. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever repaired a clock before? I've not repaired a clock, no. I wouldn't know where to start with the actual <laughs> clock mechanisms. So it's just this little unit here. It's better if I put a battery unit where the we... village folk can get to it. Easily serviced, yeah. yeah. I just want to get this main steel drum, it's stripped bare, get it, take it away to get it sandblasted, right, which okay. will just, which will remove any paint and filler and the old previous repairs and it will take everything away. Whatever's left will be solid metal. Sandblasting is a specialist job. So while Dom sends the drum off to a local company, Steve can begin tackling the rust on the clock faces. Now what I'm doing is I'm cleaning it up with some polymer polish and a bit of um, very, very fine wire wool. The difficulty is avoiding all the, the black paintwork so I don't rub that off. It's taking time. I can only do a small uh, area at a time uh, because I've got to really, really take care that I've, I'm protecting every little bit of it. But um, on the whole, I'm really pleased at how it's coming on. The boys may have their hands full with the Titanic timepiece, but there's a new arrival at the repair shop. So, what have we got here, then? Well, yeah. This intriguing contraption has been brought in by local museum trustee Jane Barnes. It's very heavily built, isn't it? Yeah, it's solid. Hello. Hello. Hi. Right, what have we got here, then? We believe it to be a hay press ah, for making yeah, hay yeah. bales. Yeah. Before the 19th century, cutting and storing hay by hand was back-breaking work. But Britain flourished during the Industrial Revolution, with inventions and advancements taking farming up a gear. This hay baler would have been key in making the farmer's life that bit sweeter. And you put the hay in there? Yes. It gets pressed down, and then you open the door to take the the bale out. Ah, it must have taken ages to do that, to produce a hay bale. Must, mustn't it? They reckoned that a two-man team could do 72 bales in a day. In a day? 72. Oh, my word. Yeah. So, what's wrong with it? It doesn't work. This, I think. We'd like to be able to show <laughs> oh, our right. visitors what happened, because they're quite intrigued by it. I think this, the, the, the problem's the mechanism up in here. Ah. It's just rusted. I mean, it's probably sat for... I don't know, 50 years. 50 years, or yeah. <laughs> right, well, leave it with us. We'll get it's it working, be... though, for sure. Yeah? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, thank you very much. Thank Great. you very much. Thanks nice for coming in. Well, yeah. I've got work cut out here. Absolutely. We're looking forward very much to its return, and we'll be able to see how it worked and what people had to do in order to feed their horses. <laughs> Confident this should be a relatively quick fix, Steve and Dom get cracking straight away. First thing we need to do, I think, is just see if we can loosen off these nuts. Just yeah, try, and, try and free up. them up, because yeah, yeah. it's so rusty. <clears throat> Your fingers. Go on, go on, go for it. Oh! Okay. We've got the actual press moving, and that just needs de-rusting and oiling. Then it's going to move quite freely. Mm. It's always the last bit that's always difficult, isn't always it? Always the last always bit. Always the last one. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. it. It's going. An hour later, and the hay press is in pieces. How are we going to clean this up? Do you think a, a fine file or emery or something? Yeah, white wall, something like that, will clean it up yeah. fine. Yeah. You Give remember how it goes back together? No idea. <laughs> <laughs> that's what you're here for. With the parts now cleaned, it's time to rebuild. Uh -huh. Wait, turn it over. Have I? What? Turn it over. No. Turn it over. It's inside out. Yeah. Sorry. That's a bit more like it. They can't afford to get it wrong, 
as museum trustee Jane is due back. Hello, Jane. Hello. How are we doing? Come on in. Fine, thank you. <laughs> you all right? You? I'm very good, Had actually. Have a busy day? <laughs> Always. It's always busy here. Yeah. Steve, you do us a favour, mate. Do you want to bring it over? I will. If you come this way, then. This vintage agricultural machine was rusted to a standstill, but thanks to Steve and Dom, it's now a fully functioning example. Not only have we got it moving, but we've got it making hay bales. Real hay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh. There we go. Ah, now you can imagine it being used. Yep. I think the children will be really interested, and adults as well, actually, because everybody has a look at it. Because yeah. they've never seen anything like it before. <laughs> Excellent. So I'm not going to ask you to put this on your roof rack, because <laughs> it's a little bit too heavy, <laughs> but we'll get this shipped down to the museum for you, as long as you're happy with it. We're, I'm very happy with it. I think you've done a wonderful job. Thank you very much indeed, both Bless of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye Thanks, Bye-bye. 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 With one more satisfied customer sent on her way, Dorm and Steve can get back to the village clock. Meanwhile, another visitor, Graham Kelly from Rygate, has arrived with a fragile piece requiring a more delicate touch. Ah, hello, good morning. How are we doing? Fine, thank you. So what have we got here, then? And when it comes to handling delicate goods, Guillaume Pons is the man with the golden touch. We've That's got nice. here two raw Worcester vases right. from the early 1900s, both damaged when we inherited them in 1996, yeah. wondering what you can do to make them better. All right, we'll best get them out and have mm. a look, then. How did you get these, or how did they come into your hands? Right, they belonged to my wife, right. and she inherited them from her granny Doris, who died in 1996. I, I brought them today in memory of Granny Doris because uh, she absolutely adored her granddaughter, who's my wife, Shirley, right. and they've got some great memories attached to them. Yeah. So what we've got here, this one has lost a, just a, a nasty chip out of there, and this one is slightly more serious, that it's got um, quite severe cracking on the base, as if yeah. it's been dropped and smashed. Yeah. So... I'm hoping you guys can perform some magic and get them back to how they were. Actually, what happened is uh, it was broken in two, and, uh, in two pieces. Yes. And, uh, and then someone put far too much glue in it. Yes. And, then, and the wrong glue as well. Mm. So, so the idea is just to take it apart, yes. uh, clean it very well, glue it back properly with the right adhesive, yes. and do a bit of fill where it's necessary, and then it will look very good. Lovely. And the same for, for this one, it can be restored as well. Will the colour be the same? Yeah, of course. It's just that I'm, I'm, under, I'm going to be under severe pressure from my wife oh, when, I... when I show her these, because <laughs> uh, she doesn't know about this. So uh... She doesn't know about what? What do you mean? She uh, doesn't know you've got these? No. Sometime she's going to notice they're missing from the china cabinet. Uh, but that'll be a pleasant surprise. It will be a pleasant surprise for her, but um, yeah, my, my life is in your hands. If this goes wrong, <laughs> well, uh, my life won't be worth living. <laughs> so what would this mean to your wife? To to get these fully restored? Oh, um, she'd be delighted, because, yeah, she'd been told these are not restorable. Well, what I'll say is Lovely. leave them both with us, and then um, as soon as they're fully restored and repaired, we'll get back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. The look on her face, I can't wait to see it when I do actually reveal these vases to her, fully restored, and the link with her grandma Doris will be complete then. So, no pressure whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> Wife doesn't know that these are, these are missing. Um, God blimey. But that is quite crude, isn't it? Yeah, well, it's, it's quite often that uh, you see this kind of restoration, uh, you know, it's been done by someone in the family or, or a cleaner who broke it and yeah. was so scared that she put it back very quickly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> these vases date back to the early 1900s and were painted by Harry Stinton. A royal Worcester artist for nearly 70 years, his work is highly coveted amongst porcelain collectors. <laughs> Guillaume's first task is to steam clean the vase. It does, it does soften a bit the, the glue. You can see that it is moving a bit already.
That looks a bit severe, man. <laughs> is that all right? Yeah, it is all right. It's not that hot. I mean, it's hot. It's hot. It's okay for the vase. It's okay for my fingers as well. I like that. I do like that. It's like dry cleaning for ceramics. <laughs> yes. That's what it is. <laughs> Outside the repair shop in the forge, the village clock's metal drum is back from its sandblasting session. Hello, Jay. How's it going? <laughs> Good. How are you doing? We're just patching in all the uh, repairing all the rusty bits. Now this has all been blasted. But hold on a minute. Isn't the cut? This is not the same one, or is it the same? No, one? it is. Yes, it is. Because of the blasting, it's, it's stripped off all of the old paint oh. and the, the rust and everything else. So this is just the bare steel. Oh, cool. so that bit's come out there. Yeah. It's got all the corrosion and the rust, yeah. and then we'll I've remade the panel that we could just put back in. All right, watch your eyes then. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I've got my Blues Brother glasses, so I can put these on. All right, you're perfect. Can... Go for it. <laughs> so... Inside the repair shop. Steve's begun work on the bezels that hold the glass faces in place. The one great thing is it's actually brass. I'm going to polish the brass up, lacquer it, and um, set against the black of the, uh, the rest of the case of the, the clock. It's going to look absolutely spectacular, the way it was probably when it was new. So this has come up really, really well. We went through about 10 layers of paint and, and lacquer before getting through to this surface, and that'll lacquer up really well now. Meanwhile, woodwork whiz kid Will is dealing with the clock's internal structure, which is the worst for wear, thanks to some serious water damage. What I might do is saw off all of this rotten wood here, maybe up to this line, cut a new piece of oak, stick it on, and then carve it back in. You could easily just sort of make everything brand new, but I think that sort of kind of takes away the history of the piece and the story behind it. We speak a lot in here about throwaway society, people buying cheaper, easily made furniture, throwing it in the bin when it breaks, whereas so there's something quite nice about keeping onto the old furniture and uh, adding bits to it to sort of keep it pushing forwards in time. It's a huge team effort to ensure this clock lasts another 100 years. It's definitely going to be future-proof. Absolutely. That's definitely going to hold it, is it? I think so, cos it's holding it now, isn't it? Cos it'd be a disaster if it does. Well, Will can fix it again, can't he? <laughs> <laughs> Steve's working his magic on the clock mechanism, which hasn't ticked or talked for over a year. And he's come up with an ingenious solution to enable the villagers to change the batteries. This is made out of an old broom handle. Uh, it's for plugging into uh, where the battery was, where a battery should go. And then this battery compartment will be down the bottom of the clock so that anyone can change the battery without trying to reach up uh, into, and uh, putting a battery in there, which will make it a lot easier for them. With the wooden frame complete, now comes the challenge of positioning it correctly within the drum. Point your fingers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lovely paintwork, Jay. Lovely <laughs> paintwork. Go, <laughs> Go on, mess it up. Go on. Go on. Go on. That, that, whoa, 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 whoa. about that much before we need to... <laughs> 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 OK, hold it. We're nearly there. Need to measure, really. Quite relieved, now, actually. That's the, the final time that's going to have to go in. We don't have to take it out again, so... Yeah. It's rather more quiet over on Guillaume's workbench, as he deftly works on the delicate Royal Worcester vases. When I remove the glue, it's just like, you see that uh, the break edge is, is actually very clean. For me, it's a very good sign, because it means that I just, with the steam cleaner, I finish to clean it a bit all around, and then, and then I, I put it back, and then you would see the, the crack will disappear. With all traces of glue and grime removed, a transparent adhesive is applied 
to stick the pieces back together. That is really nice. I do like that. I, I can't get over how good that looks. Yeah, it was just like it was. It, that's why the cleaning was so important. That's why you really have to get used to the, the old glue. I bet they didn't even know that was the original coat. No, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> he hasn't <laughs> been the original coat for like decades. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so this, that one to me looks nearly done. For this one, I'm going to. Uh, I need to take a mold of the of the rim yes. to to uh, uh, build up the rim with some resin. So, oh, okay, I'm with yeah. you. Guillaume uses a silicon mold to get an impression of the rim, so he can recreate the damaged side. So now I can I can feel like it's 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 hard, so it's has set, so I can remove it. Using a resin paste that matches the color of the porcelain, he fills in the chip, and then leaves it to dry. I'm very pleased actually because the filler went everywhere, so I don't have to to add more. I think just uh, sanding what there is will be enough. After sanding down the excess, it's time to make a start on the tricky task of matching up the paintwork. The acrylic uh, tend to uh, darken a bit uh, when it dries, so it's always better to start a bit, bit with a lighter color and then see how it, it dries after. You can't do it in only one layer. You have to build up a bit uh, retouching with several layers. So how are we getting on? Is it yeah. painting time? Yeah, no, it's, 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 it's going very well, yeah. I need to do a bit of gilding on the rim, yeah. and I'm going to try with uh, gold powder. So what's powder? What, is it different? Is it just, oh, it's this stuff? Yeah, it's kind of like um, um, a metal uh, powder. Well, this is delicate, isn't it? <laughs> like, I just lifted it, and it just starts. Yeah, it's just... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my lovely yellow is full of... I know. <laughs> See, that's what you should get me on your chest. That's why Kirsten doesn't allow me to touch anything. Sorry about that. Can't go wrong with a bit of gold everywhere. <laughs> yeah. While Guillaume continues his painstaking paintwork on the antique vases... Are we ready? Yes. Moment of truth. It's the final countdown for the clock. Wow. Oh, my God, it looks brilliant in readiness for its return to the village of Coates in the Cotswolds. Don't go dropping it. <laughs> I think the village are going to be really, really happy with this. God blimey. Look what you've created, a masterpiece. Thank you. Well, well done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. With the restoration complete, the clock has returned to the picturesque village of Coates. It's home for over a hundred years, where chairman of the parish council, Richard, is about to unveil it to the village. I'm really excited about seeing what's under here. That is amazing. Wow, the face of the, of the clock is incredible. They have done an amazing job. <laughs> yeah, last time this was on, stuck on with something like gaffer tape. When the clock arrived at the repair shop, it was in a sorry state. Now, it looks positively stately. You know, I cannot wait to see this up and to see those hands ticking. I'm really, really pleased. And the villagers will be really, really pleased with it. That's a clock to be proud of. As Richard returns the clock to its rightful place, the grand unveiling can commence. Thank you for uh, joining me um, to uh, welcome back the restored clock. You could join me in a yeah. countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. I'm the fifth generation of my family to live in the village. I have very fond memories of, of looking at it. I'm thrilled that they've taken the trouble and to get it restored um, to its, its former glory. We all knew it was part of the, the, the village history and it was, it was a focal point in a way with it being on the old national school. And it's just beautiful to see it back. It has been a revelation. To, uh, you know, to have that splendid restoration on the front of our house is uh, you know, quite a privilege. I think today has been a resounding success, and I think, I think the, the repair shop has done more than just repair the clock. I think it's, it's given us a bit of, bit of community spirit, which I think is awesome.
Back at the repair shop, Guillaume is finishing the restoration of the Royal Worcester vases. How are we doing with time? Because Graham needs to get these back before his wife notices. It's done. It's is done. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? I you mean, finished? Yeah. Oh, cool. Let's have a look then. Have a look. You're good. <laughs> You're too good. Lady and gentlemen, if you don't mind, come and have a butcher's at this. Ladies. And Will. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. <laughs> Oh, no, it's there, sir. So look at that. Ah. They look like the sort of perfect come off a shelf somewhere. Right, do. That's a cracking job. Oh. Ah, no pun intended. Yeah, 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 yeah. Steady on. Yeah. Hopefully she hasn't noticed that these are gone. Yeah. She's been really pleased with really that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, you want the claps ready? Uh, yeah. 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 Well done. Well done. brushing the wheels. Let's get them wrapped up, though. When these vases came to the repair shop, one had a huge chip in the rim and the other had suffered a bodged repair. But Guillaume's skillful craftsmanship has returned them to near mint condition. I'm very happy. I think it looks very good and then I hope Graham is going to be happy. He should be happy and especially his wife. His wife has to be happy with the, with the work because it belongs to her. The vases are now safely back in Graham's hands, but his mission to surprise his wife, Shirley, didn't go to plan. After you've been married to someone for quite a while, it's very difficult to keep secrets. I noticed that the vases were missing when I looked at the china cabinet and I thought, where's the two little ones gone? And eventually I got it out of Graham that he was going to have them restored professionally. Here we go. I can't wait Two to see of these. Your granny's vases. I really cannot mm. wait. And look at that. It's that is really completely job. invisible. That is absolutely a work of art. The damage <laughs> was in a really personal mm. part of it. It wasn't hidden or anything. And it was so, so difficult to hide. I think Granny Doris would be very, very I pleased. I think she'd with be that. very pleased with that yeah. as well. Great job. That's okay, that is vase class. number one. Let's have a look at vase number two. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. You can't see any of it. Mm. It's as if it's just come out mm. and been produced. I'm so pleased with that. You it's mean so that? beautiful. Yeah. I do yeah. mean that. Oh, thank you so much. I've got lipstick on you now. <laughs> <laughs> that is wonderful. Two perfect vases in there my book. The vases mean a lot to me because they belong to my grandma and we were very close. And for the future, now that they've been repaired, they'll go on for more generations, so we're really pleased. The repair shop team is no stranger to weird and wonderful items. Just come round this way. And today and is no exception. And over around there. Just there, yeah. That it? Yeah, right there. Thank you. This iconic blast from the past is owned by Mike Pierce, who has come to see Jay and jukebox expert Lawrence Richardson. Hello, how Good are we morning. doing? Right. You all right? Yes, thank you, and you? Yeah, not too bad. How can we help you? Uh, my jukebox has been delivered. Oh, it's your jukebox? It is. Oh, OK. Come round this way. Thank you. I think this is the one. So how long have you had this one, then? Getting on 30 years. Yes. So how did you get get hold of it? Was it in a coffee shop or something, or has it come over oh, from I America? I always love them in coffee shops. Right. I wanted to buy a pinball machine, which I'd seen advertised. Oh, right. And when I went to the gentleman's house, this was standing in the corner. So in the coffee shops, there would have been a lot of these? Yes. Every coffee shop had one? In those days, we didn't go to clubs. There's no such thing as that. We all thought we were James Dean then. You'd get your oh, right. coming out <laughs> and you'd have a cigarette coming out lean on it. And look, and you try to see what the reaction was right. with the other people. And it's the prettiest girl in the coffee bar. Was, oh, I like this. So, yeah, that's when you play that one and go, you know. OK. <laughs> This is my glorious 1957 Wurlitzer 2104 jukebox. Unfortunately, like me, it's getting older and it's deteriorating and it gradually ground to a halt. So you have to remember that the jukebox got these enormous speakers so they reverberate and they become part of the room. It bounces off the walls. 
anyone of my age remembers music, this is how you would listen to it. It doesn't sound the same from a CD or an iPod or anything like that. It's not the same sound. It's our dear old friend. I love it passionately. And it's so sad to see something which can give so much pleasure just sulking in a corner, poor thing. So, Lawrence, what do you reckon? Yeah. Can it be done? Can we get this playing again? Do it, hopefully. Yeah? Have you worked on anything like this I before? I have worked on a few of these. So how, yeah. how often do these need a really, service? Really, they need a service every year. Every year? But most people leave it a couple of years. And you've had this for 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> We've had it for 30 years. If you leave it with us, we'll get it fully restored and working. Lights flashing. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, so I want to see it playing again. That would make an old man very happy. It's really miraculous. Thank you very much indeed. No problem. Thank you. Thanks. If it is restored, it would be the most wonderful achievement. And so once it comes to life with music and light, it would be sensational. What have you got to do? Well, open it up, have a look at it, and then power it up and keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> power it up. Yeah, just, just assess what's wrong. Have you ever had any problems with these before? Yeah, you get problems, but yeah? I don't let them beat me. Wurlitzer jukeboxes energised young people across Britain during the late 1940s and 50s. Excited teenagers could select from up to 104 tunes, transporting them into the world of American rock and roll. You shouldn't be making that buzzing noise as soon as I press a letter and a number button. It should select the mechanism and it should start spinning around. I'm going to manually flick a pin up, which is what the buttons does electronically. Um, that will tell me what, whether the mechanism is functioning, whether this motor works. OK, it's going, but very slowly. The speed is telling me that the motor isn't functioning correctly. The motor feels a bit stiff, so I'd like to take it off and clean it as well. And then I need to see what it sounds like. But well, that's a while off at the moment. For craftspeople like Lawrence, Jay and the rest of the team, it's a pleasure to get their hands on these little pieces of history. They may arrive showing their years, but they leave with a new lease of life to be enjoyed for generations to come. The next guests are keen to restore their precious piece back to its former glory. Mary and David Shockley and Freddie the dog from Wiltshire. How are we doing? Oh, fine, thank Hello. you. Hello. It's a job for ceramics conservator, Kirsten. That's great, lovely. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. Okay. What have we got here? What can you tell me about this piece? Well, as far as I know, um, it was a lady's Victorian travelling box. It was given to me when I was about 10 or 11 years old. Yeah. I understand that the panels on the front um, are hand-painted French panels, which is quite unusual because apparently it just they usually just come with wooden oh, fronts. Right. They're rather beautiful, actually, aren't they? Beautifully painted, lovely colours. Has it always had that crack down? Yes. It has, yes, right. Yes, it okay. had it when I had it. Right. I can certainly have a look at that for you. That would be absolutely marvellous. OK, <laughs> all right, thank you. <laughs> hasn't been out of my sight for the 60 years that I've had it. So leaving it somewhere is uh, quite a wrench. Will? How can I help? These apparently are um, French painted panels. It's going to make my life a lot easier if, if it come out of here. What do you think? Right. The painted tile is already cracked in two. Careful on the ceramics. Yeah. It's up to Will to remove it without causing any further damage. Well, yay! <laughs> well done. Oh, 
OK, so I'm just going to stick this final piece on here. I've tipped it onto its side to use gravity to help pull the two edges together. And it should go together really nicely. There we are. So I'm just going to leave that now to go off. From treasure box to jukebox. Lawrence is trying to resurrect Mike's classic 1950s Wurlitzer, whose innards have remained untouched for three decades. I've taken the motor off and it's really difficult to turn the spindle, which is this piece at the end. That tells me that it's seized up inside. It should be nice and free. It definitely needs to be cleaned and be lubricated. Oh, that's nice, isn't it? Yeah, good, Jay. Yeah, we're getting there. Got the back open. Got the back open. And got... you've got it working? No, not yet. <laughs> not yet. <laughs> so, so what's the problem with it? Well, the motor's definitely very slow. OK. So cool. I've taken it apart. What's that, power? That's the transformer. That's power, then? That's power. And then that's the mechanism? This is the brain, if you like, right. this, this okay. part. And it's not getting the signal from the buttons. When you press the buttons, it's just yeah. buzzing. It should click a pin up to make it rotate to select the record, and it's not doing that. I want to get this going, man. Yeah, OK, OK. Are you going to do it? You're going to do it? Gonna do it <laughs> yeah, man? I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. All right, I'm not going to stand over you, <laughs> because that's the worst thing, put too much pressure on you. You're, you're in control, aren't you? I'm in control. So, we've given this a clean-up. And... It's running much freer now. Should be fine to go back in. I love restoring jukeboxes because it's something different to do every day. And there's real satisfaction when you've restored something that most people think looks ready for the tip. The end result is stunning. I'm now going to put the amplifier and power supply back into the jukebox. Uh, hopefully, it will have speeded up the motor, the drive motor, so it functions properly. It's made a clonk. Yeah, the carousel's turning much faster now. So it should stop when it gets to this pin. It should lift the record up, which it's doing. Now the Wurlitzer is starting to get its mojo back, Lawrence gives it a well-earned drink. Right, it's time to get the button bank out now. This 1957 Wurlitzer 2104 is one of the most collectible from the era. Fully working models can change hands for several thousand pounds. All of the contacts look really dirty. I'm going to completely clean everything there and then hopefully the signal will go through when you press the buttons to start the jukebox working. Right, putting the button bank back in. Oh! <laughs> put an end to that party, didn't it, <laughs> eh? It, it sounds all right, like everything's rocking and rolling. Yeah, it's selecting really well. But you don't look happy. What, um, no, well, I am happy. I think what's the left? sound could be a bit better, so... I think that needle's worn out. Yeah? I don't okay. think it's been changed for a while. So that'll make it sound good. Mike's going to lose his mind. He's going to take him <laughs> right back. He's going to have the leather jacket on, the quiff. So, basically, we've got to get this sorted. What else have you got left to do? We need to give it a good clean. The screen's really dirty. Well, I could take care of that. Once you let me know when I can come... Now, he's going to be made up. Mike's going to be made up. But, listen, we've got to get this going. So yeah, we will, we will. Call me. Call All me, right, yeah? OK. All right. Thanks, Jay. No problem. No challenge is too big... <laughs> ..or too small for the expertise and experience of the repair shop team. Yet the objects that arrive... Ooh. 
Oh, yes. Still have the capacity to surprise and delight. Oh, wow. And none more so than the next offering brought by Peter Veal from South East London. Hello. Hi there. What have we got in there? So, we have a monkey. A monkey? Uh, not a real monkey. Not a real, not a real monkey. monkey, no. <laughs> what we've got is a toy monkey. I spent uh, quite a few summers holidays in Montrose in Scotland with my best friend James and his grandmother, who was an amazing woman. She'd lived all over the world. And yeah. When she died, I was asked, oh, would you like anything to remember her by? Right. And the monkey, to be honest, was the only thing I remember from this amazing room <laughs> full of toys. <laughs> right. The first time I saw it, it actually moved and, you know, it's, a, it's supposed to work. Yeah. But uh, since I inherited it, and I think it was 91, it's not moved a muscle. It's not moved, no. No. This slightly scary simian was produced by Japanese toy makers Bandai in the 1950s, which makes him between 60 and 70 years old. How do you operate it? You just uh, press the lever and it moves its face and it uh, claps the cymbals. Yep. So all of this moves up and down and stuff. All like that, that means I mean, you can kind of reenact it by doing, yes, what you're doing there. Right. It can be terrifying for young children. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. have a big yeah. print of it in my house, and my niece came to stay at Christmas, and she yeah. didn't. She said, "Can I have another room?" <laughs> what do you mean, have another room? Wow. And uh, we had to remove the picture from the walls. I've done a lot of toys. I haven't done one of these. So uh... his name's Mungo, by the way. Mungo the monkey. I don't know. Mungo why. the monkey. How fast do these go when they're? Um... <laughs> Uh, when it's working. I don't remember the speed. <laughs> what do you want, uh, hertz or per second? What do you want? I'm just wondering whether, you whether it just goes, goes like this or whether Fair it goes... A bit for you, the faster of the two. Faster, all right, okay. Faster, okay. Faster, yes. yes. Yeah. Well, I think this is uh, a job for you, Jay. Um, is it? Uh, taking off the clothes. <laughs> Steady on, taking off the clothes <laughs> on a monkey? Yeah. Yeah, because I've got to stitch them back. Yeah, well, no, that one's glued. glued. It is glued. If you leave it with us, we'll definitely get back to you once we've, um... Once we've got him working again. Yeah. Okay. Is that all right? All right. Thanks very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. All right. all right. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks a lot. Well, Mungo is in a quite a sorry state, to be honest. And he's looking the worse for wear. He's aged worse than me, I'm happy to say. Um, so if he could uh, look almost as good as new, um, that would be amazing. So I've got to take this to my bench, get the clothes off. Okay. All right. All right. I'll see you in a bit. This is what it must feel like to get your chest waxed. Oh, we're almost there. I think we've got lift off. He was resisting. He hasn't had his clothes off in many years. Oh, is he? Yeah. <laughs> I suppose he hasn't, really. And he could feel the chill in this building. Yeah. And then... Ah, uh, well done, you. So you can get... Yeah. I can't get this off. No, 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 I don't think you need to. I think the least we have to take off, the better. So you've got the shoulders. I think this whole back bit just comes yeah, no, out, it doesn't does. it? Yeah, no, that's perfect. Thank you. Leave that with me. Yeah. And, uh You get him working, yeah? <laughs> All right. Hey, All right. hey. What's that? Bye. There you go. <laughs> See you later, mate. <laughs> While Steve gets to grips with Mungo, the jukebox is almost ready to return to active service, complete with new needle and working lights. For the final touches, Lawrence is calling in some repair shop reinforcements. Right, Jay, can we get these windows clean? Well, how dirty are they? They're filthy, mate. They are, aren't they? <laughs> it's had a hard life. It's had a hard life. Oh, no, that's good stuff. Yeah, a bit of vinegar. Don't go miss with that. Gary, come and have a look at this. <laughs> Unbelievable. One of my favourite songs. Oh, it stinks. Yeah. It's that vinegar. Yeah, it's vinegar. Oh. Come on, guys, I want to listen to some music. With the jukebox sparkling and ready to sing once again, it's been transported a hundred miles back to Canterbury to be reunited with owner Mike. Oh, that's amazing. That just looks so much better than it's done for the last 30 years. It's gleaming, shining, the buttons are white and pristine, the whole thing is just so much better. It really is looking like it used to in the 50s. It's looked nowhere near as good as this for so long, and I can't wait to see how it lights up and, of course, how it plays. We'll turn it on and see what happens. Oh, look at that. That's the first time it has lit up for ages, and it just looks so wonderful. It looks exactly as it should. It's brought back so many memories. 
this wonderful glow coming from the jukebox. Quite spectacular. Now the big test. What's it going to sound like? Listen to that, it's playing again. I never expected a renovation as good as this. Lawrence has done such a fabulous job on this. I really cannot praise him too highly. I mean, I know at the start he said that he would get it going, he'd get it repaired, but I didn't think it would come up as beautifully as this. The sound's wonderful, the lights are wonderful, and it just looks right, it looks as it did. But it came out 60 years ago. Fabulous achievement, Brian, and I'm so grateful and so lucky to have the chance to get it back to how it should be. Wonderful, wonderful moment. I feel guilty that it was neglected just over the years. It wasn't played as much as it should be, but it's certainly going to be in future. Now I can enjoy the music, just I've been enjoying it almost all my life. The repair shop can't stop to party for too long. Steve's got monkey business to attend to. Most clockmakers do repairs to all sorts of things because we're sort of the last resort in a lot of cases. So we get a lot of mechanical toys to, to men, especially vintage ones. This happy chappy has been popping up in popular culture since it was first manufactured in the 1950s, making appearances in Rebel Without a Cause, Toy Story 3, and even The Simpsons. The clapping monkey has become an enduring childhood image. I'm following the wires around to check to see where they are, and I've actually identified a loose wire just here. Oh. They're brilliant. We've got life there. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Got work, you know? Well, I'm holding a wire in place at the moment. It's a mad little monkey, isn't it? Yeah. So what are you holding together? Just a no, bit of wire? Yeah, I've got this wire that's loose in there. Can you see this wire here? It's loose. Oh. There we go. Oh, as soon as it touches that, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it's all right. And then you've got a solder in there. Yeah. But how are you going to do that without getting this? Oh, I just... I'll just be careful. I've got to move that out of the way so I don't burn it or melt it. And then that's it? Well, no, then, then the, the, there's this lever on, this little button on top that then supposed what, to... On his head? Yeah. Oh, wow. That then changes uh, its action. I think, it, I think, and I don't know this, I think it stops um, the symbols and then it makes a noise and its lips go up and down and, <laughs> and, and eyes go in and out and things like that. So, so, yeah, watch this space. <laughs> OK. There's this button on top here. I was hoping that this would actually engage the mechanism to alter the, the eyes and the lips. Uh, the lips are supposed to open like this and the eyes are supposed to, to bulge out. And um, I think it's had quite a bash in its past. There are levers really bent and broken in here but I'll have a look at it and, and, and see what I can do. While Steve goes like the clappers to bring Mungo back to life, Kirsten is applying some blue sky thinking to the treasure box. So um, I'm just sort of finishing off this plaque from the treasure chest. I'm hoping that it's gonna look really, really nice and that the owners will be very happy with it. All that remains is for Will to carefully reattach the door, and Mary, along with her husband David, can be reunited with the box she has loved since she was 10 years old. How are we doing? Very well, thank you. With Kirsten off on a repair shop mission, it's over to Jay to do the honours. You ready for this? I am. <gasps> wow. 
Oh, gosh, that's beautiful. Hasn't she done a lovely job, Anne? God. Brilliant. You can't see the mend at all. Oh, it's oh. absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And it's come up beautifully. Yeah. My mother would be thrilled to see it like that as well. And I hope to pass it down the generations. That's good. Because I've got a daughter and a granddaughter, yeah. which would be lovely. Yeah, that would be. <laughs> it's absolutely fantastic. Yeah? <laughs> yes, I can't thank you enough for doing it. <laughs> I couldn't believe my eyes. <laughs> that crack has been there ever since I owned it, and to see it gone is absolutely marvellous. It makes it so much more complete. The treasure box is going to be kept now in the lounge and not in a wardrobe in my bedroom, and put it on display so that everybody can admire it. If there's one project in the repair shop that's in danger of driving everyone bananas, it's this one, Mungo the Musical Monkey. Hi, right, Jay. How are you, Steve? Yeah, he's ready to. Uh, <laughs> he's ready to be uh, redressed. Redressed. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Let's have a look. Yeah, he'd been to the dentist for a long time. He hasn't though, been hasn't he? to the dentist for a while. But you sorted him yeah. out. You could do with a gold tooth in there. Well, you could actually. Yeah, yeah. I might have to put one in there yeah. for him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not an expert at dress, dressing the monkey, so, so uh, I'll leave that to you. Yes, please. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, Steve. Steve's done a brilliant job in getting Mungo working again. So. The only thing that's left for me to do is basically glue him so he doesn't stretch his fur. There we go, Steve. I'm fully dressed monkey. Hey, he's got his dignity back then. He has a bit. He has. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, the, batteries, the batteries are in. Turn him on. <laughs> Turn him on. He's a bit scary. Yeah, he's done a great job there. Well done. Restored and redressed. How are you doing? Hello again. Mungo can be returned to owner Peter. Hi, Peter. How are you? How are you? A reminder of childhood memories of holidays in Scotland with his best friend and his grandmother. There we go. All tucked up nicely. How long is it since uh, you saw him doing anything? Uh, 1988. So what? 88. Oh my God. 29 years. Gosh. Right. Once upon a time, it used to open up and close its lips, and, right. and the eyes used to bulge out, oh. and he used to make a, a noise as well. But at some stage in its life, it's had a wallop, or two or three, or maybe a lot more wallops on it, and it's beyond repair, really. But what you remember happening is happening now. Hey! <laughs> I didn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, thank you. I've never seen him twirl on his bum like that. No. Well done. So, um, yeah, all good. May I? Yes, sir, yeah. absolutely you can, yeah. Come on, do what you need. He does. <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Oh, God. Oh, it's exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And to tell you the truth, I'm quite chuffed that he's leaving the workshop. <laughs> I haven't had a good night's sleep since he's been here. <laughs> I'm feeling very happy because I honestly have given up on him ever being uh, in a working monkey again. It feels very nice that Mongo has been brought back to life because it, it, it connects me with the memories again and I, I can't wait to show James because I think that he'll the, the memories will come flooding back for him as well. Hello, how are we doing? Hello, pretty good, thank you. You all right? Yeah, nice to see you. But first to arrive today is Zeta Rome, her husband Bill, and a wounded member of the family in need of assistance from Amanda Middleditch and Julie Tatchell, the repair shop teddy bear casualty department. This is Pink Ted. Oh, bless. Made of sheepskin. Oh. <laughs> it's adorable, isn't it? Do you mind if we gently take all his clothes and bandages? Uh, no, no, please no, no. do. So what, what's the history then behind the teddy bear? Well, he was given to me just after I was born, I suppose. Right. In the war. And I think he was bought from Harrods. He's been with me all that time. He got evacuated to Scotland. 
Okay. He survived measles and chicken pox and boarding school. Yeah. Um, and he survived the first lot of children, my children, and then our grandchildren. What he did not survive was the puppy dog. Oh. And it was a good thing it was only the arm, really. Could have been a lot worse. I think because he took the arm off, he probably demolished the arm and left Pink Ted to one side. Oh. That was lucky. So that was, yes, yeah, yeah that was definitely. Lucky. The children have played hospitals with him ever since. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he came in all bandaged up. Yeah. That's oh. why he came in like oh. that. So this is um, made of sheepskin then, is that right? Yes. Teddy bears were usually made of mohair, which is really soft and, and lovely. Um, but during the war and just after the war, there wasn't a lot of mohair. It had been used for soldiers' uniforms, blankets, etc. So they had to think of other ways that they, they could make teddy bears. And he is, he is a really nicely made for a sheepskin teddy. I like his worn patches mm -hmm. and his fadedness. Um, that gives him character and age and things. Yeah. So I wouldn't want him to have a brand new red ear on the side. No. With regards to his ears, we have one good ear. So with that, we can remove the good ear. We will split it into two. So the, oh. back, the back of Pink Ted's ear will become the front of the new ear. That's wonderful. You're very welcome. Wonderful. He's in safe hands, OK? Oh, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> right, come on, let him do it. <laughs> so, you're going to be able to do it, ladies? It's notoriously difficult to work on. Because it's sheepskin, because of the frailty of the fabric that we're working with, a lot of restorers won't, won't actually touch it. My relationship with Pink Ted is so special because we have always been together. Leaving Ted here is, is quite emotional for me. I feel a bit like a mother leaving her child in hospital. <laughs> what I'm a bit scared about is that you said that you're going to open him up. Yeah. Like her face when you said, like, no. open him up. It's hard. It sometimes. is quite interesting you saying that because we do have to be very careful, particularly in front of the owners, what yeah. they see once we actually start to do a restoration because it can be quite upsetting. Yeah, because yeah. you're going to open, you're operating it, on it. We really. are. Yeah. We do it as lovingly as we can, but sometimes it can look a little bit. Brutal. Yeah. We'll tell you when to look away when it gets gory. Thank you. That's very kind of you. I'm worried about this front seam. I can't see any other way. Be really, really careful here. There it goes. When we're working on them, we actually build a bit of a relationship with them because they do have character. So, you know, you'll quite often find us saying, it's all right, you'll yeah, be fine. they come or... in quite grumpy sometimes, don't they? And by the time they leave, Smiling. they have a smile on their face. It's yeah. just I remarkable. know you think we're mad, but they do. They do, they do. definitely. There's no two ways about it. And it comes. And the stuffing that he's got in him is quite interesting. This is called sub. And it's kind of, if you like, early recycling because these were all the threads and, and bits that they swept up off the mill floors. And we will reuse that if we can. Taking this out, we have to be really careful that it's not adhered or stuck or anything if he'd have got damp at some point in his life. But then we could cause again more damage. I have to say, looking at him, it's, it's he's actually in, in quite oh. good condition inside. And he would have been this colour. The repair shop is a sanctuary for many ageing members of the animal kingdom in need of revival. But next to arrive is neither fish nor fowl. Patricia Levy has a treasured heirloom in need of some attention. Okay. Here, I'll, I'll take that for you. Uh, thank you. Let's go over to Kirsten. Kirsten, here we go. We've got Patricia. Do you Hello, Patricia. Patricia. What do you do, do on Kirsten? Hello. What have you got in the bag then, Patricia? Oh, a pot that was my mum's. It's been around ever since I can remember. It's oh, a good one. That's beautiful, that's, isn't it? I think it's a lovely thing, even with that, you know, I keep it turned to the wall. Yeah. You know, it would have been valuable, but there you go. The port is Royal Barhamware, produced by the firm C.H. Branham. Branham originally made floor tiles before moving into art pottery in 1879, counting Queen Victoria amongst the most distinguished customers. 
how did your mother um, come well, by? She, my mother had a marvellous eye for China. Mm -hmm. and some people she knew, we were a very big family and there was a big anniversary. They wanted vases, so she lent this out and got it back like that. Oh, how disappointing. She wasn't cross, she was just disconsolate. And she said, oh, it would have been valuable. She said, it's a good piece. Yeah. There's a little bit of a scratchy there, but I don't mind that. I'm, I'm really surprised, actually, you know, having happened so long ago that actually more of these bits haven't flaked away. As it's got a crack running through it, again, you can, yeah, you can hear it, actually. Where's the crack? So there is actually a crack coming up from the um, base there, right the way across. Could I have just done it? I wouldn't have thought so. They must done, have done yeah, it at yeah. the time that that yeah, was done. quite possibly. Probably. Asking an obvious question, you know, what what is it that you would like, you know, to happen to this vase? You know, what would you like me to do? Make it nice again. Okay. Such a beautiful glaze, isn't it? Will you get exactly the same blue? I will do the very best that mm. I can. It's really good that um, Patricia's brought this, this vase um, to be restored because actually it's so vulnerable with that huge crack going right the way through it, could literally just send the crack right the way round and it could break in two. I think when you have things like that, um, it's a sort of a moral responsibility to your family and to family possessions. I mean, you don't sell the family silver. I'm hoping that I can um, mimic that glaze quite well, which I won't know till I try, but um, I shall certainly do my best. Bear doctors Julie and Amanda are mid-operation on Pink Ted's life-saving surgery. Oh, steady on that. Oh, no, that's his What have you done? Took his innards out. You took his guts out? But look what good condition oh, yeah. that the uh, sheepskin's been inside. We're very, very lucky. You're good with that? You're happy? Yeah, we're yeah, happy, yeah. very happy. So no problems? Nope. You sure? Oh, yeah. All going to plan. Because to me, it looks like that's a bit <laughs> of a problem. Absolutely. Yeah, but... <laughs> Isn't it amazing how all that came it's out amazing, of there? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is amazing. But, I mean, I'm still worried about it. Are you? Don't worry. Now Pink Ted is unstitched and unstuffed, Amanda and Julie can start to repair him. The toughest job is making sure the new fur bears more than just a passing resemblance to the old. I'm painting on to the sheepskin to um, try and replicate not what he would have looked like when he was new, but what he actually looks like now. I've sort of played around, discovered that hair colour, of all things, is the best thing to colour it. It's just um, being able to get it into the right places, and I'm really pleased with the match. It's something that we feel very strongly about with these old bears. You don't want it to look like a new arm on an old bear. The pieces that we put on have to look like they've been there forever. So I'm just going to keep working at it, looking at the original, um, until I get the result that I want. How are we doing, ladies? You all right? Yeah, Hi, Julie. Good. Yes, we're really good. We're just discussing um, now that we're ready to put pink teddy back together again. Cool. Finally. Is this the colouring that you've done then? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is the piece with the new arms. That's the old arm. Yeah. So I've kind of been trying to... Match them up. Well, that's cool. Them. Yeah. So this is, you've got his, so, that's his arm, that's another arm. Yeah. yeah. What's these then? Ears. Oh, his ears. That's his ears, oh, yeah. yeah. Not it, his ears. His ears. Thank you. You so can't hear at the moment oh, because right. his ears are still there. <laughs> <Yeah. best. laughs> right. We haven't caused right. any effect. His ears. Okay. So when you stuff his arm, you're not going to give him any biceps, are you? Just oh, going to keep no. it simple. Yeah? No. Because he hasn't been to the gym. He'll look like. All oh, right. He's an He'll... elderly gent. That's what I like to wear. Pink Ted is not the only elderly gent in the workshop today. A grandfather has arrived in need of resident horologist Steve's attention to bring him out of retirement. Excited. Hello, you must be Linda and Ian. That's right. This grandfather or long case clock has been passed down four generations to Ian Murphy and his wife Linda. Would you like to tell me a bit about it? Yes, um, I inherited it from my mother, and she inherited it from her father. Right. I inherited it from his father. Right, uh, that's great to know. So let's just pop the hood off and have a look at the, uh, the mechanism. Right, can you tell me um, what sort of age you think it might be? Well, the, the, the date on the, the front there is 1712, and 
We've done some internet research and we can't find William Robb in 1712. We can find him 1800s, but not 17. OK. That date has been added afterwards. Ah. Right. right. I would put it um, uh, much later, around about um, 1750, that sort of... As old as that? ...age period, yes. It's, it's definitely yeah. 18th century. Yes. So have you known it working? Oh, yes. Yeah, we have known it working, definitely. But uh, it possibly hasn't worked right for maybe 20 years now. Right, OK. So we have um, just the basic um, time mechanism, which looks as if it's all there. It's absolutely black in there. Yeah. You can't see that there's any brass at all there. It's completely right. black. So that's quite a challenge, getting all that cleaned up, but an enjoyable one. If we could just get it ticking, yeah. we, we'd be happy. OK. So there are uh, different things we can do with the dial as well. See, originally, this chapter ring would have been silvered and the centre would have been silvered. Mm. These, these outer bits would have been left brass and the spandrels here would have been polished brass. Right. And over the years, it gets polished off. Oh, so different. this is a dial and you can see the chapter ring has been silvered. This would have been re-silvered. This is not the original yeah. uh, silvering. Yeah, yeah. And that's the sort of look that you'd get on it if, if you wanted to go that way. I would like it to be silvered again if that's, okay. if that's how it used to be. They look really smart when they're yeah. done. So we can certainly do that for yeah. you. Yeah, that's Thank you very much. Now, we need to talk about the uh, the case uh, because that needs some work doing yes. to it as well. Will, could you pop over a quick look at the case? While Steve's got the clock covered, Will's the man when it comes to the woodwork. I think this case looks in reasonable condition, but there, there are a few areas that need um, addressing. Right. Number one, this... Um, Plinth is loose. Yeah. Um, it's been screwed up there. And also, this bracket foot there is um, I was about to say, uh, missing. loose. <laughs> the back, you're missing <laughs> one of the legs. That's uh, really kind of you to bring Thank it you. on. Thank you. I'm so excited. It's going to be restored. We've got an empty space at the moment. Mm. And it'll be nice to fill it again with the clock, all shiny and bright. Real excited because it's uh, nice to see you back in the living room again. And it'd be great to hear it ticking. There's no way oh. to fix <laughs> <laughs> it. are you doing? That's no way to fix a clock. <laughs> are those all the places that need uh, work? Yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm using this blue tape here to point out everything that needs to be done. That really is right. an excellent idea. So I've got all of this to do. What are you doing? I'm doing a complete overhaul on this. Got to do a lot of repairs to the movement. It hasn't been... I don't think it's been apart for 60, 70 years. So you've got your work cut out here yeah. as well? I'll pop this over on my bench. Oh. That's pretty straightforward. And then over to you with the case. And over to me with the case. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to strip the movement down completely and then I can properly inspect it for... The reason why it's not working is just uh, depends on just how much wear there is. But um, I think it's pretty obvious that it's dirty and worn. Another repair shop patient is on the road to recovery. Pink Ted is finally on the mend. We are a little bit keen now to get those finishing touches done before Pink Teddy goes back. Literally, the last few stitches going in, then we have a few skin grafts to go in place. How are we doing, ladies? You've walked in at the right moment. Finally. Always. They're never finished until no. they have a bow. Oh, bless. It does look the part. It's got both ears. Both ears, both arms. Yeah, you've done a grand job. We really played that the, um, I know Zeta was wanting some of these areas left, mm. but she liked some of his sort of ageing. Internally, he's been completely lined right. and strengthened. The arm looks like it's been there forever. That's amazing. <laughs> I can't believe you've done that. <laughs> All right, let's get the rest of them. All right, guys, when you're ready, we've got a little reveal here. Oh, it's exciting, isn't Very it? Very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, little chap. Very Thank good. You. Which are the new bits? I was going to say, oh, which, oh, which, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> which arm is the new arm? We're good. This is the new arm, and uh, we made his new ear right. using the old ear as the two fronts. Mm. So the 
back that of his really ears. Yeah, really good are idea. The new bits. That makes sense. Oh, that's brilliant. Zeta, Zeta. she is going to She is going to be thrilled. so happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm amazed. No, I am as well. I'm blown away. It's, <laughs> no, he's done a brilliant job. I don't think anyone would look at Pink Teddy now and think it was a different bear than we started with at the beginning. I think he's still Pink Teddy, but complete. Now Pink Ted can be reunited with owner Zeta and her family. And barring any more unfortunate canine encounters, is ready for another 75 years of family service. <laughs> it's like Christmas and Easter and birthdays. <gasps> oh, my goodness. He's all better. Oh, oh, oh that's brilliant. brilliant. Hooray, he says. Oh, that is so lovely. Welcome back, Pink Ted. It's totally amazing. Before he was mended, he looked a bit sad. He did look sad, didn't he? You think he's happy now? He does look happy now. And he's never had a bow as grand as that before. <laughs> I never thought that he would be able to be mended after the puppy dog chewed him up. And uh, now he's come out the other side and he's brilliant now. I have promised Pink Ted to my granddaughter eventually, but I hope that he and I will go through a bit more of life together. I'm not finished with him yet. As one old gent is restored to his family, Steve is just getting started on the 18th century grandfather clock. First job, wash off the years of built up dirt. Well, what's on the menu then? <laughs> Soup. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, some of that. Cl that's... Clock a leaky. Oh, oh, oh. Uh -huh. that's a sharp one. <laughs> There was an awful lot to do in this clock because it's about 240 years old. It has ticked about seven and a half billion times in its life if it's been working every day. So it's incredible. All those ticks have taken their toll on the clock's moving parts and have left Steve a massive job to try and wind back time. So this pinion here is, has got um, quite a lot of wear to it but it's quite fortunate that this pin is quite soft as well. So what I'm going to do, I can actually scrape it with um, a scalpel. And I'm going to just shape it to get rid of the, um, the little groove that's worn in it. Because that, when it engages with the, uh, the teeth, can actually stop the clock. Meanwhile, Will is working on the case and discovering there might be a little more to do than at first sight. Steve? Oh, my goodness. This is what happens to grandfather clocks quite a lot, is that actually the glue blocks that hold it all together, they dry out and fall out. Yeah. And um, they fall onto the ground, smash, and uh, obviously it's a lot bigger a job. Yeah. The back leg was so bad it was rocking all over the place so i think that along and that was flapping off the side yeah. so that along with the fact that everything's flapping everywhere else it was only a matter of time do you think before that just no absolutely it would have fallen over so uh, in the nick of time i think nick of time yeah absolutely leaving will to deal with the shattered case Steve is forging ahead with returning the clock face silver. I'm just um, putting the silver powder on, rubbing it in. As you rub it on, it releases a very, very thin layer of silver over the uh, surface of the brass. Big areas are the most difficult ones to get a nice, even finish. Sometimes you end up doing it again and again until you get it right. Right, now I've done that, I need to just wash it off quickly. It's gone on so, so well. Very, very pleased with that. How are we doing, Steve? Your bench is empty. That means you've finished. No, 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 no. I no? finished. I've, I'm, I'm getting on. I've, I've uh, just got the, the dial all silvered and, and looking lovely. I've just got to lacquer it now. Then the dial's all done. 
Steve's also decided to add an extra special touch for Orna's Ian and Linda. I found a hammer. That's uh, a hammer? Yeah, that's a hammer. <laughs> and, and basically, every hour, the hammer will go back like that and strike. Oh, that's nice. Over at the ceramics desk, Kirsten has been fixing the large crack in the Branham vase that the owner didn't even know was there. I've consolidated this crack, this um, hairline crack. It goes right the way from here, all the way around, right through the base. Quite amazing that this actually stayed in one piece because it's a really bad crack. And you can hear before it sounded it was like a really sort of dull thud when you tapped on this. And now it's got a nice ring to it. I stabilised that here as well and filled it. And I had to put in these ridges as I was filling to mimic the actual original of the piece. But I'm going to start painting because when, it, when you put your first coat of paint on, it always shows up any imperfections and things that you've missed out in your fill. So I'm kind of looking for the base colour there, really. Now Kirsten's cracking on with fixing the original problem, the chips in the glaze, before the pot's owner, Patricia, returns to pick it up. The brew pot belonged to my mum. She gave it to me about 40 years ago. I'm longing to see it. I, I really am. Oh, hello again. How are you doing? Fine. You all right? Yeah. Hello, nice to see you. So there's my baby. There's your piece, yes, yep. Are you ready to have yes. a look? There oh. we are. <laughs> wow. OK. So, which is the bit that's been...? Well... No, let me guess. This is metal, so I can't see. Mm. It all looks, it all looks splendid. Oh, that's great. So actually, it's that's the area. Really? There, yeah. And through to bits. That's Thank lovely. you so much. Oh, well, you're very welcome. I'm just glad that you're pleased with it, really. Yeah, aren't you? It's lovely. Yeah, oops. <laughs> <laughs> It'll, if it survives the journey back, I might be back <laughs> here next week. <laughs> I'm really cock a hoop. It's marvellous. I'm thrilled to bits with it. I think Mum <laughs> would love it. She might even want it back. <laughs> the rest of the repair shop team is busy finishing the grandfather clock. Will has spent hours stabilising the case. Steve has fixed the mechanism. Now they can be reunited in all their 18th century glory. Plus, Steve's added surprise chime. Steve, now that's what I call a clock. You've done a good job here, Dan. Thank you very much. Well, uh, Will's done a great job of the case. Really, really good. And, and the dial, I've resilvered all the dial. Will, come over here, mate. What I want to say is you've done a good job on the box here. Or on the case. The... Sorry, on the case. case. And Steve's got this ready to strike. <gasps> hey. hey. Oh, yeah, and it's going to do that every hour. Well done, Steve. Done. Teamwork. Yeah. Dreamwork. Amazing. 250 miles away in Hull, the clock has been returned to owners Ian and Linda, who have no idea that Steve has added an extra little surprise. Well, look at that. <gasps> Fantastic, isn't it? <gasps> look at the cabinet as There's well. That. Doesn't look like the same clock as hell, does it? That's fantastic. We don't really keep a lot of stuff in the uh, in the family, but this is the big heirloom, if you like. It's a lovely sound. Very calming, homely. I can fall asleep to that. <laughs> you probably will. Oh, oh are you joking? <gasps> what? How has he done that? Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that's great. It... Oh, do you mean? I don't know what to say. Well, that's, that's fantastic. <laughs> that's the icing on the cake. Go. Oh. Well, fantastic, isn't it? Mm. 
Hey, hey. I know it makes you feel quite emotional to think that all those years it hasn't charmed. No. no. Oh, it's lovely. It's a good surprise, is that one? Yeah, it is. It's a lovely surprise. Absolutely amazed. It, it looks absolutely fabulous. And the charm, it was absolutely it was superb to hear it because it's, I've never had it before in my life. And it was a very, very, very nice surprise. Now we know what it was like when it was made. Everything is working. It was nice just to have that little moment. Before, when it was, it was really just a piece of furniture. Now when I look at it, it's a real heirloom. It's something to be proud of, something to be taken care of, and something that will be passed down. First customers of the day are Scott Ferguson and Diana Colleran, here to see the repair shop's resident ceramics restorer, Kirsten Ramsey. Hello. Hi there. How are we doing? Good, thank you very much. Very well. OK, so what have we got here? <laughs> the Jolica stick stand formed as a bulldog. It's a, bu it's a bulldog? Yeah. <laughs> and poor Sweet Pea, I think he's missing a little bit of tail. So you call him well. Sweet Pea? He's called it, Sweet Pea? He is, look. Yeah, oh, <laughs> bless. <laughs> we didn't christen him. He was already christened that, yes. So it looks a bit Frankenstein now, doesn't he it? He does. At least all the pieces are there. It looks quite crude, yeah. but the pieces are all there. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you haven't got to make anything up apart from a few little spots that's, here and there. That's true. That that's makes it easier. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't know about easy, but <laughs> <laughs> it, it certainly helps. It yeah. helps. Antique collectors Diana and Scott live in Lincolnshire with their two dogs, Ginger and Lily. Come on, good girl. They're both barking about bulldogs. One day, I was speaking to one of my colleague dealers, and uh, he said, look, I've got this bulldog figure. He said, it's, it's quite badly damaged, smashed about a bit. Do you want it at all? And I said, well, yeah, that'd be lovely. Thank you very much. I went into work one day, and it was just there. And it was a, a big, smashed-up, pottery bulldog called Sweet Pea. When Scott bought Sweet Pea home, I'm took one look, 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 oh my goodness, <laughs> what's that? It was a face only a mother could love. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Pea was assigned to sit by the front door, as pride of place under the stairs belonged to another very special bulldog, their beloved pet, Harvey. He was part of the family, a mainstay of the family. He was a good guard dog, he barked, he was always attentive to anything going on around the place. Harvey had been part of the family for eight years when tragedy struck. Harvey started a limp initially. The vets diagnosed arthritis, which um, got very bad very quickly. And after x-rays, the word he used was mashed. They were shot. There was nothing they could do to help him, really. So we made the decision for Harvey, uh, not for us, for Harvey, to, um, to uh, have him put to sleep. He couldn't be in that pain, so uh, we had to do it. And as you can see, um, <clears throat> quite a while after, I'm still, he was a big part of our lives. Oh, sorry. Yep. <laughs> Having the space filled under the stairs with Sweet Pea has just sort of helped us get over it a bit. It softens the blow. It helps us cope. This is a memorial to Harvey, and it would just mean an awful lot to see the silhouette at the corner of your eye of a bulldog sat alert. It would mean quite a lot to get fixed, really. What I'd like to do is um, clear off all this sort of old adhesive and stick it back, you know, nicely so that it looks a lot better than yes. it does. And his tail, is there anything with... Oh, no. dear, oh, dear. <laughs> OK, guys, if you leave this with us, um, and we'll get back to you once we've fixed it. It'll look a lot better than it does now. Absolutely. Okay? Well, thank you very much. Thank you. you guys take care. Thank, thank you. you. you Bye-bye. You. You've got the sentimental value, which is directly linked to Harvey. So Absolutely. That responsibility. It's a big responsibility. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm just applying the paint stripper now. This should start to break down 
the previous adhesive, which will enable me to um, remove it and undo the previous repair. What have you done? You've covered him up? Yeah, I've covered him up. It's to hold the, um, the active chemicals sort of in place so okay. that they can actually work on the adhesive. That's the ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life, really. He's going to look a lot more beautiful when I've finished. From feeding masterpieces... The purpose of the filling is to actually bring up the surface. ..to clocks that have fallen silent. The repair shop squad is poised to repaint, reupholster and restore Britain's broken objects. Next to arrive is Sue Wright. She's been assigned to Frenchman Guillaume Pons, a specialist ceramics conservator who works with natural materials such as horn, amber and shell. What did you bring then? I have a mother of pearl item. Sue's brought a seashell intricately carved with a depiction of the Last Supper. It arrived in the family via an ancestor who travelled as part of his duties to the church. I'm not quite sure whether it's come from Brazil, and that would have been about the beginning of the 20th century, yeah. or it's come back a lot further back through various ministers in the family and it was used for um, baptisms or something like that. And was the three behind Brazil then? Uh, my grandfather was working out there. All oh, right, OK. It's been broken how long? Since 1960. All right. Yeah. Do you know who did the repair? No. My mother. Oh, right. Hair's got the yellow 1960s type blues on yeah. it. And they obviously didn't hold. It looks like more or less everything is there. And the fact that your mother kept it for so long, uh, keeping all the bits together, it must have uh, meant a lot to her. It did. I mean, she was very upset when it broke, and hence why she kept all the bits. Yeah. And so we're really looking forward to seeing if you can do something with it. Yeah, you'd be very pleased, yeah. It looks very promising. He seems to be quite confident that it can be repaired and back to pristine condition, which it hasn't been in for 60 years. First of all, the, what needs to be done is the, to clean very well the glue that was put in the 60s. So my um, work today is going to be to remove all the adhesive with the scalpel. It's time consuming, but it works very well. I'm very pleased with the cleaning, actually. It, it worked very well. I don't need to put uh, much glue, just a, 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 a little drop. It's a bit tricky to do the, the bonding because the, the, the bits, as you can see, are very small. And you can't really uh, put them together with tape. I will have to um, stick them together uh, with uh, some sticky wax. The wax holds the glued pieces tightly together while the adhesive is drying. Done. So that means that uh, um, we wait until tomorrow, until the, the adhesive has set, and, um, and hopefully it's going to stay together. So tomorrow it should be finished. Guillaume's final task is removing the stabilizing wax from the glued shell. Hold on now, I removed the sticky wax. You can see where it was broken, you can hardly see it now. It's been a very nice piece uh, to work on, and then I'm very pleased with the results. On the other side of the workshop, Kirsten's plans for Sweet Pea, the bulldog, are coming unstuck, but not in the way she'd hoped for. It's not going very well, actually. It's um, proving incredibly difficult to actually get the old adhesive off Sweet Pea. I don't know what they use, but it's absolutely rock hard, and I've tried all my usual techniques to actually try and break down the repair and um, I'm just getting nowhere at the moment, so it's quite frustrating. 
Well, yeah. I know you keep suggesting a sledgehammer, but um, I wonder if you have any practical suggestions. You could try drilling. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Drilling, right, in the cracks with a really fine drill bit or like a really fine file, kind of like what dentists use. I know, use yeah, no, I've used, spinning, yeah, just... that's, that is a really good idea. You go to Steve, maybe if you offer to make him a cup of tea or some okay. toast. Okay, this I workshop runs easier. on tea, doesn't it? Exactly. I think. Um, speak okay. to Steve and freak him out. Look out, here comes trouble. Ah. <laughs> I'm thinking I might actually try drilling through um, the little areas where there's... I've actually sort of broken through. I've got a very, very fine dentist drill. This drill bit should go in there really nicely. Mm. It's got a real uh, long reach to it as oh, well, okay. so you can go quite deep. OK, I'm going to give it a go. I just have to be really mindful of not actually damaging the brake edges. That might be a bit ambitious. And that's definitely not the ceramic that's crunching, is it, Steve? That's adhesive, I'm You're sure. You're starting to make me nervous now. <laughs> <laughs> Over Give to that you. to me. <laughs> <laughs> Despite careful drilling and filing, Kirsten has realised that she is in danger of further damaging the ceramic. I've tried absolutely everything I could possibly think of and also um, asked around as well sort of a few of my conservative friends. So she's had to change tack. Instead of breaking Sweet Pea apart, then putting him back together again, she's concentrating on improving the existing repairs. I'm now having to fill Sweet Pea, um, which is a little bit of a compromise. Um, it's not ideal, but it's the only thing that I can do, actually, in these circumstances. After filling and sanding several times to achieve the perfect finish, Kirsten must now disguise her repairs by creating the perfect colour match. I'm just starting to block in the colours and sort of try and um, hide the white fills that are there. There's lots and lots of different colours all over the face. But the decoration under the glaze is very sort of spotty so I kind of just stipple with my brush to recreate that effect. It's taken Kirsten days of dogged work to get Sweet Pea looking less rough, and she still has to put the spring back into his corkscrew tail. Putting Sweet Pea's tail back on is sort of a little bit like surgery, restoring him to his former glory. It's really critical to get the shape absolutely right at this stage. Um, you can um, sand it and shape it once it's cured, but it becomes very, very hard, and it's much, much easier to do it now while it's soft and, and malleable. With the way everyone's sort of handling the objects, you know, it's just having a respect for the, for the pieces that you're, you're working on. At the end of the day, people have brought them to you because they're, they, they're precious items, so, um, you know, we handle them with care and respect. It's this ethos that drives the repair shop team in their quest to recycle, renovate and rejuvenate items which were once consigned to the scrap heap. The next deserving item is being brought in by Scandinavian-born Nina Tucknot, who now lives in Hove. Oh, so this is your one, yeah? This is my rocking chair. So, tell us about it. My maternal grandparents were given it for their wedding day back in the late 1920s, and this was in Finland, where I come from. And in 1960, in August, when my parents got married, they were given it in turn for their wedding. Wow. And I'm born in 1961, and it's obviously been part of my life always. Wow. It's in the 20s. Yeah. Do the maths. You're younger than me. That's nearly 100 years. It's nearly 100, nearly 100 years. years. Wow, this is nearly 100 years old. Yeah, well, so I'm told. 
my grandparents had a big farm and it was always in what they call the sal, which is like the salon. And then my parents, it was always in the lounge. But I know as a child, I suffered very badly from severe ear infections. Okay. And my mum and dad used to take turns sitting at night, rocking me in this chair. So much history. I mean, I have never seen a rocking mechanism like this before. Never, no. never. It it's so uh, simple, but really effective. I yes, mean. it is. I mean, it, it means you don't topple over. You can go back a long way, uh, but it keeps you quite safe. It's a bit worse for wear. Um, this down here has always looked like that. And my mum used to stuff it with cotton wool because it used to annoy <laughs> her having a hole. Right. Um, since before it came on the journey to England, this chipped off. Um, so it's never, there was a little piece there, yeah, but that, so that so. went on the journey when it came over. The one thing I would love fabric wise to feature a little bit of red. Um, okay. This is the farmhouse that my grandparents had. Yeah. And this is a very typical Scandinavian color. So I kind of feel that the red a little bit of red in the fabric would just sort of tie it back back to home sort of thing. Do you reckon you could do the wood? I think I can handle the wood. You can handle, handle the fabric. The fabric, yeah. yeah. I love going a bit of red. That's that's not me. And the painting. Um, yeah, it does need to. It's had a couple of coats. It has. The last time my dad did it, and I was a little girl, so it's back in the 60s, so it's uh, not been done since. Right. OK, well, if you leave it with us, We'll fully restore it. Can't Sorry. wait. That would be wonderful. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And to you, Will. <laughs> Thanks. Thank Bye. You. I don't know how it's held on together. Because there's a cable going from this end on the left side. Right. And that goes into the back leg on the left side. And there's a cable on this side. And that goes down into this side. So it's sort of like an X. I'm shape. with you. So you're never going to flip off because you're being held from the other direction. Both so. ways, yeah. So simple, but, like, really clever. I get the feeling that they really, really liked it, and they're obviously excited about uh, bringing it back to its former glory. If you don't mind, bring it over to me, bench for me, will you? Yeah. Nice one. That's right. If you make some space... I will do. I'll be there in about 45 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, that's lovely. Over on Kirsten's workbench, Sweet Pea the Bulldog's grooming session is nearly complete. Sounds like you've got a new toy. <laughs> Kept that quiet, didn't you? Yeah, hey? You love a bit of kit. I do you? love a bit of kit. So I'm just doing a little bit of airbrushing on Sweet Pea. I've hand painted most of it, and I was actually just sort of putting a clear glaze over the top. But hold on, glaze is like the end, isn't it? Well, yeah. So the end I'm, is near? Well, the end is near, yes. I'm sort of in the final stages, really. Steve, come over here a minute, mate. Will, there we go. All done. Sweet pea. All done, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. When Scott and Diana left Sweet Pea at the repair shop, he was, well, a bit of a dog's dinner. Since Sweet Pea's been gone, Harvey has been at the forefront of our minds. As soon as Sweet Pea's back in the rightful place, I think we'll move on. I won't keep you waiting any longer. I've got hey, him right. just here, so... It's not Sweet Pea as you know him. Sweet Pea Mark II. Are you ready? We're ready. <laughs> definitely ready, yes. OK, yeah. there he is. <laughs> So, wow. The eyes well. are all there. Uh, just wow. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, just me. Wow. Good grief. Obviously, the tail was ah! missing oh, as fantastic. well. Oh, yes. fantastic. So I hope, yeah. that, I hope that's the right... No, that's um, beautiful. Well, it's perfect. Can't it's get all this. Sweet pea looks stunning. And I think the tail, just the icing on the cake, to have the whole thing finished off. And the colour match as well around the head, the shading. Beautiful. And the inside, have you seen the inside? <laughs> How the heck have you done that? <laughs> wow. Well, you're a miracle worker. Is that thank right? you very much. No, thank That's you. Lovely. This is the lady you got thanked, not me. She's thank done all the work. It has oh, been a pleasure. You. I'm so, so wonderful. pleased that you're happy. Oh. Yeah. 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 I think it'll help us draw closure. I think once Sweepy's back, it's the final where chapter. It be. Yeah. Yeah.
back inside the repair shop, Jay's getting to grips with the hundred-year-old rocking chair. To me, this looks a bit homemade because you've got this Regency fabric just stitched onto it. Looks like the back of some Hessian, but actually, I think it's a bit of carpet. You are making some serious progress. Yeah, it is, actually. Well, you're missing some pieces. There's a piece off the top. Well, no, I'm not missing any pieces. You're the guy that's sorting out the pieces. So I'm not missing them. They're just in your brain, your fingers, and you're going to do it all, ain't you? So I need right. a bit on here. Yeah. And then there's a bit on there that I need. I've got the other bit. It's just drying at the moment. So where are you going? Huh? I'm going to get my stuff. Oh, you're going to get your I stuff and come there? I'm going to my fingers. <laughs> right. What are you going to do, anyway? You're going to make... You're going to fix this, aren't you? Yeah. I have some really cool mould-making stuff. OK. And I think what I'll do, because we can't replace these... I think these are made up of metal, and they screw onto the inner wiring. But what I could do is make a mould of that and make that um, out of plaster or something. Will repairs the hall with a fast-setting filler before using a silicon-based putty, which hardens to form a mould of the missing button. Easy with the back. Easy to lay down. You keep on doing it. I keep on doing it. I'm apologising. Use. Now, take it off. Let's have a look. It's got to look like... God, blimey. It does look like it as well. And it's hard already. Wow. That's hey, impressive. Hey, hey. That's impressive. Hey. Well done. Where well there's done. a will, <laughs> there's a way. There's a way. <laughs> <laughs> Jay will have to down tools momentarily, with Ceramicist Guillaume having left the repair shop after completing the restoration of the mother of pearl shell, it's up to Jay to hand it back to its owner, Sue. Hello, Sue. How are you doing? You all right? I'm fine, thank you. Have you come for your mother of pearl shell? Is that right? Yes, I have, yes. OK, two minutes. Sue's about to see her rare and beautiful heirloom intact for the first time in almost 60 years. Oh, yes. <gasps> was done a brilliant job, I believe. That is absolutely wonderful. I'm sure the pieces that were broken off were down in this bottom right-hand corner here. Yeah. Um, and it's difficult to see where it <laughs> is. He's just done such a wonderful job on it. He has, hasn't he? Yes. What would Mum think of this now? Oh, she'd be thrilled, because obviously, having kept all the bits, that right. would have been her ideal I think, was to get it mended. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it never happened. So where That's is it. this going to be placed in your house now? Well, I think it needs to be framed so it's right. safe because it's still delicate, rather yeah. than on a plate stand. I totally agree with a, with you. a um, similar velvety or something dark coloured background to yeah, show it off. To show it off. So what I'll do is I'll get it wrapped up now and allow you to take it home and enjoy well, it some more. Thank you very much indeed. Right. Thank you. No problem. I was absolutely amazed at the wonderful craftsmanship that Gwilym has done on it. I'm just in awe of them. I'm so grateful to have it back. With another satisfied customer on her way, it's back to work for Jay. And there's final flourishes to add to the hundred-year-old rocker. Bosh, bish, bash, bam, bam, bam. Done. What do you think then, Gov? I reckon that is really, really smart. I love that little touch there. That just sets it off beautiful. Will's done proud he's on done, there. He's done a great job of that. Carved that it in, and beautiful. this little bit here as well. Has he turned it up? Well, he's, he's made it out of plaster. What? He's a skillful chap. He's just telling. I know, I know, I know. I have problems telling you. Yes. Ladies? <laughs> Ladies, right? Yeah, we're good. Here's his name. Yeah, and he's <laughs> straight, straight in straight there. Over. So it's done. What do you reckon? That's like a chair version of you. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Oh, yeah. yeah it is, actually. In fact, if you sat That's... on there, you'd be <laughs> camouflaged, <laughs> wouldn't you? Always camouflaged. Jokers. <laughs> you know I don't sit on a chair. No one sits on it onto the owner. 
Restoration complete, Nina's beloved chair is rocking up in Hove. Heavy. Where her two sons, Sebastian and Lucas, are taking charge of this family treasure. Both Will and Jay seemed very excited when they first got the chair in the repair shop, and they both seemed very confident. I mean, it was a bit scary for me to sort of leave it there and not, not know what was going to happen. The chair's really important to my mum. It's always been there, really. It's just kind of been something that we've always played with. It's always been kind of literally part of the furniture. You ready to see it? I'm ready to see it. Here we go. Wow, amazing. <laughs> Look at that lovely red piping on the side, which is why I wanted a bit of red to, to remember and remind me of grandma's and granddad's farm. And look at this, new lease of life. And look down here, they've put a new covering on there. That used to just be a hole and you could see right through. <sighs> precious, absolutely precious. I just wish they could be here and I could say thank you so much because they've, they've you know, they've done a really grand job with it. Brings Beautiful. back so many happy memories, Sorry, doesn't yeah. it? It's brilliant, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> it's priceless because obviously there's so much history that I remember and also because I'm living in a different country, every time I look at it, it does bring back memories of the farm, memories of my mum. You know, it is my part of my life. It is very, very important, and you know that's why we have it, and we'll keep it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Can you rock? Can you rock? Oh, oh, are we going back? It's really important to recreate those kind of moments that we've had photos in the chair, and it's so nice to see Hayden in the chair as well and recapture those memories. And hopefully, in many, many, many years, his children will have a photo in the chair as well. But first, seeking some essential first aid for a cherished possession, Ian McFadgett is hoping clockmaker Steve Fletcher can breathe new life into a century-old family heirloom. What have we got here, then? Here we have my grandfather's old cuckoo clock, which is in dire need of love and attention, I think. OK. Oh, wow. Oh, that's nice. It, it's a that beautiful is really clock. Nice. I mean, it, it is Victorian. And there's a bird. Is there a bird in there? Oh, absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, but it only goes cook. It only lost goes his, cook. It's it lost its It doesn't go, or it could be the other way around, I can't remember. Right, OK. It, it doesn't do the whole cuckoo. You said this was your father's. How long did your father it, it have It was my thing? grandfather's. Your grandfather's? My grandfather's. So it was my mother's cherished, right. cherished possession. You know, I mean, you replace furniture, you replace carpets. Yeah, yeah. Cars come and go. Yeah. Everything. But that's something that's, that's consistent. And uh, my mother died in 2000. Um, and I want to be able to hand that down to my son or my daughter, whoever wants it in my family. Yeah, um, okay. It's a family heirloom. So I would just love to get it fully restored back to how it should be. But the tone of the cuckoo when it works is gorgeous. Yeah. It's got it's a really, deep, really rich sound. deep, rich cuckoo oh, sound. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. beautiful. There's well, a bit of um, woodwork as well. There's a, the top of a leaf missing there and another top, top of a leaf, leaf missing yeah. there. So basically what you would like us to do with this is repair it, get it cuckooing again, mm -hmm. and then do something with the woodwork as well. Yeah. Cosmetically, I'm hoping that the whole thing can be actually made solid and look as it would have done, you know, when it was pride of place. Thank you. Thank All you right. very much indeed. Yes, nice to care. meet you. I look forward to, to seeing the finished result. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye now. Every time I think of that clock, I think of my, my mum and dad. Uh, my mother died of cancer in 2000. My father died seven years later. I've got a feeling mum and dad will be looking down, you know, seeing that I've... Sorry. <laughs> it's a lot of history in that. It is a lot of history. Um, and when we, get, when we get it up ticking and working and cuckooing... It will mean a lot to him. Yeah, it does it mean, mean so much to him. I'm on a quest. I've got to get it working. And I've got to get it in pride of place back in the home where, it, where I feel it belongs rightly, in the family. The exact origins of cuckoo clocks are shrouded in the mists of time. But the cuckoo clock as we know it today began being produced by the Uhrmacher of the Black Forest area of Germany from the mid-18th century. The cuckoo noise is made by a set of small bellows powered by the clock mechanism inside. The actual leather on the 
the bellow is, is rotten and sh absolutely shot away, so I've got, I've got to renew that completely. Some sellotape over there just to cover up the holes in the fabric there. And this one's uh, split open completely as well. Absolutely rotten. And here we are. So the cuckoo here looks intact, and that should work perfectly. So under its wings, we've got some stripes, which shows that there are some paintings and markings on the, on the bird. You see the, the beak opening. Usually the beak gets broken off. That's all intact. So the case actually is uh, a much bigger job than, than at first glance, actually. To help get the clock really singing, Steve is recruiting furniture restorer Will to work his magic on the carved case. Steve, I hear you have something for me. I do. It's a bit of a challenge, I'm afraid. It's missing the leaf there, there and there. So we need some new bits carved up for it. Lovely. I'll be sleeping in the workshop tonight. <laughs> right, I'll get on with that, though. OK, right. good, good. The repair shop has the tools and the talent to deal with any restoration challenge, no matter how big, how small, how old, or how new. First, there's the young lady you need to see. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. Up next for ceramics conservator Kirsten, a piece from the late 20th century belonging to David Ash. It's a lovely bowl. It's yeah, nice, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, really lovely. It looks very of yeah. its period and, yeah. and very much sort of back in fashion, I would say. Is it? Yeah. This is a, um, a bowl that my wife and I purchased uh, in a place in Devon called Chagford. Um, and I'm not sure who made this, but the initials are on the bottom. Right, yeah. Um, and we bought it in about 1973. Yeah. And we had it for a number of years before my eldest son pushed it against the wall um, oh, and did that to it. Oh. It, it. I mean, it really rather spoils, unless you've got a banana hanging over yeah. the edge or something, <laughs> it spoils the appearance yeah, of no, it. absolutely. It looks to me like uh, someone's had a go at restoring that. Could I be right? Yeah, yes, I had a go myself with some putty that looked like plasticine that you, oh, could, mix right. up. you could mix them up and try and match the colour, oh. which I did not a bad job on. OK. But the pro problem was that after I'd fired it at low temperature in the oven, yes. uh, it fell off. Yeah, if you're happy to leave this with me. Yeah, okay. yeah, I'll come back. All right, that's yeah, lovely. Thank Super. you very much. I'm going to clean that off just to make a really nice surface to fill onto. I can't throw this away because I, uh, I can remember what it felt like to buy it on the day that we bought it, and throwing it away would be like throwing that memory away. First, to fill the gaping gap in David's bowl, Kirsten is bringing out her secret weapon one you can pick up in any well-stocked garage. I'm actually just going to use a car body filler, which is what I use on, on ceramics like this. It's uh, like a polyester resin. It would be great on this because actually it cures very quickly. So it means I can pop it in there and be sanding it back within sort of 10, 15 minutes. It's quite difficult to get white fillers that are reversible and that also don't react with the paint. I think quite often practical people will actually often have a go themselves, um, but more often than not, they're actually just not very happy with the result that they achieve, so they end up bringing it to me anyway. So I'm just going to leave this to harden now and then come back to it and apply another, another coat. The rest of the repair shop team are bringing their skills to bear on the clock that hasn't cuckooed for 17 years. And Steve's eagle eye has spied another member of the animal kingdom hitching a ride inside. Look at this. That is a hare. This was the trademark of Philip Hass and son of St. Georgian in, yeah. in the Black Forest. OK. That's his, like, trademark. That's his, yeah. that's his brand. Yeah, the hare was the trademark of the company which means it's going to be uh, in the 1880s, uh, because this wasn't registered until 1883. Meanwhile, Will is beavering away at restoring the carvings on the case. This mulberry is quite soft, so it's quite easy to carve. If you're carving with the grain, then you're all right, but sometimes if you sort of catch it going across the grain of the wood, it can always catch and split out, and then you've got more work on your hands. You have to glue it back and start again. Um, so you always have to be mindful of the grain direction when you're chiselling.
So I'm just cutting off the old bellow material. I'm going to try and cut it back up to the paper. I'll then cut some new fabric. Jay, that blue I gave you, did it come with a blue clip, by the way? Actually, this is right, mate. I went to all that trouble. <laughs> Actually, I might need that. Yeah, you do need it now, didn't you? You have to make sure that everything is absolutely perfectly true. This work is critical to the going of a clock or the good going of a clock. Come for a little bit of a nosy. Yeah, we're doing really well on it, actually. Um, got the... Uh, oh, wow. The movement all up together. I'm just testing it on this test rig. Yeah. Strike coming up, and then we've got the cook, and then the do. <laughs> so, uh, do that again. Okay, I'm just going to cover these screw holes there because once it's in the case, they'll be covered. So, yeah. so you've got um. <laughs> wow. That's the uh, cook or the do, and then the other one. Wow. This is basically just like uh, blowing over the top of a, uh, of a bottle and making a noise. You hold on to that one. All right. Uh, lift with that little ring there and just drop it quickly. That's it, that's the one. We're not in timing now, are we? You go first it's in a fine. minute. fine, that's absolutely fine. You, let me have a listen, you go. Yeah. That's New Cook. New Cook, new, there you go. A New Cook. New Cook, old cook. That's All right. right. <laughs> The repair shop team is always on call to answer customer maydays. A new arrival has just dropped anchor in the workshop and has caught the eye of Jay. Hey, Will, I think this is one for you, mate. Have a look at this. And fellow furniture restorer, Will. Oh, yes. Very nice. That's mine. <laughs> I've, I've got my name all over it. <laughs> Hello. Hello there. The piece that's piqued their interest has been in Chrissy Thornhill's family for two centuries. It's come down the Thornhill family from my five times grandfather. Wow. Who was born in 1752. And he was a sea captain. He was a master mariner. Wow. Right. And he had 10 sons, about five of whom all became sailors as well. Really? So, there's <laughs> <laughs> wow. a lot of salty sea dogs in there. So it's been on its travels then. <clears throat> this has had a lot of. It's, it's certainly been all over the place and heaven knows where. I mean, you can sort of see <laughs> from the marks on the top. I mean, I think it would have been carried onto the ship because of the handles Handle. there. Yeah. You'd know. probably have to keep it in the centre of the ship just to sort of keep the balance, <laughs> the balance going. <laughs> so, Chrissy, what work needs doing to this thing? It has got rather a nasty crack right across the front. Also, the front drawer comes down into a desk, which, as you can see, it's in wow. need of a little bit of attention, <laughs> yeah. I think. And then um, the top? The top has got so much history. I mean, all those scratches and marks and everything that to sort of have all of those go, I think it would lose some of the history. So I don't know what you can do, but I'm sure you can do something that some of that <laughs> will, will still be there. It is really nice to keep a lot of this uh, old scratches and marks and everything else, rather than it looking too brand new. However, I do think that the front is pretty bleached out by the sun, I and it'd be quite nice to have it looking like mahogany rather than a bit of beach. That would be so, wonderful, you know. yes. Yeah. Uh, exactly. So, I would say, would you be happy with sort of, maybe sort of one of the mid-tone colours here, something around this kind of chestnutty brown That would be colour. smashing, yeah. yeah. Once this is repaired, where would this be? It's not going to be going on any more ships, is it? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> it's going back to, I live with my mum. Right. Uh, who I care for, and uh, it's been in our living room um, for the last 30 odd years. Okay. And one of the reasons I would really like it back to sort of full working order is because I write. Okay. And I would really love to sit at this desk and write, which wow. I've never been able to do. Yeah. And get all that inspiration from all these sea stories. Yeah. Maybe to write my bestseller. Well, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, take you very care much, now. Jay. Okay. Thanks, Thanks so a lot, much. Will. Thank you. Wow. 200 years of history. I know. Exciting. It is. As a writer, to be able to sit at something that has so much connection with the past and, and my family down through the generations, I'm sure it's just going to be so hugely inspirational. It's a shame these marks can't talk. And tell yeah. us where it has been and stuff. I'm really excited to get stuck well, here. Well, I'm going to leave this one with you. Um, to drag back to my bench. No, no, I've got work to no. do. See you later, mate. <laughs> <laughs>
Silver. With 200 years of seafaring history in his hands, Will needs to navigate a way of repairing the chest without losing any of its character. I'm going to start with a structural work, lose that crack completely. But there's a reason why there's a crack, and that's because with all the weight on the inside, with all the drawers and the extra pieces of wood, the constant pulling and pushing and pulling and pushing, the drawer has actually dropped down. You push it back in, and the inevitable is going to happen. It's going to split off on the front. Then it's just getting stuck into the polishing, which is, I think, the trickiest job because it's getting that colour right, the finish right, not wanting to remove any of the history. That's where the pressure's really on. Found something interesting, Jay. I'd taken out the drawer, turned it around, and you can see this actually fits in like yeah. a puzzle piece. Is that a reason why it wouldn't shut as well? That's the reason that it wouldn't shut, because on this side, you can see that it, it's nice and flush, yeah. but on this side, it's a bit on the ropey side and poking out. So I think if we we'll knock that back into place, yeah. the drawer should go back in. Over in Clock Corner, Steve has got his project mechanism running like, well, clockwork. He's now giving the battered old bird its first bath for over a hundred years. God blimey. Come out well, isn't it? Yeah. That's quite exciting, isn't it? Yeah, that is very exciting. And amazing, the amount of dirt. You've got oil on there, you've got glue on there, you've got yeah. polish on there, you've got everything. It's just wow. a build-up of layers and layers of stuff. So that's why I've had to use some acetone to clean it up. And that is amazing. Steve has one other last-minute fix to perform by repairing the bone hands of the clock. So I've cleaned up the, uh, the minute hand. You see, the, I haven't cleaned up the hour hand yet. You see, it's got a bit missing. Yeah. Well, I've got a piece to make for that. <laughs> Is that dinner? <laughs> What's that? So, so it's some bone um, that I got from the uh, pet shop. That's real. That's meat, isn't it? That's yeah, real it's, bone. it's real bone. So I'm going to cut a slither off of that, and uh, I'm going to carve it up and attach it to the hand. Then we've you got see, the. Your uh, talents are endless, aren't they? <laughs> Animal bone was a common material used by the Black Forest clockmakers for hands, numerals, and other decorative features. With the final touches completed, Ian is back to be reunited with his cherished timepiece. How are we doing, Ian? Hello there. You all right? Good afternoon, how are you? Very good, very good. Okay. Come and have a look. It's, OK. Uh at what we've done. Really looking forward to it. Can't wait. Oh. Oh. oh, wow. Yeah, that does look good, doesn't it? That's a treat. It really is. It looks gorgeous. Tell by the smile on your face. Yeah, no, I'm thrilled with it. I can see. That's good. You know, it looks beautiful. Now, the big test, the big test. is the sound. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's it. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Now I'm getting emotional. Bless you. The whole thing just makes me think of my mum. Yeah. Uh, which is pretty sentimental. Do you know what, Ian? This gives me the greatest of pleasure to do a clock up that means so much to somebody. And see your reaction it is just wonderful. It makes me feel really proud of what I do, actually. It was unfinished business. It was something that played on my conscience, the fact that the clock didn't work, and it's now resolved. So now that it's done, it's, it's quite a weight off of my shoulders because it's absolutely perfect. Thank you very much for repairing it and, and making it look good again. Meanwhile, Will is hoping for his own perfect restoration result. His challenge is repairing the 200-year-old captain's chest while preserving its characterful ocean-going patina. Now I've had a chance to look at the inside, there seems to be a lot more work than I first thought. For one, I'm actually worried, feeling the surface here. You feel that there's a bit of lipping there. 
where the wood has moved and warped and changed. So that's even more time, more work and everything else. With so much to do, Will's press gang Steve into action. We don't have a master key, unfortunately. To help unlock the chest's full potential by finding a replacement for the missing key. We're trying to find out the size of what it would be. Oh, there we go. That's absolutely bang on, the right size. So it'd be 50 mil. Thanks for that, Steve. Ah, oh, and we've done a bit more aging to the top of this chest, which is brilliant. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> With Steve on key duty, Will can get on with preparing the desk for active service by restoring the writing area. To replace the old green baize on the surface, well, actually, that's another thing I need to do. I actually have to flatten this off so it's all nice and smooth. One of the problems with laying leather is even a tiny bit of dirt will show up on the surface. It's really unforgiving. As more problems emerge, it's all hands on deck as the team try to get it ship shape in time for collection. That's great. Hold okay. oh, on, he's got all of us working on this. Well done. <laughs> yeah, I know. I found uh, an old key. Yeah. Um, the, the bit was uh, not quite long enough. The wards were in the right place. The um, wards are... The wards are the cutouts. Cutouts. Yeah. What I did, I uh, hard-soldered another bit on the end there to extend it. And uh, works perfectly. There you go, sir. Magician. Thanks no very much, Steve. All right. Thanks, mate. So, do you get back to work? No, no, no. You 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 oh, <laughs> you've got Steve working on the lot. You've got me doing... What are you actually doing? Oh, God. I'm having a cup of tea. Thanks, that was, Steve. Look, it's probably cold now. Just now you can see I'm checking the bottom of the leather to make sure that there's nothing on there. It's always tricky scoring the edge with the blade. One sneeze and you've got yourself a hole in the leather. And talking of holes to fix, Ceramicist Kirsten has finished the first stage of the repair to the damaged bowl. But filling the gap was the easy part. Now Kirsten must paint her repair to blend in seamlessly with the original artist's work. Obviously, the, uh, the painting is the kind of more difficult bit. I'm sort of getting my palette together because it's quite a lot of different colours sort of in here. So I'm just going to start getting rid of the white, blocking out the white. That's starting to um, blend in now. I used a, a matte glaze to get the background colour. And then um, you can see here there's some sort of glossy glaze as well. So I've gone over with the gloss in places to mimic that glossy finish. The eye just doesn't really notice it, I don't think. I just hope that David will be happy. So now I just leave it to dry and um, then it's ready for David to come and collect. Hi, David. Hi. How are you? I'm fine, how are good. you? Good, yeah, fine, thank you. I've done your bowl for you. Oh, good. So I hope you'll be happy. Oh, yeah. wow, that's amazing. I can't even see where it was. So where is it? Well, I was hoping you would say that. I can't see it at all. See if you can spot it. Um, no, I can't spot it. <laughs> I cannot spot it. Good view. Uh, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look and see. Yeah, I can see it, actually. It's it's just across there. It's well, fantastic, and it's very, very smooth as well. It's, it's beautiful. Don't rub it too hard. I've no. just, <laughs> just finished it. <laughs> no, that's it's fine. It's beautiful. It will be fine. That is a really impressive job. Terrific. So, hopefully, you won't have to drape a banana over that no, corner no, now. No, no, and I'll Sorry. have to keep it away from teenagers and walls. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah, absolutely. Thank it's you great. very much. It's no. just a fantastic job. Oh, well, thank you. We've had this bowl now for about 45 years, and it's been hidden in a cupboard for about 30 of those and subsequently repaired in four hours, which is fantastically impressive. Um, and it's just so nice to see it looking like this again. Oh, I would never have thrown it away. That's been the problem with it, because we have this attitude that either it gets fixed or it has to go because it's not being used. But you can't throw something like this away, I don't think. After restoring everything below deck on the sea captain's chest, 
will now faces his biggest challenge, cleaning and varnishing the exterior, restoring some of the original color, while retaining the telltale signs of the desk's 200-year-old history. Wow. So you can already see how dirty the surface is. There's something quite rewarding about doing this. I'm just uh, doing the finishing touches now. I'm so happy with the color. I think I was quite nervous um, about the color in the beginning. I mean, it looks like an even kind of colored top, so after buffing this up, yeah, it's going to be good to go. It'll make this look good for Chrissy, Yeah, lovely. 200 years, yeah? Yeah. Jay, have a look at this. Are you finished? Yes. Oh, wow. Nice. Nice, that is nice. Guys, you've got to have a look at this. Will's done some work. Jay, don't embarrass me. <laughs> no, it looks good, mate. It does look good. Wow. Looks amazing, <laughs> doesn't it? It's beautiful. You're going to open the drawers for us? Yeah, I'm just, I'm just Drum roll. soaking the atmosphere for a second. Let's <laughs> see the drawer. First of all, nice and smooth moon boot. Nice action. Nice, nice action there. Yeah. The splits along the bottom of the top drawer. What split? Exactly, what split. And then that. Oh. oh, wow. Oh, well done. Well nice done. bit of leather there. Fantastic. Mate, you've done good. You've done Fantastic. good. Fantastic. Jay Kirsten and painting conservator Lucia are suitably impressed. But Jay has one last finishing touch for its owner and budding author, Chrissy. So, if you guys are cool with this, I'd like to do a little bit of a whip round and we get Chrissy a pen <laughs> and a pad yeah. for writing a bestseller. Because oh. there's, there's bits in there, but it's empty. 200 miles away, Chrissy and her mother Margaret are eagerly awaiting the return of their family treasure from its latest voyage. Are you looking forward to it arriving, Mum? Of course I am. Mum and I have missed it enormously. I mean, it, it's really been like a big <laughs> hole in the room. For her to see it in its new state, I think it will be wonderful for her. Would you like to bring it in round the back? It's probably easiest if we take it in this way. Oh, Mum, look at that. Oh, how lovely. <gasps> Isn't it beautiful? Oh, and a fast. key in it. Yeah. Colour is super, and they've just kept so much of everything. That crack at the front, I mean, you just, you can't spot it at all. I mean, it's like magic. Oh, yes, and it's lovely green. Isn't it? Oh, it's how lovely. Green. Well, I'm looking forward to sitting and writing on that. You'll be inspired. Are you pleased? Oh, I'm delighted, my love. Yeah. Oh, that's it. What's that? Oh. A pen. Oh. A notebook. To Chrissy, something to inspire your writing. With love, the repair shop. Oh, Isn't that oh, wonderful? Oh, that's so kind. This is where I'm going to write my bestseller, and I probably start it on the pages of this wonderful book. It's absolutely wonderful to have the chest back and seeing it looking the way that it does. Oh, it's just tremendous. It really is a showpiece. My husband would have thought. You know, how wonderful. And to see it restored to the time when his ancestor first had it, he'd be very pleased. How are we doing? You all right? All right, thank you. But first through the repair shop doors today, Andrew Simpkins has a family heirloom, which needs the prowess of ceramicist Kirsten Ramsey. Wow. A teapot, very big teapot. OK. But you'll notice something about the lid. It's followed the female line, so it's gone from grand, great grandmother, grandmother, mother, sister, daughter. Goodness. That's um, so sadly, um, our daughter died two months, two, two months ago. So it passes to our granddaughter. Um, I have to stop there. We were going to go on a family canal holiday eight months ago. But sadly, Alice fell ill a week before then. After a number of rounds of, of chemotherapy, um, it, it wasn't working. Um, so sadly, she passed away two months ago. Alice was, was 28. What's that behind there? Oh, a tomato, look at that. Lily 
will never truly know her mother in a personal sense. But I thought that the teapot could act as a, as a link. I think what we've discovered in the last two months is that um, you know, family is, is in, increasingly, incredibly important. And um, the inanimate object of the teapot in all its trickly color um, it does take on an added significance. Perhaps other people might find it quite Victorian gaudy, but <laughs> it, I think it, um, it, it's of its time and place. I quite like that this sort of naivety to it, <laughs> yes, really, yes, which I think yes. is quite charming, Absolutely. actually. On the teapot itself, there are some surface cracks, uh, which would be nice if some of those could be repaired. Some of them um, I, I like because they place them in time and space. You know, it's 130-odd years old. Yeah. But the main thing is, on the lid, it should have oh, yeah. a, a tiny teapot on top of finial here, right. which acts as the handle. Thank, thank you for you. bringing it thank in. You. No, thank, thank you. you. It means a lot. That. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Wow. It obviously means so much to, to him. Losing yeah. his daughter and then passing it down to the granddaughter. It's to keep that kind of family history going. Yeah. It's, it's just so important with what we do here, but this piece in particular yeah. just brings it all home. God, blimey. There is every pressure, because this is I'm, such a... I'm feeling it. <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling it yeah, as well. No, I am. I think my first priority is to actually sort this crack out here that goes down the side, because at the moment... Oh, you can hear that there. It's extremely vulnerable. If this were to be put down sort of rather hard on a table, it could just sort of crack in, into two. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually give it a little clean, then get some consolidant in there. Andrew's teapot is a classic example of 19th century English bargeware, so called because it was popular with the canal workers who passed through Burton and Trent, where most bargeware was made. The teapots were often given as gifts on important occasions, and many had miniature versions of the teapot molded onto their lids. I'm going to have to do some research and see if I can find out exactly how the teapot should look. With the rare antique or common keepsake, the repair shop team restores those family heirlooms with sentimental value beyond compare. How are we doing? Hi. Good to meet you. Likewise. Hi there. Hi. I'm Will. Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Next, a job for Will. Dave Croft has a family treasure he would like to hand down to future generations in one piece. My grandfather was a cabinet maker, right. and he made this as a wedding present for my grandmother and that would have been in about 1918. It's made of little bits of odd cut, off cuts of wood. I think where my grandfather was working, they were building an oak staircase and he kept all the little off cuts of wood. And it's made, as you can see, all these tiny blocks yeah. of wood, triangles and squares. Yeah. All glued together. Thrifty and very romantic. I usually do that for my girlfriend for Valentine's and birthday, carve up a love heart or something. <laughs> Not so expensive, but she <laughs> knows, it goes a long way. But I, I think it's such a romantic story as well. What's in this bag then? You've got all of the. I've got everything, yeah. You've got all the bits. I, I checked all the blocks are there. It's always nice when someone turns up with a plastic bag full of bits and pieces. <laughs> it makes yeah. the job a lot easier. Yeah. And how long has it been in the loft in your house? Oh, 25, 30 years at least. As long as that? Yeah. yeah. So this is the one piece of furniture that he made, and it's the only piece I've got, which was... So that's important. Yeah. I do distinctly remember it in my in the front room of my, parent, my grandparents' house. I can see it in my mind now, where it was in the corner of the room. And um, it's a nice piece of furniture. I'd like to have it in the lounge, but obviously, with the bottom falling out and no, yeah. only three legs, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it won't stand up very well. That wasn't going to work. Right. Thanks, Thanks. Cheers. All right. Bye -bye. In a way, I'm quite nervous. The piece is, is unique to my grandfather made it. Equally, it couldn't stay like it is. It's, it needs to be repaired. There's so many loose pieces, and I'm just trying to work out what goes where. Pretty much like a jigsaw puzzle at the moment. Once I've done that, then I can glue it all together. 
but this is a jigsaw with well over a hundred pieces and no picture on the front of the box. This is actually proving to be pretty tricky. I thought that every single block would be exactly the same measurement. However, close inspection, there are a few slightly smaller pieces. It sort of goes to show the fact that this is such a bespoke piece, not everything is exactly the same, uh, which is quite nice, but quite frustrating when you try to piece it back together. Ceramicist Kirsten has her own puzzle to solve. How to replace the missing tiny teapot on the lid of the bargeware teapot when she has absolutely no idea what it looked like. So she turns to a 21st century solution to a 19th century conundrum. The ones that look like Andrews all seem to have this decorative finish, so I think I'm going to have a go at making one. It's not actually unusual to have to make up a missing section on a piece of ceramic or porcelain. Um, I've never made a miniature teapot before. Hello. Hi, Jay. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. What's what are you doing? <laughs> Making a mushroom. You're making a mushroom? <laughs> Remember, it's got to be a teapot, not oh, mushroom. Yeah. <laughs> can I touch that? Yeah, of course you can, yeah. Oh. Doing this, I can get it absolutely exactly how I want it, then stick it on there and then paint it. That's it. Which will be the fun part, obviously, with this sort of treacly glaze. Well, the fun part's this, isn't it? Because this is quite therapeutic. Make it, you're going to make a teapot shape into yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. All right, well done. I'll it's do not this. a job for grown-ups, really, is it? It is a job for grown-ups. <laughs> we all need to be children again, that's what we need to do. So you make a ball. Yeah. And then... Oh, my one's gone a bit dirty already. Do, what'd you do with this, then? Just press it like that. You just use it for kind of shaping and, yeah, if you kind of look down on it as well from the other. dodgy. Yeah. Well, it's quite difficult, actually, to do. <laughs> That's it, Jay. Yeah, what? That's it, Jay. You've got a perfect... Uh, no, I haven't got that. I haven't got it on yet. the front of your mushroom, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> <Get on. laughs> what? Watch this now. Watch. <laughs> Don't laugh, mate. I don't see you making one. There you go. It's my teapot. It's the one. Look it's lovely. It looks, it, like an, it looks like an oil can, actually, That's doesn't actually, it? Doesn't it? <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect okay. teapot. Come back in a couple of hours <laughs> and we'll compare. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually already stuck this on. This is quite a sort of hard drying putty to make the base to receive the baby teapot. I'm just going to sort of smooth that and blend that in using some filler. So it just looks like it's part of one piece rather than sort of blobbed on the top there. Hello. Hi, Hello. good day. How are we doing? You all right? Yeah, I'm fine yourself. I'm very good, actually. The next arrivals in need of some repair shop TLC are James and Lisa Coetzi, with a serious challenge for painting conservator Lucia. <gasps> ooh, ooh, ooh. This is beautiful, and I say ooh for a couple of reasons. One, because it's beautiful, and two, because it's so badly damaged. Uh, it's got massive tears in it. We took it off the wall because we were redecorating and it was up against the desk in James's study and the children were playing hide and seek behind the desk and you can see they stuck pencils through and uh, yeah, we, we weren't very happy. They did get, uh, well, they got shouted off. at a lot. This damage is quite considerable. Who is the artist? It's my grandmother's uncle, right. Fred Appleyard, right. an English artist. I know that name who um, was born in Middlesbrough. He is a very well-known artist, and I know that there is a painting of his at the Tate, and he did a lot of work at the Royal Academy. He did have exhibitions there. How much is that worth, then? Do you know? No idea. I mean, certainly in the tens of thousands, I would think. It's very is collectible, it? yeah, and people will buy it regardless of the damage because they would expect to get it restored. But there's a lot of work to be done, and these tears are so extensive, I'm not sure that they will be successfully repaired. They might just sink in on themselves. OK. But we'll have a try at repairing them locally. 
because one of the important things about conservation is to keep it in as original condition as possible. So, thanks a lot. Thank you. Leave yeah. it with us and we'll get back Thank to you. you. Wow, uh, I, I can't, well, two things. I can't believe it's worth the amount that it's, she thinks it might be worth. And also, how the hell is she going to repair it anyway? <laughs> it looks terrible. Yeah, I agree. The damage looks quite extensive when you look at it in detail. Actually, I've forgotten how bad it was until we got it out of the roof and had a, yeah. another look. I'm scared to touch it. That's, like, that's a lot of money yeah, there. That's a lot of money, but it is massively collectible. So this artist is a good artist, then? Very good artist. Because you smiled. It was unbelievable. I like know, a Cheshire cat. It's so, so great to have a, a professional artist's work in front of me. It's just wonderful. Let's get you working on it, then, eh? Thank you. You so take it over to your desk. I'll take that. I'm not touching it at all. OK. All right? Yeah. Here we go. Lucia will need to draw on her many years of experience to fix this perforated painting. But first, a job that requires another of the team's specialist skills. Will? Can you come and have a look at the frame, please, for me? Thank you. How's it going? Uh, well, we've got the problem of the painting has been nailed into the frame. Right. And you can see that there's no room between the painting and the edge of the frame. Look how tight it is. You can't even mm. get this um, spatula down the edge. It's no. absolutely jammed into the frame. Yeah. Jammed in. The window of the frame needs yeah. to be okay. opened up. So it okay. needs that the edge that the painting is sitting on yeah. needs to be wide. How many mil do you think? N not much. A couple of mils each side. Three mil all round. Three mil all round should, should do it. Do you mind popping better. the painting out so I can have a look? OK, so I think we just have to be very careful about taking the nails out because I don't want to gouge the um, original. Yeah, sure, original. Canvas. Canvas, yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's see if we can... The only thing we have to resist is any pressure on the canvas. Yeah, of course. We shouldn't be anywhere near that. I slip that underneath. Mm, oh, right. that's an easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Most right. excellent, yeah. Run. Perfect. <sighs> oh. I know it's exhausting, isn't it? And it's nerve-wracking. <sighs> Perfect. OK, so right. this should, if all the nails are out, come out. Yes. Ta-da! Three mil is going to come to about... Do you know what? About... Can you do it bigger? Do it... Um... Four mil? Yeah. Thank you very much. Cool. I'll leave those pincers there. OK. Across the workshop, Kirsten is about to begin painting her own tour de force, the tiny teapot she has hand-sculpted to go on top of its larger sibling. I'll build up the layers as I go along. And I'm going to leave these little areas here because they're sort of white anyway. I'll decorate those probably towards the end. You right? Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah, I'm just kind of finishing off here, really. Just, Where's um... the... Oh, there's a little... Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Is that strong enough to be lifted yeah. and put yeah, one? Because I know you don't I mean, like me touching yeah, anything on your desk. I mean, I would always desk. hold underneath anything yeah. like that, but, um, yeah, that can just go on there like that now. Now complete with its brand-new diminutive companion, this very special heirloom is ready to be reunited with Andrew and its next custodian, his granddaughter, 16-month-old Lily. Lily will never truly know her mother, but I thought that the teapot could act as some sort of reminder to help her understand her mother, but also the lineage back through to her great, great, great grandmother and grandfather. What a great way to relate a story to a, a young child, actually, you know, through an object like that. If it acts as a, a vehicle, a means to explain that family history and to bring that history alive, then it'll have achieved an enormous amount for us. Hello, Ange. Oh, Jay, nice to see you again. How are we doing? Oh, Kirsten, nice to see you again. Lovely to see you, Can Andrew. I introduce you to our family? Please do. Nick, our son-in-law. Hi, Nick. nice Lovely to meet to you. you. Jane, my wife. Hello, Jane. Hello, nice to meet you. And not forgetting Lily, our granddaughter. Hello, Lily. <laughs> you ready for this one? Oh, uh, yeah, I am. Yes, I won't keep you in suspense. <laughs> Exciting. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> That's incredible. Yeah. I love the piece on the yeah. top, the little finial. 
you've totally brought it back to life. So thank you very much. Oh, I'm so pleased. <laughs> and I hope that in years to come, Lily will be chuffed as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be yours one day, Lily. Oh. Oh. Wow. You've transformed it. Thank you very much. That's right. Really. Bye. Oh, clever. <laughs> to have it to restore to its former glory is, is something very special. Oh, I'm Thank you. delighted that yeah. I could do it for you. I hope that Alice is looking down on us and um, appreciating what we've done. So thank you. Oh, I do hope so. <laughs> yeah. I'm so grateful that you've kept this in our family in such wonderful condition. Well, it's, it's been a pleasure for me to, to work on it. So, yeah. It's an immaculate transformation. I'm so impressed with it. And it's great that Lily's going to have an heirloom that's in pristine condition. And hopefully she can pass on to her daughter one day. It's now complete. And, that, and that's uh, very special. Lucia is working on another valuable heirloom a painting perforated with pencils by the owner's children. I am fixing the paint along the edges of the canvas that is torn because the paint is all very broken in those areas. And if I don't fix it or help keep it in place while I'm repairing the tears, we'll lose more of the original paint. So it's my job as a conservator to maintain as much of the original material as is physically possible. Having made sure no new damage can occur, Lucia can start work on knitting back together the painting's gaping wounds. So what I'm going to do now is turn it over and start working on the canvas at the back, the edges of the tears, and using moisture or introducing moisture with blotting paper. A lot of the canvas fibres have been stretched and distorted by the damage, so they're longer and thinner than they were. And this moisture treatment can shrink them back to a certain extent. If they're too long, I'll just have to trim the edges, but for the most part, they should all meet up again. Hello, my Mona Lisa. How Hello, are we doing? my darling. Hold on a minute. Okay, these are the tears. Yeah, or was the tears. What were the tears, yeah. yeah. Well, I've, I've, I've done the tear repair, yeah. more or less. These are the little holes that were the pencil holes. Yeah. And I put um, nylon gossamer patches on them. I'm really impressed with what you've done here. It's like, yeah, well, it's this, fixed. Yeah, this, er this area isn't finished yet because it's still drying, but you can see that it's a bit more damaged. It's a bigger tear. Right. And I've got to do a bit more work to bring the fibres together, the, the actual yeah. strands of the weave. Yeah. But you can see it's not quite meeting. So yeah. say like that one doesn't form because the fibres are not... What, what can you do? Would you then put so, the tissue on there yes. or something? Well, I will make a piece that will go on top like that. Right. And it will seal it. Yeah. And then I'll work from the front and fill it. So how long have you been re restoring paintings and stuff like that? A long time. A long time? 20-odd 20, 20 years. 20 yeah, a long years? time, yeah, yeah. It's a passion. It's a vocation. Right. It takes years of practice once, once you've been trained. So working on a piece like this, how, how does it make you feel? Because this is like quite an expensive piece. Yeah. Or you probably worked on expensive stuff before. Yeah, I, I work on quite a few valuable so, works of art, yeah. yeah. I'm not sort of scared of the value of a painting at no. all. Everybody gets treated the same. Yeah. You have to absolutely do the best for the object, the artist's integrity, keep my intervention to a minimum. With the structure of the canvas repaired, Lucia can now turn her attention to the front and preparing it for the final stage, repainting. I have to fill the losses as a result of the tears. I'm using an acrylic filler for this. So I apply the fill and try and keep it very localised. The fill material is quite soft, it needs to be, but it also needs to have a bit of plasticity to it. So I can very gently push in the fill into the canvas and then that will go off and then I have to rub it down. And when I say rub it down, it's a very gentle process because we're dealing with a very thin paint there. And I'm actually using a dental tool. And this piece of equipment I've actually had for a few decades and I've kept it because it's the best tool I've found to do the filling. It's a bit of a delicate process and takes quite a bit of time and patience to do. Time and patience are also being tested at Will's bench, 
He's been piecing together the cabinet made of hundreds of wood offcuts. But every section secured, Will finds another making a bid for freedom. So as you can see, this side especially is uh, all over the place. I mean, I, I think the fact that it's been possibly near a radiator or something or facing a window so you've got the heat from the sun has meant that the wood has shrunk, the glue, to, glue has dried and uh, the pieces are pretty loose. There is that temptation to take every single piece out and glue every single piece back in, but I think there's probably a high risk of something going wrong, me misplacing the pieces or not putting them back in the right order. So I think the safest thing to do would be to feed some wood glue back in there so when it dries, it dries flat and solid. With so much work to do, Will calls in reinforcements for the final touches before owner Dave returns to pick it up. When it's time to clean the windows, you know it's the final furlong. It looks special. Cool. Happy? Like a hippo. Good. Wrap him up. Hello, Dave. How we doing? Doing. You all right? Yeah. Who have we got here then? This is Abigail. Abigail. Hi, Abigail. Nice to meet you. All right. So obviously you've come along for your cabinet. Yeah. Is that all right? Do you like the colour blue? <laughs> I'm on a jacket. <laughs> ready for this one? Be really careful when you <laughs> burn it off because that could be disastrous. OK. okay. Nice and slow. Ooh. Wow, oh. that looks good. <laughs> wow, that looks great. Wow. Superb. So, what do you think? Yeah, it's amazing. So much better than it was when it came. <laughs> I have had a bit of an interesting time with this cabinet, <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Thankfully, it's all together now. Well. Uh, I do think that it was, might be near to a radiator or a window or something where it's had heat, hot yeah. and cold, because the wood has definitely shrunk and warped. So getting the pieces back in the bottom was slightly tricky. Yeah. Apart from all that. Apart from all that, yeah. On a lighter note, <laughs> yeah. it makes it sound really bad. No, it really was a pleasure to work on this, knowing that the last person to work on it was your grandfather. Where's it going to go now? Then? Where, where are you going um, to put it? In the lounge, and nowhere near a, nowhere near a radiator. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah, of course. No, absolutely brilliant. I'm really pleased. Thank you very much indeed. I'm feeling very happy about the restored cabinet. It looks really good. It's a family heirloom now. It reminds me of my grandfather and my grandmother, actually. So it's a, it's a piece of them back with us. Come on in. Let's go and do some more. Back in the workshop, Lucia has reached a crucial stage in the restoration of the painting by English artist Fred Appleyard, painting over the repairs to match the original artwork. So I have to do a little bit of colour matching directly on top of the filling. And when I've finished, it should all be virtually invisible. Will, do you have the frame? Pretty as a picture as ever. <laughs> <laughs> should we try it? See try that it. it should fit in there very well. Perfect. Perfect. Thumbs up. Thank you. Two thumbs, yeah. Oh, all you're right. Good man. Oh, right. Jay, yeah. Do you want to have a look? It's fitted into the frame. <laughs> I'm not bothered about the frame. Look what you've done. <laughs> I know. It's, it's not bad. Not bad. You've done a brilliant job. Thank you, Jay. I think it's flawless what you've done. Oh, you are kind. No, you, you have. Thanks very right, much. Here we go. I'll take me out of two. Oh, I see right. that head of yours. It's <laughs> lovely. <laughs> there you go. Brought a smile to your face. <laughs> I think when Lisa and James see the painting, they'll be very happy to have it hanging back on the wall. And that certainly is the best place to put a painting. Back on the wall, enjoy it. I think they'll be very pleased to see it all back in one piece. 70 miles away, James and Lisa are about to be reunited with their work of art, ready to take pride of place on their wall. I'm hoping that it's, it's actually going to look better than we've ever seen it. She did say it would be a big challenge to repair yeah. the rips, though. Yeah, I can't believe it, it can be repaired. That is amazing. Look at that. Because you can't see any of the holes. All the there rips. There over here. So there were rips there and the holes were mostly there, there weren't there? Yeah. Look you at You can that. hardly make yeah, them out. You, could, you would never, ever know. Well, we won't be putting them back in the loft. No, that's true. <laughs> 
totally exceeded my expectations. I didn't think it would ever look as good as it does. To have an ancestor of mine produce that painting is a great privilege to me, really. And it's just great to have an heirloom back in a pristine condition. The children are going to have to keep a safe distance away. They can just look at it, no touching. Lovely to have the painting back in the family, back on the wall. Yeah, it, it, it's where it should be. Do you wear that? <laughs> Hello. You all right? Good morning, gents. Good morning. But first, Jay and Dom are poised with bells on for latest arrival in Elliot. What is it? What I have brought for your delight is an old museum sign. I come from a little fishing village in Cornwall called Polperro, which is the home of a smuggling and fishing museum. This sign, we think, dates back maybe 60, 70 years to when the museum first came into being. It was recently discovered in an antique shop in Wales by a village resident. In Wales, all the way up. In Wales, yeah. exactly. Bizarre. <laughs> but uh, we've used some of our uh, community funding in our uh, little village to bring it back to where it belongs. But as you can see, it's a little bit tired, needs a little bit of tender loving care. <laughs> but uh, it's a bit of living history, and we would love you to work your magic and uh, it go back to use outside our beautiful Harborside Museum. It's good, it looks good. It's a beautiful thing. So this would have all been hand-painted. Yes, so yes, it was. So what's the story behind the bells, then? Why has it got um, bells over it? The man who created the museum many right. decades ago, he used to have this sign standing on a metal pole. Now, luckily, in the museum itself, we yeah. have a postcard, which I've brought with you. Right. If you look at that postcard, you can see that's the original museum owner. Oh. The sign is on a metal pole that's got a caster at the bottom of it. Right. And he used to wheel it around the harbour making the, the bells jingle uh, as a, a mobile billboard, in effect. Oh, no, that's going to be a good one. It's going to look great. It needs a little bit of TLC, but what would you like us to do? In essence, yeah. we want you to future-proof it and allow it to provide decades more service to uh, our little village community. Brilliant. Well, thanks a lot. Cheers, guys. Thanks a lot. Nice to meet you. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thank you. Wow. We were very lucky that one of our residents stumbled across the sign. So I think there's great excitement in our community and uh, we're just really looking forward to seeing uh, what the boys can work with their magic. This one's going to be a busy one, eh? It's a big one. Yeah? Caught it just in time. I think the sea air's not been uh, very kind to it. Some of the small details, these little rings are on a blur, about to break through just to... Yeah, we do need to get the bells off, cos yes. in this picture, they look quite shiny, they these do. bells. They yeah. look like brass or something. Yeah. They're definitely shinier than this, anyway. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the best plan of attack for this particular sign is um, going to be we just need to strip it down, get all the individual components off, get all the old flaky, rusty paint off. This is a job that will test all of Dom's restoration skills, from metalwork to sign writing. I'm just tracing over the remains of the letters, trying to save as much information as we can from the existing sign. Some of the letters are almost illegible now. There's so much paint and the detail that's gone. So uh, I'm just picking out the elements that I can that are still there. I can tell that uh, now on closer inspection that the signs, this has all been, all been painted by hand originally. Unfortunately, the paint on this part of the sign is so far gone, we're going to have to just save what we can with the tracing and just sand it off and start again. It's, it's a shame, but it's, it's essential. The repair shop team rescue all manner of objects from the ravages of time, from reviving pieces of history for whole communities to repairing tiny yet treasured reminders of family days gone by. Pleased to meet you. Likewise. I'm what Liam. You, I'm Jay. What have you got here? Uh, I've got a little um, clockwork car. A clockwork car? Yeah. I'll tell you, don't even talk no more. You've got to go and see Steve. He's the man for clockwork. Cool, thanks so much. Right. Cheers. Steve. Hi, Liam. Next to arrive with a childhood treasure in need of a full service is Liam Bruce. So, uh, Ooh. But it's missing the key. Right. And it's missing the, the cable which connects the car to the steam wheel. Tell me about the history of this. Well, I got it off uh, a neighbour when I was about eight years old. Uh, I believe her brother brought it back when he was serving in the forces. Oh, right. Germany. OK, yes. Um, but that's, that's all I know about it. This was the first sort of remote control car, but not that remote, because not that you're remote. still attached you still to it. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is obviously where the, the cable went in. Yeah, I think you can, yeah, you can see it on the, on the box. 
And here you've got the three steel wheels. Yeah. And you've got a, a rubber wheel. That's the drive wheel okay. there. And then obviously the steering wheel. Yeah. Have you tried winding it up at all? No, I've never wanted to do it, just in case... It all goes whiz bang. Yeah. <laughs> I had bits all over the place. I've got a hopeful feeling that the clockwork part of it might be all right. Just got to find a key, and then, then we've got to find some way of, of making a, uh, a flexible cord that yeah. goes down to that yeah. so you can steer it. It'd be amazing to see it doing what it's supposed to do. OK, we'll leave it with us and, um, yeah, fingers crossed. OK, lovely. Right, Thanks very much. thank you very thank you. much. It'd be fantastic to have it fixed and walking again to show my children. Really excited to just come back and hopefully see it running. Uh, it'll be the first time I've ever seen it run anyway. Now I have to find a key for it. That's a perfect fit. Right, let's see if it works. That's working really well. But getting the car going is just the first job. Steve also needs to get it to steer. What I'm going to do is make up a cable that will go through this hole here, and when that's turned, that's going to actually turn this wheel here. So next for Steve, find out what cable options the repair shop has to offer. Now, don't be looking at Kirsten's stuff now. She's got all ceramic stuff. Yeah. You must have something, Steve. So I've got this net curtain wire, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip the, the plastic from that and, and make up the two ends for that. With his improvised steering solution, Steve's on the home straight. But when it comes to the decades-old miniature steering wheel, he may be back to the starting line. Under an eyeglass, I can see that um, it's made out of uh, zinc-based alloy, and it's absolutely cracking up all over the place. It's crazed all over, and, and I think, really, this is, uh, is not going to, to work. Undergoing his own MOT, Dom has stripped down the Smuggler's Museum sign from the Cornish fishing village. To help get it back up to scratch, he's reeling in some extra repair shop expertise. Steve, do you have a minute? Yeah. I just wanted to talk to you about the bells, really, uh, hoping you can help us, if that's all right. Yeah, it's no problem. small little bits. Uh, this one, the top of it's torn through. Torn, see the damage there? The brass it's all is, twisted round, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's, it's actually snapped. Hoping you can maybe re braise the brass. We're going to clean up the whole lot. I'd love to be able to clean them. In the original postcard we had, it, uh, they were they were shiny. Have you got a special potion potion for I that? I have, yeah, clock cleaning potion. Brilliant. <laughs> See you in a moment. Thanks, Steve. While Steve works on the bells, Jay's going to provide the whistles. In this case, researching how to replace two flamboyant tassels that used to hang from the sign. Was the letters gone? Gone. Whoa. Yeah, gone. Unfortunately, we had to we had to sand it all off. What? You got rid of the letters? We did, but we had to. But, um, yeah. How are you going to know where to put the letters on there? This is our our reference now to cool. putting it back on. So how many coats of this you've got to do? This is first coat. It will have another coat, just on the white. Yeah, it's going to look really good. I've been searching for tassels, but what I found is that I'm probably able to make my own. Oh, so really? Because those That's ones fantastic. in the picture they looked about that big. They were most yeah, fantastic. So I'm going to give it a go. So yeah. In the red and yellow. Yeah, red and yellow. Brilliant. It's got to be done, isn't it? Anyway, Jay, I've got to get on. The paint's going to dry. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. Let me Sorry. get on with that tassels as Thank well. Thank you. It's all about the tassels. Never made a tassel before in my entire life, but it's the first time for everything. I've looked online to figure this out, and a little nine-year-old has taught me how to make a tassel. So who said an old dog can't be taught new tricks, eh? I'm going to go on with a China graph pencil uh, and just and redraw in any little bits that aren't quite there because I just want it to be as accurate as it can be to what it used to be. Trick is to keep on weaving to give the tassel some volume. And I've only got 70 metres on here, 70 metres on there. So 140 all together, and hopefully that will give me the body. The paints I'm using for this are specific sign writing paints. They're very thick paints. So we, we've only really got one chance at this. Once it's on, it's on.
the main focus in here is going to be areas like this where it's the, the fin parts at the very end of the twirls where they're just where the, the corrosion and the rust has just eaten through. We'll just be replacing that metal and just making it solid again. Very good, thank you. Next to drop by the workshop is George, along with concerned owner Sally Aspinall. George has seen better days, so it's up to the repair shop emergency bear care team, Julie and Amanda, to give him a new lease of life. Hello, George. George is my teddy. Right. But I'm the youngest of six daughters. Right. And he's basically been passed down, and I'm the last in the line. One day I'd like to be able to pass him on. And he's, he's such a super thing, and yeah. he's always been there. Yeah. You know, he's always there, so... So you just want him to be there some more? Yes, then. that's right. Do you know anything about him, sort of, history-wise? Not really. I think my eldest sister was born in 1941. Yeah. OK, so your date-wise, around 1940s, is absolutely right. Um, he's Irish. Did you know Irish. He was made in Ireland. Oh, yes. Did you know that? I didn't know that. Ah, <laughs> we're the expert. That's true. We're the, That's yeah. true. Yeah, you're the expert. You know about teddy okay. bears. The significant thing that we kind of see, if you like, the ears are very high on on the corner of the head here, right. yes. very flat, and the, the sort of more triangular shaped head. Um, it's another thing that's very significant um, for the Irish teddy bear. I'm really surprised. <laughs> yeah. Irish oh, yeah. Teddy, yeah. Well, during the war, because um, we couldn't trade with Germany, who made an awful lot of teddy bears, a lot of Irish teddies came over oh. to the UK. Which would explain yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, he's got no pads on his feet. I've tried as a child to repair his paws. Oh, you stitched this up? Yeah, yeah look, terrible. Okay. <laughs> By stitching. You can see remnants of what was originally there, so we will match mm -hmm. as best yeah. we can there. And the fact that you've turned his paws over, you have actually saved all the fabric oh, wow. oh, well that was done. required. <laughs> so that's really good. I mean, he is quite bare in places, but I think that adds the attraction of him. Because you like he's him been, like that. He's been played with. I remember when I was younger that he had not a squeak, but he had a growl. I can remember it working. Right. And now it doesn't work. And what did the growl sound like? What... It was quite a deep sounding. It's not like a modern day squeak. It was right. a deep, like a. Oh, not like that. That's again, okay. and again. Yeah. That was lovely. So I'd like him to have his growl back yeah. and I yeah. and basically rectify some of the work that I did when I was younger. <laughs> oh, bless but... you. If you leave it with us, we'll get him growling yes. again. Yes. And um, looking back, Absolutely. looking back to how he should be looking. But do look after him, won't yeah, you? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 No, that's lovely. Yeah. Thank, you so Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. It's a pleasure to do him Thank for you. Thank you. I look forward to seeing him when he's done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Bye then. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Um, I'm feeling apprehensive already, very much leaving him in there, but having repaired it would be absolutely fantastic to bring him back to life and particularly for him to get his growl back, which I've missed over the years. This is one of the kinds of repairs and restorations that we get very excited about. Right. He's obviously very valuable to his owners and very precious. Definitely. We need to stabilise what's going wrong with him already yeah. and make sure it doesn't deteriorate any further. OK. We need to get this over to your bench, then. Yeah. Or get George, not this. It's George. George. George, the Irish teddy bear. Yes. There we go. All right? <laughs> Thank you. So gently ease the body open. OK, and then I'm going to gently remove... I think I'm going to need some pliers. It's quite t tight in there. We can see now he's got wood wool in his tummy. This filling called wood wool is very often what people think is straw, and they say, I've got a straw-filled teddy bear. They can hear it crunching under their fingers when they squeeze it, but it is actually wood fibre. Sorry, this is just taking a little longer, because George doesn't want to... He doesn't want to give up his growler. This might get a bit gruesome, actually. There you go. And that explains why it's not working. You can see that it's collapsed in there. Inside the centre of the reed, the weight should move up and down freely inside this cardboard tube as you turn it, and obviously it doesn't anymore. While George starts his treatment, the Smuggler's Museum sign is almost ready to be discharged home to Polpero in Cornwall. 
Now, the next step of the process is to uh, just attach all the bells. I heard the bells. Ah, they look amazing. Brilliant. They're all lacquered. So that should protect uh, them from the weather. Absolutely, yeah. That's yeah. really good. OK. <laughs> You're having a party without me. Hey? Yeah. Oh, ah. that's what we're... I have my missing piece shirt. of the puzzle. I know I'm yeah. tall, but come on, don't take the mic. Yeah. Can I'll I get up there? Hang on, wait, wait. What, you got a ladder? No, 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 no. Oh, we have the technology. There with oh. me. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Okay. Might take a couple of days, lads. Might take a couple of days. I said, keep it still, lad. <laughs> I must say, this is the piece de la resistance. Look here. It's got a bit more presence than oh, when it arrived, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> if that doesn't draw your attention, Imagine I don't that. think anything yeah. will. Look at that, and it even turns. You can even do that and just keep the wheels where it is. Was that intentional? Yeah. OK. <laughs> 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 when the tour bus goes past, yeah, is yeah, it? Yeah. Look, look, keep on looking for the slow readers, yeah? Is that what that's for? <laughs> now back to its eye and ear-catching best, the sign is ready to be returned to Ian and back into service on the narrow streets of Polpero. There's great excitement back in Polpero. I think it's going to be uh, intriguing to see whether the team have uh, managed to work some magic on what was a pretty dilapidated old piece of ironwork. Good to see you. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you again. How are you doing? Good morning, my friend. Good How morning. are you? I'm very good, sir. I'm really intrigued. Are you? I'm itching, itching. I'll go and get something for you. Yes, Thank please. you very much indeed. I think there'll be a queue of people awaiting my return tonight. Well, I can hear it. I can hear it before I see it. Oh, my lord. <laughs> Here we go. How cool is that? Get attention now, wouldn't it? Oh, my god. I'm loving it large. <laughs> loving it large. Hey. Uh, let me uh, give it a little bit of a test run, just up there and back down. Let me have a go. Let me have a go. <laughs> so you can see it. Here you go. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Absolutely yeah. fantastic. You happy? I'm, I'm euphoric. That's, oh, that's, 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 uh, that's better than I could have dreamt of. Oh, that, excellent. It's, uh, that is going to be something really quite special. Uh, that will now serve many decades to come. Yeah. It's eye-catching. Yeah. It appeals to all the sights and senses. It's fantastic. There is a, a warm welcome and a cold beer awaits you all <laughs> oh, in like the you. most picturesque fishing village in Cornwall. I like to hear that. And I'll just <laughs> we've got to shake on that. It's a deal. I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, yeah. that's brilliant. And it's nice, glossy, clean, shining. The Cornish sunshine will glint off that for years ahead. <laughs> Absolutely. Ah, brilliant. During the summer months, it will be coming out and about. It'll be wheeled around our harbour. We'll have a succession of hunky young men will be chosen to wheel it around, and it will bring a smile to people's faces, I'm sure. Good one, eh? Yeah, free but, free beer. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> but we've got another job to do now. Let's crack on. Back inside, George, the much-loved Irish teddy bear, is one step closer to getting his eye, growl and paws back. George's owner had turned the end of his hand over because his paw pad had deteriorated, and so to stop his stuffing coming out, she kind of turned the end of the paw. So now we can see the length of his arm and it's quite nice because you can see the shape as well because these bears had quite a point and that is all still complete, which is really good from our point of view. Look at that. Oh, see the brilliant. Front? That's all there. Perfect. I'm stitching the new paw pads into position. In a moment, I'll be able to turn this one inside out and then I'll be stuffing the leg. And then we've just got the other arm and the other leg to do the same and we'll be able to fasten them back onto the body. Whoa, 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 whoa. What have you done? <laughs> No, seriously, what you, I thought you were just fixing the arms and the... No, okay. seriously, what yeah. have you done to it? You've taken everything out of George. Yeah, poor old oh, George. Oh. Well, we decided yeah. the best option for George would be to actually set new paw pads in as right. if, like, when they were first... when he was first made. OK. And we can't do that unless we can get inside and turn the pieces inside out. Oh, I'm with you. Because you're going to stitch it from the inside? Yes. So that's why he's looking a little bit worse for wear at the moment. Well, what, what about his, um, his, his noise inside? She's quite yeah. adamant that she wants him to growl again. OK, so this is the one that we removed. But it doesn't make a noise. It doesn't does make it? any noise, and there's not a lot we can do with that. 
So, this is the replicant one that we're going to put in instead. <laughs> Stop it. Wow. That sounds like a sheep, though. Yeah, a lot of people say that. Yeah. It's the noise that a baby bear makes when he's calling his mummy. Oh, is it? Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, see, because he's going to be muffled, isn't it? Yes, yeah, because you're going to have all the warding and the sort of stuffing and everything around him. Well, you guys know what you're doing. I should just leave you alone. But I might have to take this. <laughs> okay, I'll yeah. borrow that, actually. Yeah, okay. We right. know where it's gone. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 Steve is back at work on the antique remote control car. He still has to solve the broken steering wheel issue before its owner, Liam, returns to pick up his precious childhood toy. I found a, a pocket watch button. Uh, what I'm going to do is add it to the other side. I think that'll go all right if I uh, use a bit of brute force. Uh, so that hasn't worked either. Um, I'm just going to try turning that down in the lathe, see if I can uh, make that fit. But he's not ready to give up just yet. Hello, Liam. Nice to see you. Good, thank you. I'll just get your car for you. Right, the good news is I found a key. Yep. And it winds up beautifully. Excellent. And it works. Right. So if I just turn that on. Superb. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually working. Yeah. Bad news. OK. This unit here, the steering wheel, is a zinc-based alloy. OK. Um, and it's gone rotten, basically. It's gone very crystallised. All right. And okay. it's cracked all over. OK. And there's no way I can repair that. OK. So, instead, what I've done, I've made a unit that you can use for steering the car. OK. You pop that onto the top there and then twiddle the top of that and, and what it does is is turn the wheel one oh, way or right, the other. Yeah. Watch a treat, isn't it? So turn it on. There we go. Excellent. That's fantastic. So yeah, I'm very pleased. And, oh, and, thank you. And plus, I, I I didn't have to take the car apart. Oh, that's even better, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Did you just yeah. wound up straight away and went. Yeah, working on this car, it reminds me of a car that I had when I was a very tiny child, okay. that was very very similar. And I can remember spending hours <laughs> just around the parquet floors yeah, with the, with so. the car. There's the key. Don't lose the key. No, definitely not. I'll guard that. Yeah. Okay. okay, well, thank you very much. And there we go. That's brilliant. And thanks for bringing it along. No, and really thank you very nice much for all your, all your hard work. You're very welcome. It. Thank you. What Steve's done with the car, it's just blown my mind, really. I've never seen it working before. It brings back a lot of childhood memories for me, and I'll be able to pass that on to my children and pass the car on to my children as well. I'm really over the moon with it. Fantastic. Meanwhile, the last few missing pieces of treasured Irish teddy George are being stitched into place. Oh, blimey. <laughs> this is the precious moment, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, delicate... you've just put a needle for his head. Yeah, delicate surgery going on here. So he can see now, he can see again, He will yeah? be able to in just a moment, yeah. Have That's you taken him down to the gym or something? Yeah. <laughs> wow. He's got abs. He's really quite fit. He's just unbelievably toned up. <laughs> <laughs> no, he he's feeling. He feels good, doesn't he? Oh, George, well done, son. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what what's next on it? Right. So Julie's going to give him a really nice, clean and pamper session. So he's got his eyes back. Yep. <laughs> he's been down to the gym. Yep. And then now he's going to get a, a spruce over. Yep. Yeah. A little yep. spa. Yep. All right. I'll leave you alone with George then. All right. All right. See you later. What we have to be careful of, we don't suck the eyes up into the hoover. That wouldn't be good. Put your nice bowl of bubbles. Oh, lovely. Thank There's you. no liquid in there, it's just bubbles. OK. Yeah. If you need me to foam up some more, just say. But I'd... I probably won't, because he's not got a lot of fur, bless him. We have to treat this as a vintage fabric and try and prevent it from sort of disintegrating any further. We use 
mild soap suds, not a strong detergent. And we massage gently into the fur. I have your um, rinsing flannel there. Thank you very much. Here you go. Thank you. After George enjoys some well-earned pampering from Julie and Amanda, he's ready to be reunited with his owner, Sally, and to be passed on to future generations. George means everything to me. I've had him since I was a baby, and he's come down through the family line. We've been missing George very much since he's been away. I'm feeling really excited. I'm also really a bit nervous because I'm not sure what he's going to look like. Hello, Sally. Hello, hi. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. You're I'm right? good. Yes, thank you. So you've come along for Irish George, is that right? Indeed I have, yes, okay. yes. If you hold on a minute, I'll just get it for you. Okay. With the Teddy Care team away on urgent bear business, Jay's on hand to chaperone the reunion. Looking after him very carefully there, I can see. Very carefully. So you ready to see this? I'm quite nervous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. Here we go. Oh, wow! Oh, my gosh! He looks fantastic, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. He looks so good. And now I remember as a child these pads, the, the pads. Board, on there. The pads. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> Is that the one, yeah? <laughs> that's it. Oh, that's amazing. Because it's not a high pitched squeak. No. It's a lower one. Yeah. I'm really surprised, quite shocked in a way, that they brought him back in so. Just such a good condition. Wow. <laughs> thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And so with the family, thank you. Oh, to hear his growl again was fantastic. It was really good. And I, I could remember how it used to sound, and the experts have got it absolutely right. So he sounds the same as he did. It's almost like he's talking to us again now. I definitely feel I've got George back, definitely. First in today is Rachel Dickens, whose item has already been received by Jay and electronics expert Jeff Harvey. Ah, hello. hello. How are we doing? You all right? Oh, oh, Jeff, very nice to meet you. Hello. Hi. Hi there. So this must be yours, then? Ooh. Yes, it is. It's a pinball machine. Yeah. OK. It's in bits, then? Yes, so this bit's come off, but oh, it's, okay. it's all there. I don't know if it can be repaired, but it'd be great if it could. Okay. Well, I got it in a junk shop in Margate. Okay. And uh, I got it from a guy who said he'd bought loads from Dreamland. So Dreamland, remind me, what it's is Dream? It's a big sort of arcade in Margate. Okay. So I spent a lot of time in Margate on the arcade, <laughs> when I should have been doing my A levels. Okay. <laughs> so it does have a big nostalgic quality for me. Did you pass the A levels? I did. Well, Only just. Are. So that's all right, isn't yeah. it? Until now, Rachel from Herne Bay had managed to find an unusual use for her poorly pinball machine. So here's my lovely pinball machine, now part of my kitchen. It's really good as part of the kitchen with this glass on top. It's a nice, cool surface, good for making pastry on, actually. It works really well, and I love having it here, but the opportunity to get it fixed is one I happily take the kitchen apart. It's such a beautiful thing, it really should be restored. I feel bad that it's sitting here not working. How much did you pay for it? I paid £150 for it. Okay. Yeah, so it wasn't very much. No. But it just so happened, my mum, who died last June, had uh, given me some money before she died in March. Yeah. And I was out shopping for stuff, and I was meant to be buying, you know, sensible things. Yeah. So I saw the pinball machine, and I thought, well, I'm allowed to have it because <laughs> mum's given me this extra money. Right. So, yeah, that's how I got to get it. So it's, it's precious for me from that point of view. So what do you reckon? Well, Can we fix this? <laughs> I have to have a little look at his, his innards, put my glasses on, makes me look more intelligent. I mean, Why not? Do you mind if I have a look at I do a little no. operation, a Ooh, little surgery, yes. just have a quick look? And inside, Ooh. all lifts up, you see. <gasps> wow. Dusty yeah, and dirty. Dusty. It looks all there to my professional eye. So yeah. it's a good one? I like all this in the, in the shape of a... Do they light up? They light up and go out as you hit them, and you can oh, okay. get your strikes. <laughs> so the main thing is, can it be fixed? Well, a bit like Frankenstein's monster, once I plugged in the electrics, we can <laughs> right. see. Oh, I can't wait. I hope well, we can do it. I, I hope so as well, actually. Well, I'll tell you what, yeah. if, you, if you leave it with us... OK, um, all right, okay. brilliant. Then, Thank we'll you so much. Cheers. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, Thank you. Very lovely Thanks to so meet you, nice and we'll be... Yeah, hope Thanks. to see you soon. Bye-bye. 
pinball machines in general are just a beautiful, classic, iconic piece of um, our seaside history. And I don't want it to be made brand new. Like, I don't want new repro bits and pieces, and I'd rather keep it as original as possible. But, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit nervous, but mostly excited. So, Jeff, what's the key things that you've got to do to get this running? Initially, basically plug it in, get all the back, back box all plugged in, and yeah. put it in the mains and see what goes, and then we can see how ill the patient is. OK. Yeah. All right. right, yeah, first step. Sort the legs out as well, but, um, yeah. What, the legs from wobbling like that? Or well, it's it? got the wrong... So they've cut them down a bit to make it flat, cos it was being used as a table, so I need to put new legs and, and reseat all these oh, where they yeah. fit. And that will, that will make it look more like a pinball machine, so... OK. So we've got to get this over to your bench, then? Yes, please. Come on, then. You're feeling strong? It's not that heavy, is it? It's not too bad. <laughs> it's, it's not too bad. It's character building. <laughs> Let's have a... Oh, that's not too bad. All looks there, reasonably clean and tidy, a bit dusty. But the thing I am worried about is this motor here, which looks a little bit burnt out. That's the only thing that would be difficult, cos that's kind of the heart of the machine. It does all the controlling. Jeff's first task is to install new legs, which need to be longer at one end of the machine. This will create a tilt, which is needed for the ball to naturally roll towards the player. Rachel had it flat as a piece of furniture. This is how God intended it, if God was going to make a pinball machine. Hopefully this darling will live to play again. I very much hope so. From treasured toys in need of emergency surgery to ceramics that have seen better days, our experts in the repair shop are determined to put the pieces back together. Next to arrive is Ash Phelps from East Sussex with a much-loved family heirloom. Hello. 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 Hi, how are you? How doing? Are you? Very good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Okay. What have we got here, then? We've got a barometer in here. He's hoping horologist Steve Fletcher will be able to turn his hand to this antique weather instrument. So I inherited this from my grandparents. It's the one item I've got that, that, that you know, really symbolises uh, them and, and the relationship I had with them. But for as long as... Myself and my mum remember it's not been working. You see, it always points to kind of changeable, yeah. which, oh, I, which right. I guess isn't far from the truth in the UK. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it is working, I don't know. But um... <laughs> yeah. Steve, this is one for you. Yeah. What do you reckon? I think it's sort of 1920s, 30s. More often than not, the uh, mechanism is just seized up. So that's completely seized up. So if that's anything like the mechanism, maybe that is okay. the reason why it's stopped. Yeah. Leave it with me, and I will do my best to get it working. Thank Great. you very Thank much. You. Right. Take care. Even though it hasn't been working all these years, it's still a really important piece for me. It was very close to my grandparents, and it's nice to have that to, to remember them by. You worked on one before? Oh, yeah, loads of times. Well, there you go. Trust you. It's all you, then. OK. See you in a bit. Early barometers from the 18th century were symbols of affluence and must have items for the aristocracy. Aneroid barometers like Ashes were invented in 1840. They used a series of springs, chains, and dials attached to a vacuum and were a cheaper and safer alternative to their predecessors that had used expensive and highly toxic mercury. Everything looks as if it's working. It's, it's not seized up. I've got to check and see whether the movement is working under pressure or not. And Steve has a low-tech trick to test whether it's the barometer's actual mechanism that's faulty. I've put it into this bag so that I can force some pressure onto the mechanism and see whether there's any movement in the hand. What I'm actually doing is replicating an increase in atmospheric pressure. You can see there is some movement there if I put some pressure on. It still doesn't explain exactly why the hand has stayed still for decades. Even though the mechanism seems to be working, fastidious Steve is going to strip it down and clean it thoroughly just to make sure. More difficult is going to be getting the setting nut moving. This is really, really seized up, and that worries me to, to death, um, moving that, because uh, they just break, and that happens all the time. At the repair shop, the team has the tools and the talent to deal with any restoration challenge, no matter how big, how small, how old, 
or how new. Jeff's task today is to revive a retro gaming machine, but sometimes even a pinball wizard needs a helping hand. Will, that's the man I want to see. So how can I help? So woodworking skills I'd appreciate, oh, actually. Oh, skills. Your skills, but to know you have them, I definitely haven't. Right. Um, basically, the back box sits on top of here, okay. but when they turned it into a piece of furniture, they removed a little wooden plinth, which it sits on. So basically, right. I'm after a simple wooden construction round here. I'll make do. a deal with you. Yeah. Deal is, if I make that for you, yep. I am the first person to play on this when it's fixed. I'll have to some test games on it to see if it works. But, but you can I have mean, the first in proper the game. workshop, because I know yeah. Jay loves getting his... Yeah. Getting he steam gets and I'm going to avoid him, yeah. He's but not allowed to I go near it. Game. Yeah, you'll have the first pro go proper game. <laughs> really helpful he's doing that. Nice sense of comradeship here, which is good. That's nice. Yeah, there we go, like that. Oh, that's gorgeous. We'll go through. Oh, that's absolutely... Mwah. Yeah? Beautiful. That's the most beautiful thing I've seen since I looked in the mirror this morning. Uh... Done. You are a genius, officially. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Right, I'll see you for that first... Uh, yep. Absolutely. Round. Before Jay. Beautiful. Jay's not allowed on. Is my fascination with all things pinball since I was 13. Um, and it's become so much part of my life and something that is both something practical and real. And there's nothing like the first game on a machine that hasn't worked for years. It's actually incredibly exciting, even after 50 years. I still love it. So I'm going to plug this in. It might go bang, it might not. Who knows what will happen? Right, power and a plug. Oh, that's good. Motor works. Ah, beautiful. That is very good news. I'm a happy little bunny. That sounds cool. So it's good. It's working then. It's on its way to working. It's on its way. It's... Look, it's got lights. It's... What does it need to happen now? Lots of making things working properly, because all we got is that there's power, the motor works, the relays are working, then yeah. starts tripping it all down to make it look beautiful and play well. I'll leave you alone. Thank you very much. All indeed. right, Cheers, no problem. Then. then let's see what happens. Oh, there are some problems, which will take a bit of sorting out somewhere. Something's wrong. Unfortunately, the discovery of a power failure has no quick fix. And with the machine teeming with wires and connections, it could leave Jeff with up to a mile's worth of cabling to check. Hmm. The repair shop experts are accustomed to receiving objects in all sorts of wonderful shapes and sizes. The next is no exception, and is accompanied by Caroline Francis and her daughter, Jo. Wow, well, now that is nice. So what's the history behind all of these? My dad, Mum's husband, was, was a rower. Yes. That's him, Jay Nicholl. So he rode for Queen's College, Cambridge, and yeah. he was in the college first boat. It was the first time ever that Queen's College had won the Marlow Regatta. OK. Afterwards, they're presented with these oars. Yes. Um, and we've had them ever since, haven't we? Yes. So, where, where's your husband now? Where's, where's Dad now? Well, he unfortunately, he was ill and he died when he was 48. He was 48. So how old was he when he was in these races, then? Well, of university age. But the, the sort of the really interesting thing about the fact he was a rower is that he was, um, he was disabled. He was um, disabled? Yeah. And they found that he'd got a kind of muscular atrophy, so his hands were slightly... Clenched, like, like closed, that. like that. Yeah, he couldn't like straighten that. his fingers out himself. OK. But he could do the rowing. So he was in an able-bodied boat? Oh, yeah, yes. yeah, it was just a normal... You know, yes. he was, a, he was a, a normal rower. That's an achievement, isn't it? Yeah. So it was wonderful for him that he could do the rowing. Yeah. What can we do for you um, with regards to restoring? Because, obviously, that's the part of history that you do not want. Not. No, not that. So you don't want <laughs> that touch no. Oh, so we're about to take some sound <laughs> tape here. It seems <laughs> quite, yeah, quite rough. Paint, but um, you can see from the, the shafts of... The, I don't know if you can call that that rules, but I don't know what this is that's on here, but that's obviously aged quite a lot. It's almost as if something's dripped on there and something's yeah. reacted at some point. And then as you turn the... Or's over on the back of the blades. OK. Yes. Yeah. We can definitely get rid of the sort of peeling and uh, it's like contaminated polish, but definitely not touch anything on here. No. Mm -hmm. uh, but what I will do is I will do something with the other side of the yeah, blade. Yeah, the back of it. Definitely, yeah. Well, it'll be 
Lovely to be able to pass them on in good condition yeah. to the grandchildren. And they'll be like they were when they were presented to my dad in the first place. Right. So if you leave these with us, it's OK? Brilliant. Yes. Okay. Brilliant. Thank, Thank, you Thank you very much. Thank you. We've always been really proud of my dad, knowing um, that he did this great thing when he was younger. They are him, really, for us. That's our main thing we've got of him. Um, that's, that's carried on with us through the years and it'll carry on for grandchildren as well. So out of all the things that have come in, this one's got strict instructions not to touch that end. Not to touch there. the end. Simply because that's, that's part of history. Yeah, exactly. Apart from the back side of it, you can touch the back, but not the front. Not even look at the front. Let's not no. even look at the front. No, that's you can't look at the front. <laughs> it's just this bit and then you've got to turn it over and that's it. I'll take this one. Oh, you usually leave me to take everything. That's correct, but this is a bit of history, so I'm going to help you out, yeah? All right, you take that, I'll take this one. OK. Oh, look at that. It's longer than the bench. Before Will embarks on the oars refurbishment, he makes a closer inspection. Just having an overall look um, at the oars, I can see how the varnish and the polish on the surface has reacted with something at some point. If you don't clean the surface off before you polish it, you can have all sorts of problems with re reactions and everything else. So I think that is what's happened here. There are areas like here where I can't really see it too well right now, but I presume that's maybe a maker's mark. So I wouldn't want to lose any of that detail. Across the repair shop, Pinball Jeff has almost finished. So, what are you going to do now? What, what you're going to change all of this, or is it... Oh, no, just give it a clean. Everything comes off. Nice big polish. And just the deluxe addition will be other flashing lights in the title strip as well, that they used to do in the 70s. The owner, Rachel, had purchased the rundown machine with money gifted from her mother, who died last year. Having been relegated to a surface for rolling pastry, it's now close to springing back to life. So, once you've got it all up and running... Mm. Mm. I know I've got to get going on this, haven't I? At some point. At some point? Yeah, well... Who's on first, then? Oh, you? Oh, that is a secret. Well, well no, it's I'm, you, I'm, isn't I'll it? I'll be doing some test games, then, but the first public performance has already been promised. Two. Oh, that, that's... Uh, I'll have to kill you if I told you. How <laughs> oh, is it? Have you finally be. finished? Yeah. Right. There we go. There's a bit of a ding, isn't it? Oh, oh, I've got to use the other one. I thought it was just one button for bait. OK, wait, OK. Hold on, hold on. Oh, I've oh, always, oh, always having to compare to me. <laughs> what? Oh, oh shocking, shocking. Shocking. Oh, 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 hey. 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 oh, 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 uh, Two hundred. Hey. Is it, it working then? That's yeah, the main thing. absolutely. A few little tweaks, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, and given how it arrived, luck has been on my side, and also the machine was sort of responded well to treatment. Not all patients okay. do, but can't yeah. wait to see it set up in the family home and not being used as a kitchen yeah. table. <laughs> 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 well, well, having successfully powered up the pinball machine. It's time for Jeff to return it to Rachel's kitchen, where it will no longer be limited to pastry duties. Hello, Rachel. How are you? How nice uh, to see you again. Lovely to see Hi. you too. Yeah. You might take a look. Shall we put you pull that blanket okay. and I'll pull this one? One, okay. two, three. Wow. The colours come out so much better. Hey. It's never had lights on before. It looks lovely. Oh, and it looks gorgeous. And I've put Proper flashing lights, as it would have had in oh, the 70s, wow. which I had some left, luckily. Oh, it looks wonderful. And if you press the magic button... Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. wow! <laughs> the sounds when I first played it, really nostalgic, really reminded me of arcades and I was a kid, and it was beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing, and he's done such a good job. It looks amazing. I love it. I just don't know what to say to you. I'm so oh. pleased. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I really didn't know that it was going to come back so beautiful as it has. It's really, really nice. It's really quite moving, actually. I'm actually really pleased with the way it came out. It's yeah. lovely, yeah. It's a lovely machine. Yeah, really. I, I, I love pinball machines. <laughs> I really do. I'm surprised at how moved I am, really. But it's the last thing that my mum gave me. 
this pinball machine. It's lovely. And I'll always remember. And it's such a fun thing. She would have loved it. It's beautiful. Back in the repair shop, Will is starting to cautiously clean a test area on the 70-year-old Cambridge Oars. Awfully quiet. That must mean you're concentrating quite a lot. Yeah, I was just uh, <laughs> trying to clean up my ears, Joe. Yes. Yeah, I'm ears. Not... Filthy ears, mate. <laughs> 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 now, are you getting on? Not too bad. I have cleaned this patch here. Come on. That's the original surface, but not right back down to the wood. OK. Right. I don't know if you can see the writing here. I think that writing is on top of the wood. But isn't this quite... Well, it's quite dangerous in a way. You go to clean it and it all comes off. So I've cleaned that with cotton wool, bud and some maths. I'm going to do the same thing really lightly on maybe the letter G. Yeah. And see if that cleans that well. Go on, then. Let's stop talking about it. Let's see you do it. What? what right are you there. watching me? Yeah, of course, man. I'm going to put the pressure on you. So... Letter G. Yes, please. <laughs> go on, go on. Is it going away or is it staying? To me, it looks like it's... Re Hold on. I want to not rub too hard. That's staying. That's staying. Whew! <laughs> That's staying. <laughs> <laughs> now we can breathe, eh? Well yeah. done. Let's so this stuff here, what's crackling up, yeah. it's not on top of that. This cracking stuff yeah. is right at the top. Yeah. So I think I can take this off like I just did there. You're not going to do that with a cotton bud, though, are you? No, no, Come no, on, no, man. no, no. I'd be there for months. <laughs> I'd probably use some soft wire wool. Soft really wire wool, Really soft steel off. wool, yeah. Yeah. So they've got a lot of history, these, haven't they? A lot of history and a lot of cleaning. Caroline's husband was presented with these prized oars for his exceptional record in the Eights Challenge Cup at Marlow Regatta in 1948 and 1950. The fact that he was diagnosed with a muscle-wasting illness affecting both his legs and arms makes his achievements even more remarkable. <laughs> that looks good, doesn't it? What's all this here? So much more information. What have we got here? 1938. Yeah, the 1938 Henley Regatta. Cool. So there's actually more history to these <laughs> yeah, there is. than just the race that. Um, well, you've on. unearthed more history just by cleaning it. There you go. What else have you got to do now? What's, what's next? I think the best thing to do would be remove any loose pieces of paint on the back of this blade. Because that is still flaking off. It's yeah, because well, you keep touching it. Stop what? touching it and it won't come flaking well, I mean, off. They're going to touch it, it's their all <laughs> or their blade. They're going to touch it. OK, it's just stop touching it. So you're going to make sure it doesn't peel off. Yeah. Look at it, it's just been turned over. Look at all these bits. They're just coming off. We've only been there two minutes. Because you keep on touching it. OK, how right. about you right. stop touching it all and right. I'll start painting it. All right. <laughs> I'll leave you to it. Thanks, Jay. Just trying to mix up the paint by eye. So I think the colour I'm going for is sort of a British racing green, sort of like a frog green. I think it's just a case of making it a tiny bit lighter. And then I should have that frog racing car green I need. So far, so good. In the fight against disposable culture, the repair shop experts are using their skills to breathe new life into the nation's neglected possessions. And for Steve, it's make, and hopefully not break, for the barometer that was left to owner Ash by his loving grandparents. This hand has, has not worked for years. This is the bit that I haven't been looking forward to, just in case it goes terribly wrong and the glass breaks. If it does, it's a complete and utter disaster. How are we doing this, Steve? I hope I can uh, release this OK. Oh, uh, I thought there'd be a screw on the back. No, 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 it's just, it's, uh, just riveted over there. So, so basically, trying to get that out, you might break the glass. You don't like to say it, but I know you might break the glass, isn't it? There is an outside possibility. Keep my fingers crossed. Oh, right. I'm sure you will. Well, I will do. I will okay. do. So we go. Put a bit more force in it. It is really, really stuck very, very fast. 
actually just going to put a little bit of oil in there. No, it is moving. Oh, thank goodness for that. Oh, that's easing up beautifully. So, problem solved. Good. Very, very happy. With the hand loosened and the mechanism checked, Steve could now reassemble the barometer just in time for Ash's return. Nice to see you again, Steve. How you are too. you? How are you? I'm good, thank you. Yes. Good. Looking forward to seeing the barometer. Very, very excited. It's all I've been thinking about. Oh, so, yeah, re really, really, uh, <laughs> really excited to see what you've done to it. There we go. Oh, wow. Fantastic. The mechanism I took out, I cleaned it through, gave it good service, and um, that wasn't causing it to not work. Right. What actually was causing the problem was that the dial was uh, tight against the hand. OK. So I've released that, and it's working fine. Fantastic. Knowing it's working again, I'm overjoyed to, to have seen it working. Amazing. My grandparents would be very proud of this, so, and uh, I'm sure if they were here today, they'd, they'd say thanks as well. Oh, so, bless. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah. You've done a fantastic job. It is like having a piece of them there at all times, and, and every time I see it, it reminds me of them and, and the good times I have. So to have it now on the wall and working, it, it's going to be great. Having meticulously hand-painted the back of the ore blades with his very own bespoke frog green, Will has just enough time to add the finishing touches. I think you've surpassed yourself, actually, son. Well really? done. No, you have surpassed yourself on this one. Ship shape and repair shop fashion, the oars are ready to be returned to Joe and Caroline. Hello, how are we doing? Fine, thank you. You're Very right. excited. Hi. How are you doing? Hi. You had a serious, serious look on your face when you walked in thinking, <laughs> my oars better be underneath there. Hi. Hi there, Hi. nice to see you again. <laughs> It's lovely. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually how I remember them from really? when I was younger. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Oh, yeah, sort of different. Really lovely. Yeah. As I was cleaning, oh, you can actually see. Yes. Everything that's been written here. Oh, wow. Yes. So we've got the Henry Regatta 1938 on there. That's lovely, and it's wonderful that it's come up clearly. You can actually clearly. read it now. Yeah. Exactly. That's really good. I'm pleased that you're pleased. <laughs> so what are you going to do with these now, then? They'll be up on the wall for everybody to look at and actually really cherish. So we best get these wrapped up, because you can't put them on your push bike, can you? Not really, Not no. Okay. <laughs> and we'll get them shipped over to you. Lovely, well. thank you. Okay. Thank you. Really nice to meet you. Thank you very much for everything you've done. When they were uncovered, it really brought back to me how important they had been to my husband and how important my husband had been to me. And it's just wonderful to see these brought back to their former glory. It just makes me feel really you know, excited that we can take them back home, put them up on display, and they're like they were when I was younger and when my dad was alive. You was worried about this one, really, weren't you? I think out of nearly all of the jobs yeah. that I worked on here, I was really worried about this. Risk losing the writing underneath it's all of the races and everything else. Yeah. Well done. Cheers, mate. All right. But first on board the good ship repair shop today is Simon Baird, with a naughty nautical problem for Jay and Will. Hello. Wow, well, what have we got here, then? What's this? It's our model boat. Wow. Seriously broken. It's had a hard life. I was, about to <laughs> say. I was showing it to someone and it got sat on. It got sat on? Yeah. Must be quite painful. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and these are built and designed to be in the water. Yes, well, it's the problem anyway, they work really well. I was given it for Christmas. Uh, when I was about seven, um, and my brother got one the same. His was green. Right. Mine's blue. That's me and my brother, age. So he must have been about oh, five, wow. and I was probably about seven oh, when we were given them. So, so yeah. You've got a green one. Let's exactly. exactly. So that's right. how it would look. So who gave it to you then? Yeah, Uncle Bill, he's called. Right. Uncle okay. Bill, his wife's Auntie Barbara. Uncle right. Bill's died, unfortunately, but Auntie Barbara's oh. still here. That so that's Uncle Bill. That's yes. Uncle Bill. So, um, and that was his boat. So his boat's puddle, oh, puddle duck. Boat. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So he and Auntie Barbara used to sail to France and all over the place on that. And they used to take us sailing out on that. 
And what was it called? What's the bone called? Puddle duck. Puddle, puddle duck. duck. Right. Puddle yes. duck. Like Jemima the Puddle Duck. Wow. <laughs> yes. Um, and so that, that's Barbara and Bill together, oh, okay. yes. Oh, uh, And Auntie Barbara's still alive. She's still alive, yes. She would love to see my two boys sailing the boat that Uncle Bill sorted out in the first place. So, there we have it, Will. That's the lady that you've got to get this working for. Right. right. <laughs> if you leave it with us, yes. um, Will's going to work his magic, and um, we'll definitely get back to you oh, on that thank one. You very All right. Much indeed. It would mean a huge amount to have the boat repaired. Um, Auntie Barbara uh, lives nearby, and she would love to come and see the boat sailing in Pool Park with my children, uh, like she used to come and watch me when I was their age. Um, so it would be fantastic for us all to be sailing it together. I've seen these in the pond um, where I grew up, people using these. I never knew how they stared them and stuff like that. I didn't realise that you grew up in a pond. I did grow up in a pond, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> didn't tell by my webbed feet. <laughs> <laughs> but these are quite cool, man. Really cool. How do you steer it, though? I think you kind of just work out the direction of the wind, set the sails in a certain way, and then and just put it in the there. Best, yeah. Okay. So cool. you can do this one, yeah? So I'm going to get it on the bench and oh, then right. have a better look at it. At some point, there would have been some rings, metal hoops, running across the bottom, but they're no longer there. So my plan is to make up some new hoops. I don't have the know-how or the materials, uh, but I know a man who does. Over to resident horologist, Steve. Small favour. Would you be able to make me four of those, please? How many? Four. Yep. Yep. Oops. Yep. 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 Lovely. Thanks, Steve. So the hardest part, without any uh, instructions or maps or drawings, is to um, work out where everything goes and make sure that it actually stays afloat. With no nautical experience, Will's all at sea with the rigging. I need to see about fixing this bit here. I think that's called the mast. I think that's called the mast. <sighs> Next to arrive, Jane Trott and her husband Robert have come to see soft toy maestros Amanda and Julie to see if they can breathe new life into a very special family heirloom. Hello. 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 Who have we got here? We've what? got Lucy Doll here. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at her. Lucy actually belonged to my dear mum, who sadly passed away in 2012. She was given to my mum on her fourth birthday um, in 1932, which makes Lucy um, almost 85 years old. I knew, because she'd actually told me, that she wanted her to go to her great-granddaughter, Lucy. Oh, yes. that's lovely. Yes. That's okay. lovely. So we've got so, Lucy Doll. And we've got a great-granddaughter called Lucy Victoria. And I felt a sort of responsibility to make sure that she um, she got us, and I think she has been mended before because this yeah. uh, this leg is uh, is adrift. We only have one hand. Yes. You haven't got the other one by any chance. No, no, it wasn't with her. So we will do our best to sort so some over hands. the decades. I think <laughs> it's uh, gone somewhere. Have you brought any clothes with you for Lucy to wear? A little oh, dress look. that was mine. Aww. That's over 50 years ago, giving away my age now. <laughs> um, and this little cardigan was actually worn oh. by my daughter. So oh. I thought it'd be nice to bring lovely. all the generations mm -hmm. together. Yeah. So we need to get all her limbs back in place. That'd be lovely. Uh, make good the repairs that are required. We'll do our best to put her back together for you. That'd be wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, she'll, she'll be fine. I'm she'll sure be she fine. will be. Thank, right. you Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Bye. I hope that Lucy will look as she looked when she was um, cuddled by my own mother. So it'll be lovely to pass her on to my granddaughter and see her looking lovely in her arms as she did once in my mum's arms at the same age. I think we've got ourselves quite a big job here. We've got quite a lot of damage here with tearing. Um, this will be because it's such an old fabric. It's just beginning to perish. And, of course, we need to sort out what we're going to do about her hands. And ho so hopefully she'll have some pretty little hands coming yeah. out from under her cardigan. It's going to be a busy day. It is going to be a busy day. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay.
To get an idea of the full extent of the damage, first Amanda and Julie have to painstakingly take Lucy apart. From every stitch to every piece of decades-old stuffing. And you can see how sort of dusty and not terribly pleasant and quite hard this stuffing is. Now Lucy and the full extent of the job ahead are laid bare. Having looked at Lucy's body, very, very fragile. So we've made this decision that we are going to make new covers for her limbs and put all of the pieces back in, her original pieces, inside those. But she will be much stronger that way and better for a child who's going to be handling her. Here's the original arm inside, and we're now just restuffing it. And she will have nice, clean, new, strong arms. We are really tight at the time. We just can't stop. we just got to keep going. Also underway, Will has been getting to know the ropes of the treasured childhood sailing boat. He's reached a critical point in the repair. So I'm about to fix the broken mast. The plan is to use some of this bamboo here drill a hole into the top piece and the bottom piece and glue it on the inside in place, and that should give it the strength that it's going to need. Able seaman Will is roping in the assistance of some of the other repair shop crew to get this vintage vessel's ship shape and Bristol fashion, including Chief Engineer Steve and even Captain Jay. Yeah, can I help you? First of all, marvel at this. Ready? Da -da -da -da. <laughs> That's One. cool, isn't it? The problem is, this rigging is pretty ropey. So, ideally, I'd like some... String. String. Something that's waxed. Do you have anything? Yes. Really? Yeah. Button and twine. There you go. It's strong, man. You won't be able to yeah. pop that. So, my plan is, and I'm going to start on the rigging, bit by bit rather than just slip it all off. Because I could just take off all of the old rigging now and just be left with three sails and have no idea how to put it back together. Whereas if I do it section by section, okay. then at least I know what goes where, basically. As long as you understand what you're talking about. But you've got the button in twine now, anyway. I've got the button in twine. Cool. Lovely. Thanks a lot, Jay. You're welcome, sir. So, how are you getting on? Slowly getting there. Look at that. Oh, well done, you. I think it should be relatively straightforward from there. Brilliant. I've got your um, rings and eyelets. Wow. There's some spares there as well. Amazing. Right. Well, thanks for that, Steve. No probs. I'll be sailing on from here, then. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it would be nice to put um, a name on the front of the boat. I don't know if, if I mentioned this to Simon or not, but I thought it would be nice to call it the name of Simon's uncle's boat, Puddle Duck. Thing is, do I call it Puddle Duck or do I call it Puddle Duck 2? I think that would be a really nice touch. Expert at tackling the problems others fear to fix, no restoration project phases the repair shop team. And the next arrival is no exception. Right, what do we have here? It's a gramophone. A gram... like, one of those gramophones? A real proper wind-up gramophone, proper one. yes. Proper wind-up gramophone. OK. Gillian Lamb's very special musical memento is in need of a tune-up from Jay and gramophone guru Tim. When I'm thinking gramophones, I'm thinking of a, of a big like microphone sticking out. <laughs> yes, it doesn't have a dramatic horn. It, it, there's two um, doors at the front here, and you can adjust the tone of the sound by opening or closing the doors. Well, it originally belonged to my grandmother. After my grandmother, it went to my aunt, and okay. uh, it's at her house that I remember it most. Mm. So um, it was clearly a very important part of their, their life. Do you remember it being played? And... I do remember it being yeah. played, yes. And I did go and stay there. It was full of life and fun and activity, and this was part of it. That's why it's special. What's the problem with it, then? 
Well, it doesn't run very happily. Okay. Uh, and you can't hear the records anymore. Right. You just hear a scratching noise. And it's such a shame because we have a collection of records from that time. OK. Hmm. Which would be lovely to play again. Can we get this working? It can be done. It can be done. It yeah. can be done. Yeah. My guess would be that there should be a bass on it. Do you remember there ever being a sort of bottom to it? No, I, I don't. Ah, well, I think that's probably gone missing. Can we tip it upside down? If we can look underneath, you can see better that this is an internal horn. I've got a record over here. Let's, let's see what we get out of it. All right. Mm. Wow. I mean, we might get it going a bit better by winding it up, but the danger with winding it up when you've got a lot of old grease in the spring barrel is that you effectively you distort the spring. We're going to get it working, are we? Let's see what we can do. I would love it to be working again. I associate myself and my childhood with this gramophone and the happy times I had staying with my aunt and the fun it was being with her. Yeah. And, and this was part of it. It's, it's a joy. Leave it with us. Um, we'll get it fully restored and playing happily again. That'll be marvellous. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank see you. See you later on. Thank you. Will do. Oh, it will be wonderful to see it repaired and hear it working properly. So I feel really quite excited at the prospect of having it back in use. OK, right, so I'll drop the motor out, take it apart, clean years and years of old grease... When you say drop out. the motor out, that sounds like a mechanics kind of term. You're really going to take the motor out? Yeah? Yes, oh, yes. Right. This is the thing that people often find hard to understand about this, is it uses no electricity. Yeah. It reproduces the sound entirely by vibrating a column of air, and the motor is, of course, essentially clockwork. So until you've taken the motor out, you're not going to know what's really wrong with it? No. I'll drop the motor out. And then you can give me the frame and I can work on that. Yes. Yeah? Well, we best crack on then, eh? There we go. Take this out. There. And there it is, the heart of the beast. The Garrard number 20 motor. You can see all the muck and rubbish around here. I mean, there's no damage, as far as I can see, to any of the gears, and that's always a good sign. While Tim takes care of the motor, it's Jay's job to restore the case. There we go. Till later. See you soon. The plan is to clean this and then just give it a wax. This is Will's secret recipe mix for cleaning. Doesn't tell anybody what it is. It's very top secret. Now, that is what you call dirt. Wow. For this delicate restoration project... Oh, that's a bit better. Tim's calling on all of his 50 years' experience. The art is knowing exactly where to hit it. <laughs> Anyone can go mad with a hammer. It takes a true craftsman to know exactly where to tap it. This is the point where it'll fly all over the room. <laughs> With a fair wind behind him, Will has almost reached harbour with the treasured 50-year-old sailboat that owner Simon wants to pass on to his children. It's the finishing touches now. The black paint has completely dried, so I'm just using some white pigment just to sharpen up around the edges to really bring out the word puddle duck. Time is of the essence. With no idea about Will's extra puddle duck finishing touch, Simon has returned. And he's not alone. Now, I'm feeling very excited about seeing the boat again. Um, I've brought Artie Barbara, and she gave it to me with Uncle Bill many years ago. We haven't seen it for a long time. No, no we've been up And I had off. no idea that it was broken. <laughs> How are we doing? Oh, very well, thank you. Very nice okay. to see you again. Likewise. Who have we got here, then? This Hello. is Auntie Barbara, who we were talking about last time. Oh, oh cool. Hello, Mommy. pleased to meet you. How are you doing? You all right? Yes, thank you. Come this way, then. So. You know who Auntie Barbara is, don't you? I know who Auntie Barbara is. Yeah? Yes, I know. Are I'm you sorry. feeling the sweat? I can see her sweat. <laughs> the beads are coming off. The beads are sweat. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to seeing it. Ready. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Oh. It hasn't done 
done that for a very long time. Oh, that's lovely. I'm so thrilled. Because you never saw it broken, though, did you? You never saw it broken, no. But it's fixed now. It's all fixed. How long did it take you to do all this? Five, ten minutes. He's being modest. It was a labour of love. Yeah, I mean, so much. I think I could probably rig um, an, an actual full-size yacht right. now. So <laughs> I'm in the market wonderful. to buy one just yep, for that. Just oh. to use your new fans. Oh, um, lovely. Now, you had a boat, did you not? Did you have a little boat? Okay. And did your boat have a name? Yes. What was your boat's name? Puddle Duck. Right, well, I thought it would be quite nice to have on the front. Oh, oh look at that. Oh, oh how lovely. Oh, how did that look? That's lovely. Oh. That's amazing. Oh, thank you thank very you. much. That's lovely. <laughs> Uncle Bill would be thrilled. Yeah. Oh. He would be absolutely thrilled. With absolutely that. Yes. lovely. Yeah. So the big test now is to see if it floats. Yes. We filled up a sink. No. You've got to be the first person to try it out. Well, it might be Auntie Barbara. Oh, yeah, I think Auntie Barbara. I think Auntie Barbara. Yes. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Yeah, let's see. Oh! Yay! Oh, there we go. Amazing. I'm feeling amazed and astounded. Yes, yes, I'm absolutely I couldn't believe they no. could do as good a job as that. No, absolutely um, lovely. It looks incredible. It does. And to have the name on the front as well, that, yeah. Just, that was... just perfect. There we go. Look at that. That's just like 30 years ago. Yep. Bill would have been absolutely thrilled. I'm sure he, he would. would. I'm he sure would. he would. Cruising smoothly on with the gramophone, Tim has prized apart the 80-year-old power source. And you can see the mainspring in there, which is very dry. Hardly any grease on it at all. Connected to the handle on the gramophone, the wound spring creates the energy to rotate the turntable. Not too bad. I think we may get away without having to replace it. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sometime in the past, this spring has broken, and you can see where these two pieces have been overlapped and riveted together. So the only option to do is take this spring out and throw it away and replace it with a brand new main spring. At the end of which, with a fighting chance and a following wind, this is going to work properly. Meanwhile, Jay has hatched a plan to recreate the missing base. Well. And he's got just the man for the job. Ideas. I need your young, fresh, talented hey, mind. You want something, right? You're going to flatter me. So there's a plinth needed for the bottom because the doors, the drags like that. Right, so you want me to make a plinth? Yes, please. Now. I'll give you a hand. Well, yeah, now, today. Yeah? Today. Let's, let's work as a team, yeah? That's why I gave you a compliment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's nice, isn't it? <laughs> I would give you a hand, but I'm having tea and biscuits. Oh, Look like you've got it under control anyway. That's right, that's really... Thank, thank you for that, Johnny. That's, uh... that's all right, any time. Now, what are you doing, really? Well, this is winding the new spring into the spring barrel. Yeah. There. You done it? Right. What we do need to do is pack the graphite grease in there, and you basically put the stuff on like buttering a scone. So you've got to get it all in there, all in those bits, yeah? yeah? Put plenty of it in, cos it's probably going to be another 80 years before it gets serviced <laughs> again, so... That's the worst of it done. All I've got to do is put it back together now. That looks good. Uh, so how are you getting on? Slowly but surely. If anything, it should be semi-flush at the back and more out here. This side sticks up further than that side. All right, look, all we have to do is that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Just a little bit of that. Et voilà. Also on the mend, 83-year-old Lucy's remade limbs are ready to be stitched back together. 
And I'll get on and sort out her nails. OK. A little manicure, then. Yeah. <laughs> Julie can now turn her attention to Lucy's missing hand. For a perfect fit, she's painting a reproduction pair of hands to blend in seamlessly. That was a very fiddly job, painting the hands and putting the detail of the nail in place. And I had to hold my breath for that. But I hope it'll have been worth it. This is the original vest that we're putting back onto her now. I hope it still fits her. Yes. She hasn't put on too much weight. That will show whether we've done a good <laughs> job. <laughs> we've got the body now to the point where we can put the head back on. This is quite tricky because the head is made of china, 85 years old. It's a two-man job. Well, we can wiggle it once mm -hmm. she's in there. OK. okay. We've just got a couple more stitches to pop in, clothes on, and should be ready to go home. Dressed in owner Jane's and her daughter's baby clothes, Lucy is ready to be loved by a fourth generation of the family. Hi, I'm so excited. Are okay. you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. OK. Let's take it off. Oh, oh my goodness. Well. She has all her limbs. Oh, and okay. she is ready to be loved again. Absolutely gorgeous. Thank you so much. No, you're, you're welcome. welcome. And a lovely way to, to remember Mum and how oh. thrilled she would be to think that she's going to be cuddled again mm. and by her great-granddaughter. That's amazing. Oh, that's with lovely. the same name. Well, so we feel it's almost honoured to, to be part of that. I just feel very emotional. It's absolutely beyond what I hoped for. I've never seen her perfect, but today, to me, she's absolutely perfect. I could have asked for nothing more. It's, um, it's a fantastic surprise for my granddaughter. Oh. <laughs> Back in the workshop, another treasured family member is almost ready to play sweet music once again. Oh, that, that is come beautiful. Up, it comes up. I'm pretty certain that will have been something very similar to what this must have looked like when it was new. Cool. And then obviously, like the door, it doesn't, it doesn't pull really. Does that it? is lovely. That is very pretty. Now the final stage, marrying Jay's case with Tim's fine-tuned motor. Like so. A hundred miles away, Gillian's cherished gramophone can be returned to pride of place. Well, oh. here we are, Gillian. Here we are. An old friend comes home. Now. You're looking forward to having this back. Oh, I am. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? That is almost certainly what it would have looked like originally. Someone has taken great care of this woodwork. Yes, Jay and Will, as you can see, they've made a lovely job of building the new base for it. The, the new base, yes, gives it a completely different proportion. And also, you'll notice the door now opens without dragging on the table. Should we have a look inside? Oh, that's looking there we are. really good. So, when was the last time you heard this gramophone play? Oh, decades. I'm really looking forward to hearing it play again. It takes me back decades, absolutely decades. From the moment the needle hits the record, you hear that scratching sound and you get a sense of anticipation of what's going to come. It conjures up a, a lifestyle that is no longer, no longer exists. It's a time gone by of, of, of happy times and uh, happy memories. My ancestors are sadly no longer with us. This has come from my grandmother mm. to my aunt and now, now to me. It will eventually go to my son, and that yeah. pleases me a great deal that it will come through the family. I shall ensure that they appreciate it as I have. So I must thank you, Tim, for all your expertise and work on this. It's wonderful to hear it played again. As another treasured family heirloom is restored to its owner, 
And for future generations, the team hang up their tools until next time in the repair shop. <laughs> <laughs>